Yes. Yes, I understand completely. We'll absolutely be able to help you out with that. I guarantee you. Oh, you must be talking about Yagami. Absolutely. We appreciate any interest you might have. But it's just, uh... Must be so nice to be a rock star. Right, Salary Chan? Gendala, Sari speaking. Yes, Yagami is currently employed by our firm. Same bullshit all day. Guess everyone wants a lawyer who can win, huh? Yagami Sensei? Hey, throw me a bone. I never would have won without a hand from these two. Of course you wouldn't have. 99% of these cases end up in convictions. It makes an acquittal a big deal, even if it was just luck. Talk about a lawyer being a hero. Makes even a former gangster look good. <laughs> Guess so. Wipe that grin off your face. You think you're better than us? I'm no saint. Could have fooled me. You know, you're not gonna win all of them. Trust me, pal. My record's not. Are you listening? Of course. I get the message. Hmm. Well, Shintani's available right now. Yeah, you bet. He's more experienced. Are you hearing that? No, no. Now I'm getting I, uh, tossed your goddamn leftovers. Shut up, man. Okay, and you're sure? He's as skilled as they come, trust me. But well, that no. just can't be right. He hasn't won any cases. You know how rare that is. <sighs> Haven't you heard 99.9% .9 of criminal court cases end with the defendant behind bars? Pretty ridiculous, huh? right? What? Well, you still want Yagami, though. Man, I am so done. Hey! Can it! Yes. Yes. And you're absolutely sure. I understand. I'll tell him. Who was that? Another call for Yagami Sensei. Big whoop. But the client is Shinpei Okubo. Huh? Not sure I believe that. Ogobo is a free man now. Not anymore. He's been arrested for murder. Come on. We already proved he was innocent, right? It's a new case. He's being processed right now. What they told me is that he stabbed his girlfriend Emmy to death, set the apartment on fire. Ogobo would never do that. Stabbing Emmy John. I just don't understand it. Okubo. How could he? day, my career as a lawyer died alongside Emi-chan. Both murdered 
by Shinpei Okubo. Come in, Kaito-san. Are you getting close yet? Yep. Right by the Don Quixote. Heading your way now. You just about see our man? Yep, I got him. He doesn't have a clue, huh? Ah, you're getting good at this. Almost like a pro. Wow, thanks. I always dreamed of being a professional stalker. <laughs> Not sure I'd call it that. You gotta admit, this is crazy, though. A detective tailing another detective? You only see that shit on TV. Crazy or not, stay focused. All right, I'll join up with you soon. Okay. <laughs> Step aside, old man. Piece of goddamn trash. The asshole, he said move! Huh? The fuck are you doing? What? Do you want to die, bitch? The hell is his problem? <sighs> What's going on back there, buddy? Uh, looks like I need to teach these punks a little lesson. Need to? Didn't you tell me to keep my head down? Hey, who you call punks, you homeless piece of shit? Huh? <laughs> Sorry, Kaito. I'll see you soon, okay? <sighs> so much for being careful. <laughs> Get a load of him! Man, you seeing this shit? <laughs> okay, our boy's a movie star. What? How's that? <laughs> <laughs> You're a damn joke. Now let's do this thing! I'm all done. Kaito-san, where's our guy going? On his way towards Pink Street. Crowd's thinning out. Get your ass over here. Got it. And make it quick. Any minute now, he's gonna figure out I'm shadowing him. On you. Well, that's just rude.
thought you were never going to catch up, man. Sorry. time you pay all the rent you owe. I just need a little longer, okay? Just one more week. <sighs> Another week? I am done warning you. Yes, I assure you. It better be. Bye for now, then. Oh, that was close. Kaito-san, he's heading for the Champion District. Oh, great. We're never going to find him in that maze. Probably why he's going there. Thankfully, we can always follow him from above. Yeah? Want to break out the pigeon? Just try to head him off, Kaito-san. And be ready. On it. Oh, and try not to get carried away. Can't afford to get that thing fixed again. Yeah, yeah. Just don't lose him. He just ducked into an empty lot, Kaito-san. Dead end. We follow him, we blow our cover. What do you think he's doing in there? Probably meeting someone he doesn't want to be seen with. Makes sense. Pigeon's up. Can you see it? Hold on. Uh-huh. Send the feed to your phone. Nice flying, Kaito-san. Keep it steady. You been practicing? Now's not a good time, Talk. G gotta concentrate. There's another guy in there with him. So he is meeting someone. Hey, I know that guy. He's a bookie for horse races. Trying to gamble his way to paying off debts, huh? Because that always works. Yeah, well, if they came all the way out here just to meet, he must have the cash on him. Mm hmm? We'll get what we need if we move now. You remember what we're doing here, right? Collecting the dead at Detective Office. Oh, I get it. This is our chance. Just relax. Let me do my thing, okay? You got it, Talk. Don't fuck it up. Nice night, huh, detective? Huh? I hear the bookies in Kamurocho make some pretty good deals. You win 10% more, you lose 10% less. They make it sound so enticing. Maybe I should get in on it. Hey, where are you going? Don't you need your money? What the hell is this? Who are you? I'm here to get my client's money back. Before you lose it on another horse. So they hired a thug to collect. Should I be impressed you found me? A thug? Well, that's not very nice. You and I are in the same business. You're... a detective? Afraid so. I hear you're pretty hard to get a hold of. That's why the people you owe came to me. Look, I know you have the money on you. You can't get out of this. Just do us both a favor and pay up. Don't put up a fight. 
Well, you're right. I have the money. But look, I'll pay everything back after I win big on this next race. Just wait, okay? Are you serious? I didn't track you down just so you could... Maybe next time! What? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Kaito-san, he's making a run for it. I saw. Where are you going, little guy? Damn it. Get back here. Need to learn when to quit. Shut up. I have it all figured out. I'll get the money. say you were a detective? What's your name? I never said I'd field any questions, asshole. <sighs> it's Yagami. Take a good look. Now do you believe me? <laughs> so, let's be civil here. Just hand over the cash, okay? 150 grand sound good? Back the fuck off! You running some kind of racket here? I'll sue you! Oh yeah? Huh? <laughs> you gonna sue? The fuck do you think you are? Huh? Hold on, Kaito-san. The hell? You're not a detective asshole, you're fucking Yakuza! Oh yeah? Guess you know what'll happen if you don't pay up then! <laughs> Hey, ease up, Kaito-san. I'm sure he doesn't want to piss you off anymore. I said all right! Listen here, asshole. I'm gonna sue your ass into the goddamn ground. You see this? You broke my fucking nose. <laughs> Don't be so melodramatic. I think we both know who threw the first punch. No, no way I'm gonna let that slide. Just you watch, you'll see the court's gonna... Huh? But that's... a lawyer's badge. So you're not a detective. And? You still want to sue? Uh, you know, you won't know what hit you.
Tom Roach show. No better place for a night out. A neon city. But the brighter the lights, the darker the shadows. The whole town's run by the toughest Yakuza family out there. The Tojo clan. And the deeper you dig, the more interesting things get. More dangerous, too. Take this burglary ring. Just a bunch of kids looking for kicks. Word is, they met on some sketchy website. Never even seen each other's faces. As for the cops, they can't catch a single one. The only thing anyone really cares about in Kamurocho these days, though, is the murders. Over three months, three Kansai Yakuza have turned up dead. Most think it's the Tojo clan making some kind of power move in the ongoing turf war. This one's missing its eyes, too. Mm. That's not the only thing, though. All three of them were missing their eyes. It's in one little corner of this city that I run a detective agency. I work alongside my partner, Kaito-san. Funny enough, he's ex-Tojo. And me? I'm Takayuki Yagami. Used to be a lawyer, but I put that life behind me three years ago. As for my badge, it's barely even a decoration at this point. Here, I'll scrounge up the rest for you later. What about your cut? I'll get it eventually. All of this goes to the client. Gotcha. Anyway, I'm gonna swing by Genda Sensei's place, see if he's got any work. Don't hold your breath. For a lawyer's office, things are slow as shit over there. Uh, you're aware they're one of our best clients, right? Yeah, yeah, I know you used to work there and all. But don't show up empty-handed. Here, buy him some sweets or something. At least go through the motions. So generous. My boy's all grown up. Don't mention it, Dad. Now get going. I hear they've got some extra fancy dorayaki at the Popo over on Tenkaichi Street. Even come in a box. Huh? Well, Genda Sensei's got a pretty big sweet tooth. If you get me. Right. I'll go pick some up. Hold on there, pal. You just bought some of them Doriaki, yeah? Sorry. But they're mine now. Uh, are they? Look, I've been after one of those things for days now. And you just bought the last fucking box. Can't stand for that, right boys? 
Wow. I can't argue with that logic. What was that, smartass? Have you had enough? Hey! Always getting into trouble. <sighs> Captain Hamura. Talk here doesn't start shit without a real good reason. And that means it was you. You dumbasses jumped the wrong guy. Uh, no. Uh, you know this guy's like a son to the Matsugani patriarch, right? Know what I'm trying to say, asshole? Hey, come on, Cap. Can't we just let it be? No can do. This right here just became a matter of Matsugane family honor. I'm sorry. Kengo, you haven't met our buddy Tak here, have you? He's a guy you want to know. Hot shot detective type. Right. It's good to meet you. The boss paid his way through law school back in the day. Made him into a damn good attorney. Guy even managed to get a bona fide serial killer off the hook. Seriously? Wow, that's incredible. <laughs> right? Damn shame seeing talent like that go to waste. Huh, totally! <laughs> get this, though. The first thing that killer did when he got loose? Stabbed his girlfriend to death. Can you believe that? <laughs> oh, uh, damn. <laughs> yep. Guy got the death penalty and everything. They get around to hanging his ass, talk. Not yet, no. Oh, what the hell's taking him so long? Here. This is the money from that detective. The rest is yours. I already took my cut. Good. You're finally getting the hang of this whole debt collecting thing. Yeah, thanks to you. Hmm. Anyway, how's Kaito? Fine. You mind asking him something? How long is he gonna stick around? Not wise to stay in town after you get kicked out of the family. But, uh, I can look the other way since the boss likes you so much. Speaking of, how's Matsugane-san doing? None of your damn business, I'd say. Come on, let's go. Hey there, Saori-san. Look, Doriaki. Extra fancy. Genda Law Office, where I used to work. Things haven't changed much these past three years. Hello, Yagami-san. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. You, uh, getting situated? Yes. Everyone here is just great. So I hear you're good. Pass the bar with top marks and everything. <laughs> How'd you end up in this dump and not in a bigger office, huh? Huh? Well, you see, that's... Uh... I hear you over there, uh, Yagami. Evening, Genda sensei Other than my real dad, there's two people I look up to like a father. Genda sensei is one of those people. He gave me a job here, before I'd even gotten out of law school. 
Shintani Sensei out for the night? Uh, I can't keep track of that boy. I'm sure you're happy, though. You don't have to deal with him. Huh? You two can't stand each other. You hate each other's guts. Be honest with me here. Uh, hold on now. Shintani's like a mentor to me. So, about that job you have. If you really want that job, you're gonna have to get along. So show your senpai a little more respect. Oh, Genda sensei. I got you some dorayaki. Just sit right there, I'll grab you one. Huh? <clears throat> Sorry? Did you eat them all? All but half. Hope you don't mind. So, what are the chances you've got some work for me, Genda Sensei? Work, huh? How long are you gonna keep doing this to yourself, Yagami? You know how dangerous this city is. Wouldn't be many cases for me if Kamurocho was a safe place. Uh-huh. Cases like collecting debt for the Yakuza? Hey, better that than no work at all, am I right? You call that detective work? You're practically a mercenary. Fine by me. I was never too hung up on being a detective anyway. Listen, Yagami. Yeah? You ever thought about becoming a lawyer again? I haven't. And why is that? Take a good look at me, Genda Sensei. Mm hmm? These eyes aren't exactly the best judge of character. I think I made that clear three years ago. What use am I as a lawyer if I can't tell good from bad? Knock it off, Yagami. Stop beating yourself up. What happened to Emmy was tragic, yes, but it wasn't your fault. It doesn't matter whose fault it is. I never want to deal with something like that again. So, have any work for me? A guy's gotta stay busy, you know? Keeps me distracted from Emmy chan and all that. It doesn't matter what you've got, just give me something. <sighs> How about a divorce case? I have some evidence that needs collecting. It'll be the usual deal. Stake out a love hotel, snap some photos, tail the guy, dig through some trash. You in? I'm in. A job's a job. Oh, I give up. I'll send you the details later. And next time, don't bring a gift, you hear? Doesn't feel right taking them from guys too broke to pay for them. Anything you say. Genta Law Office. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yagami-san. That was Shintani-sensei. Hmm? Apparently, he wants your help gathering evidence. For a murder. Huh? Since when are we working a murder case? This is the first I've heard of it, too. Go give Shintani a hand, Yagami. This blows that divorce I was gonna send you on out of the water. Been years since we had a murder case. Shintani Sensei says he's waiting for you at Tender, that bar on Taihei Boulevard. Tender? I'm there all the time. Just making sure. It's called Tender. Got my first job here 20 years back. Masuda san never changes. Running a bar must keep you young. Hey, Tuck. Shintani Sensei is in the back. Great. We've got some business to talk. <laughs> surprised to see me? I'd be more surprised if I didn't. Who's that, Tuck? A detective buddy? Not exactly, Mari. This one's a client. Won't be your client for long if you don't show up on time. You're late. Come on, you called me here totally out of the blue. Chill out, maybe. Huh, and I'm getting a drink. And I'm paying? Let's call it a business expense.
Here's a familiar face. Kyohei Hamura, from the Matsugane family. I ran into him earlier, actually. Take it he's your client? Yep. Got hauled in earlier. They're charging him with murder. Seriously? Seriously. So, the Matsugane Patriarch came to us for his defense. Genda Sensei is the go-to guy for all his legal problems, you know? How'd you end up in the driver's seat then? Genda Sensei gave him my card. Gotta say, not looking forward to defending a Yakuza. Tough luck, I guess. Anyway, you're coming with me to the station. Need to have a word with Hamura. You got way more Yakuza experience than me, after all. Yeah, I suppose I do. Let me give you a rundown of the case first. The victim was a Yakuza. A Kansai guy. Part of the Kyori clan. They found his body tossed in a dumpster just about a week ago. Hold on. This is... The guy who got his eyes gouged out? Yep. Cops think Hamura is the one who did it. Hell of a case, man. This is the third Yakuza they've found like this. Fortunately, we're not dealing with a triple homicide here, so the media isn't swarming. Hmm? Hammer's got an alibi for the first two incidents. His third murder is the only one they're pinning on him. So they won't admit the cases are connected? No. Makes sense. Three bodies and not a single suspect isn't exactly given the cops credibility. Guess they just want to get this case closed and move on, even if they have to force it through. And hey, the victim was Yakuza. Nobody really cares who hangs for it. Why'd they come after Hamura, of all people? Two reasons. First, the victim was a Kansai Yakuza from a group that's been making inroads in Kamurocho and picking fights with the Tojo clan along the way. Odds are this was a Tojo guy wanting to send a message. And as you know, Hamura fits the bill. And the other reason? Hamura and the victim were seen having a fight on the day of the crime. I'm guessing there's security camera footage, then. Has Hamura said anything to you? Yeah. He told me he didn't do it. Claimed the cops were falsely accusing him. So he insists he's innocent, huh? I think I know enough. We should get to the station. You go on ahead. I got some calls to make first. Just take a cab there. Will do. Leaving already, talk, And only one drink in. What can I say? I'm a busy man. Funny you should say that. Another customer of mine has a job for you. I'll tell you about it when you're not so swamped, okay? Hey, I'm not about to pass up a paying gig. Then come back when you and Shintani-sensei are done. We just keep running into each other tonight, eh, hey, Doc? Why the long face? Hamura-san. Uh, I'm Shintani from the Genda Law Office. The Matsugane family asked us to represent you. Then I'm glad you said yes, Shintani-sensei. We're gonna get along real good. Just like my boss and Genda-sensei. Uh, right. Well, let's get started. I'll be taking point, while Yagami here will be doing the legwork to try and back up your claims. 
No better guy to do it. I'll do what I can. So, they brought you in under suspicion of murder. Can you tell me more about that? Huh? What do you want to know? Whether or not you killed the guy. Does it really matter? Your job's getting me out of this mess, regardless of the truth. No. Because if I find out you actually did it... You'll drop me? Better. I'll make sure the prosecution puts you away for life. This is bullshit! Just like you did that serial killer, huh? Uh, Yagami? All the evidence at the time pointed to Shinpei Okubo being innocent. That's why I chose to trust him. But then, that Okubo guy... Well, he proved us all wrong. Murdered his girlfriend in cold blood. Come on, Tak. Let's be honest about what you were really focused on at the time. You wanted that precious acquittal so bad you didn't even stop to think you were setting a murderer loose, right? What happened to innocent until proven guilty? Try saying that to Emi Terasawa's parents. That's why you quit, right? You couldn't face him. <clears throat> you think, um, we could maybe get back to the case? Sure. Why not? You good to go? I'm fine. Keep going. My apologies. Now... <clears throat> Let's start with the victim. Toshiro Kume, 34 at his time of death. A member of the Kansai-based Kyori clan. Around 6 a.m. on the 4th of December, the police got a 110 call from someone who found his corpse in a pile of garbage. I hear you and this Kume had some kind of argument before he died. Yep. Did the police say what evidence points to you being the killer? Do they have anything substantial? Nope. Bastards are keeping their lips sealed. Ain't that right, Shintani-sensei? Yes. At this point in the investigation, the cops won't tell me what they've got against you. Your words are the only thing we'll have till the trial. <laughs> is what it is. Anything else you want to ask, Yagami? You have an alibi? What time did they think Kume died? Apparently between two and three in the morning. The cops were drilling me real hard about where I was around then. And? Where were you? At a sauna. A spot called Sauna Goten. Spent the night getting a steam. But there's no proof you were actually there, huh? Well, otherwise you wouldn't be in here. Pretty much. Someone should have seen something, though. What do we have on the victim? Toshiro Kume, 34. Run-of-the-mill Kyori grunt. Was Kume alone when you ran into him? Hard to believe he'd take that kind of risk in hostile territory. It was him and one more. Probably another Kyori asshole. Don't know his name, though. So there were two of them, and how many of you? I'd say there was probably five, including me. Who's the detective in charge of the case? Kuroiwa, from Organized Crime. Shintani-sensei is probably real familiar with him. I am. More so because he's one of those brutes with a badge. Pretty sure the Curie murders are his case. I can't stand him. Guy doesn't give a rat's ass about Yakuza. Where did you and Kume have your fight? Out in front of a club, Amor, over on Supon Street. Me and a few Matsugani boys had a little run-in with a Kyori guy. 
turns out that was your boy, Kume. And who started the fight? Who do you think? I'm not gonna let some Kansai punk strut around like he owns the place. I'd already thrown a few drinks back at that point, too. What time did this all go down? Just past nine. So what happened after you and Kume had your standoff? Went your separate ways? Nah, he tried to split, but I had my boys grab him. Dragged him into a moor. What? I... I thought it was just a little scuffle, though. You're saying you abducted Kume on a crowded public street? Yep, Amor is one of the family businesses. So I went in, kicked the customers out, and kicked the crap out of Kume. But I'm telling you, I didn't kill the guy. Just tossed him out the back door when I was done with him. I left right after, too. A few minutes before midnight. Uh-huh. So you were seen dragging Kume into the club, and he was found in the morning with his eyes gouged out. <laughs> I'd arrest you too if I was a cop. I think I've heard enough for now. We'll get going then. Yagami, head over to Sonic Go 10 for me. See if Hammer's alibi holds water. All right. If we can prove he was there, we won't even have to go to trial. I'll give you a ring tomorrow for the report. Later. Excuse me. You work here? Yeah. Come on in, friend. Actually, I'm not a customer. Mind if I ask you a few questions? Sure. What do you need? I'm here about a murder, the Yakuza who had his eyes gouged out. Oh, a detective came by for the same thing. I wanted to know if their suspect was with us the night of the incident. And you are... a reporter? Something like that, yeah. And this is Hamura, captain of the Matsugane family. Did he come in on the night of the crime? I'll tell you the same thing I told the cops. I make it a point not to remember anyone specific, you know? You get a lot of customers in and out, huh? Up to the last train, at least. From there, it's only in till morning. You know how it is. People drop in, wait for the trains to start up again. Same as any other night. Interesting. So everyone who comes in stays till morning, huh? Then as long as I can prove Hummer was here, we'll have our alibi. Oh yeah, the cops mentioned something kind of similar. You guys don't have a security camera? Something we could check, see who was here? We do, but it deletes all its footage every three days. Privacy and all. It was already long gone by the time the cops came around. Got it. Thanks. Sorry to bother you. Hey. You're out here pretty often, right? Did you see a Yakuza head into Sonic 10 the night of December 3rd? Um, why would I know that? You're crazy, mister. Hey, you have a sec? I'm looking for info on a Yakuza who went to Sonic 10 on the night of December 3rd. <sighs> you seriously expect me to remember something from that long ago? I'm trying to work here! Get lost! Excuse me. I'm looking for info on a Yakuza who stopped by Sonic 10 on the night of December 3rd. Did you see anything? This is the guy. Name's Hamura. 
I can't say I know them. There's tons of Yakuza around here. Though, now that you mention it, I remember something about a host getting smacked in the face that night. By a Yakuza? Yep. Don't think he got hurt too bad, though. Pretty sure it happened right around midnight. All this on the night of the incident. But when I went to check things out, the Yakuza was long gone. The host was just standing there shouting. That help at all? Hmm. Uh, any idea who the host was? Nah. I mean, they all kind of have that pretty boy look. Doubt I'd be able to recognize him if he was standing right in front of me. Does anyone else know about this? I don't know. Thanks for your help. Yo. You're still here? I thought you'd have left hours ago. I was gonna, but I realized all I'd do at home is pass out. Did go for a drink, though. Oh, now you're having another. You know that bottle's mine. <laughs> well, Genda Sensei give you any work? Yep, probably thanks to the Doriaki. He wants me to scrounge up some evidence for a murder trial. You got this from Genda? I thought it was all about civil suits now. Criminals don't pay the bills, right? Well, this one comes straight from Matsugane-san. Turns out Hamura went and got himself arrested. What the hell? For one of those Kyore clan murders. You mean that eye-gouging shit? Mm-hmm. I just dropped by the jail to see him. He claims he's innocent, though. Huh. Crazy. Not interested? I can't say I blame you after what Hamra did. Booting you from the family was a low blow. If you want, I'll handle it solo. Look, don't worry about it. I'm the one who fucked up, not him. Either way, we've got the case. Count me in. <laughs> Good. What's up, Shintani? Morning, sunshine. I'm on Nakamichi Street. Yeah, and? You know Majore? Little cafe, killer coffee. Come here. Another impromptu meeting? Don't whine. I thought you liked keeping busy. Hey, over here. Take a seat. Right. Anyway, I asked around near Sauna Goten. Couldn't get anyone to back up Hamura's alibi, though. All right. Good work. So, what'd you call me out here for? Something came up. Take a look at this. Cops released it to the media. It's the camera footage from Amor. Hamura and Kume are both in here, clear as day. Damn. Didn't realize the cops had their hands on this. This could be pretty bad. Ready? I'm gonna play it. Kume's the poor bastard getting dragged into the club. Explains why Kumi's buddy there is running for his life. Yep, got a name too. Akira Murase, another Kyori thug. Word is he hasn't left Kamurocho after getting interrogated by the cops. By the look of things, there must be a Kyori hideout nearby. Crazy how clear it all is. Hamura can't just talk his way out of this. Yep, and there's more. Take a look at this. One hour later, everyone leaves, except for Hamura and Kume. 
Even the owner hightails it. Wait, why would they stick around? Who knows? Our pal Hamara never mentioned this part. Now, this happened around 10 p.m., meaning there was another four hours before Kume's suspected time of death. The question is, what were the two of them doing all that time? Hamura said he threw Kume out of the club around midnight. After that, he left the club himself and went to the sauna. Right. But I want to hear how it all went down from a different angle. That's where you come in, Yagami. You gotta talk to the guy in charge of Amor. Back up a second. Huh? You're the lawyer here. I get that. You decide what kind of investigation we need for the trial. But don't tell me how to do my job. Yeah, but aren't you gonna talk to him either way? All the same, I'd appreciate it if you'd stop barking orders at me. something? Actually, I was wondering if you have a minute to talk. About? About December 3rd. Oh, I had that day off, man. If anyone's gonna know, it's our manager. He doesn't come in till nighttime, though. The manager, huh? This him? Oh, it is. What's his name? Aragaki. Think you could get in touch with him for me? We need to have a chat. I could try. Hold on. I knew this was gonna happen. He never has his phone on during the day. He usually hangs out near here, though. You mean in Kamurocho? Yep, usually. All right, I'll go take a look around. If you don't mind me asking, how? You're just gonna walk the whole city? No, I have a plan. Someone I can use to help me find him. With the name and photo, it shouldn't be much of a problem. Ah, if you say so, man. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks for the help. Somehow I knew I'd find you here. Ah, Yagamishi. You here to join this raid I'm about to get going? <laughs> Probably not, huh? What can I do for you? Got something I need a guy like you for, Tsukumo. This is Makoto Tsukumo. He's... well, he's a character. Tsukumo makes a living digging up dirt on the internet. A modern-day informant, if you will. More detective work, I assume? What's the mark this time? A lost cat? Someone go missing? I'm looking for someone. The owner of Club Amour, a man named Aragaki. He's probably somewhere nearby, but I don't have time to scour all of Kamurocho either. <laughs> you got that right. Searching on foots for cavemen. 
Uh, here, can I see your phone for a quick second? My phone? Sure. Ah, what do we have here? You already have the Chatter app, Yagamishi. I do? Oh, I guess it came pre-installed. Well, you're in luck. In my hands, this stupid app becomes a powerful way to find people. Really? How? Hold on. I'm busting into their servers now. And there we go. Here, take a look. Go ahead, try searching for something. Maybe a name? That would be Aragaki. Okay, and let's limit the time period while we're at it. Say, today. See? That map will tell you the GPS position of all the relevant chatter posts. I'm not gonna lie, I had to give myself admin privileges to get that one, though. <laughs> wow. Hmm, 128 hits. We're gonna need to narrow down the search. Not sure what else we can put in, though. Didn't you say the name of the club, Yagamishi? Some crazy French word? Oh yeah, it's Club Amour. Great. Let's try Aragaki and Club Amour. Well, looky there. Narrowed it down to one. So Aragaki wrote this, huh? Nope. Just someone who saw him. That's still a massive hint, though. See, it got posted only ten minutes ago. Meaning the poster might still be nearby. So, if I were you, I'd get down there and see if you can find out where your man went. I marked the spot on your map, Yagamishi. Hope it comes in handy. Good luck out there. Appreciate it. Oh, and try to get out more, okay? <laughs> Why on earth would I do that? Got a second? Sure, I can spare a few of those. What's up? I'm looking for the owner of a club called Amour. Any idea where he is? Actually, yeah. Just saw him. Wasn't in a great mood from the look of it. Must have really lost big time on the pachinko slots. Any idea where he was heading? Toward Taihei Boulevard. Probably getting sushi, if I had to guess. Sushi? Really? Isn't that a little pricey for a guy who just lost a bunch of money? <laughs> you don't get it. You get sushi after a big loss to cheer yourself up. What's ten more grand if you've already lost fifty or a hundred? Winning's what makes you stingy. Feels like it'd be a waste to blow your earnings on something dumb. Huh. I'd never thought about it. Anyway, thanks a bunch. I'll head over to that sushi joint. See you next time. Hmm? Aragaki-san, the owner of Amour. <laughs> and you are? Yagami from the Yagami Detective Agency. I want to talk about what happened on the night of December 3rd. Oh, yeah? Sorry, not ringing any bells. Come on, you and I both know that's not true. <laughs> well, it is. I don't know a damn thing. Why don't I jog your memory then? I've got something to show you. Take a look. <sighs> On the night of the crime, you left Amur with these Matsugane goons, leaving Hamura and Kume, the victim, alone in there. You're knee-deep in this. <sighs> I guess I can't argue with that logic. Don't worry. I won't ask for anything too out there. Just a bit of your time. I'm working on Hamura's defense, and I'm hoping you're the silver bullet. Oh yeah? Whatever. I'll talk. You actually tracked him down. Appreciate the help. Now, what went down around 9 p.m. on the night of December 3rd? Well, uh, Captain Hamura brought that Kansai punk Kume in here. It was out of the blue. Caught me off guard. 
Were there any other customers here at the time? Just a few. They bailed when Hamura came busting in here. Who wouldn't? I ended up sending the girls home, too. Once everybody was gone, the Matsugane guys just laid into Kume for almost an hour. You uh, didn't hear that from me. You're good. Don't worry. Then right around 10, something kind of weird happened. Hamura kicked everyone out of the club. Even me. And the only ones left inside were Hamura and Kume. <sighs> yep. You know why Hamura kicked everyone out? He... He said Kume reminded him of an old friend. Claimed they needed to have a chat. Alone. At least that's how he worded it. And that didn't seem weird to anyone? Oh, the Matsugane boys had plenty to say about it. <sighs> but if the boss tells you to leave, you get the heck out. <sighs> no clue what went down in the club after that. Tell me about the camera out back. A broken one. <sighs> oh, that? How long's it been like that? For about a month, some drunk asshole chucked a rock. <sighs> Cracked it right open. It was just for show, though. Never actually worked in the first place. Not much use to me, then. Did you just sit and watch while the Matsugane tore into Kume? What do you mean? What else could I have done? Called the cops on them, for one. Not like they're especially good for business. Nor is a dead body in your club. Come on. They'd have killed me if I did that. And frankly, it didn't look like they were hurting him too bad. If anything, they were going easy on him. Meaning what? Like just smacking him around a bit. You know, nothing too serious. Once in a while, they'd hit him a little harder to make him bleed, I guess. The cops came by after the incident, right? A detective, yeah. A guy named Kuroiwa. Apparently with organized crime. What did you tell him? Not a whole lot. Same stuff I told you. <sighs> Forensics was tearing this place apart. Trying to find bloodstains from Kume. You know, with that luminol stuff. I thought I'd wiped all that up before they got here, but that sure was a waste. <sighs> Turns out blood's tougher to clean up than I thought. <sighs> now they're convinced the murder happened here. Was there that much blood? Before you wiped it up, I mean. No, not really. I told you, they barely even made Kume bleed. Sounds like he didn't die here, then. Well, I certainly wouldn't know. Well, thanks. This is a huge help. We done here? Kaito, what's up? Hey man, where are you? Just left a club called Amour, over on Supon Street. Amour? Isn't that one of the Matsugane joints? Yep. Hamura and the victim were apparently alone in here the night of the murder. Anyway, need something? Yep. Swing by the office when you're done there. What's up? Uh, it's no rush. You'll see when you get here. Later. Why is she here? How about you ask her yourself, Romeo? Good to see you, Yakami-kun. Don't worry, it's not what you think. And before you ask, she's not here to win your heart again. Win my heart again? Hold on a minute. Let's make one thing clear. We never dated. Guess I misspoke. Don't sue. <clears throat> I'm here on business. That should be obvious. Business? The prosecutor's office is pressing murder charges against Kyohei Hamra of the Matsugane family. You're involved, aren't you, Yagami-kun? Word travels fast. 
Nothing that happens in Genda's office gets away from me. Sorry, son just can't keep a secret, huh? Not with me. We go way back. Since you were kids, right? Yep. Back to Hamura, though. They're already pressing charges. They only just arrested him. Apparently the prosecutor's had his eye on Hamura for a while now. He's just been lying in wait for the perfect moment to strike. And this prosecutor is... Your friend, Izumira. Somehow I knew it'd be him. You haven't seen that guy since the whole not guilty verdict, huh, Talk? Yep. He's probably still sore about it. Too bad Shintani's gonna be the one in charge of the case and not me. You're really never becoming a lawyer again, are you? I don't want to talk about it anymore. Genda Sensei asked me the same question. I see. Does the prosecution have any work for me? I'd be glad to cut you a discount. You know what, Yagami-kun? Hmm? This detective business really doesn't suit you. Couldn't she have just called? Think she went through the trouble for a reason? Maybe you? It's, uh, getting dark out. I should walk her back. Huh. Mafu, you. Not so fast. Who are you? Chief Prosecutor? And Yagami-kun, what are you doing? Well, I was planning to walk you home. Really? That's so sweet. Well then, I apologize for my forcefulness. Sure. This is Chief Prosecutor Morida. And, um, you already know Prosecutor Izumida. Long time no see, Yagami Sensei. Courtroom just hasn't been the same without you around. Damn near breaks my heart. So you're defending Hamura, huh? Nope, Shintani's handling it. I'm just collecting evidence. Looks like you don't need that walk home, Mafu you. Later. Oh yeah. I almost forgot. You're not a lawyer anymore. Even after your landmark acquittal. Too bad. I only won because I was up against you. You shut your damn mouth. If it wasn't for your bullshit logic, that murderer would have been behind bars. An innocent girl died because of you. Tell me what was so bullshit about my defense then. Come on, say it. Everything! That's enough, Izumita. It's okay. Izumira-san. Uh, thanks for thinking of me, Yagami-kun. Farewell. Man, has that guy got an aura or what? If I was a chick, I'd be way into that. Not now, Kaito-san. My bad, my bad. So, what do we do about the case? Mafuyu said they're already pressing charges. We should go to Genda's. Let Shintani know what's going on. I want you there too. Got it. See you over there then. What is it now? Look, just uh, take a breather, huh? Count to ten or something. I'll give you a breather.
Yeah. <laughs> Here you go. Hey, Yagami. The hell were you thinking sending Kaito here by himself? Guy acts like he owns a goddamn place. <laughs> All hail King Kaito. Just sit your ass down, would you? So... You finally have some details from the cops. Murder specifics, forensic results, even their proof that Hamura's the one who did it. That's a lot. Let's see it. But first... Hmm? Just don't forget your role in all of this. Especially you, Yagami. At the end of the day, you're just a mercenary. The one who decides how this investigation goes is me. Understand? You got it. It's your show. Now, why don't we look at those documents, Shintani-sensei? That's more like it. First up is the crime scene. Huh. Around 6 a.m., morning of December 4th, police get a call about a body in the alleyway behind a moor. The officer who rushed to the scene confirmed the corpse on arrival. Victim was a Kansai thug, bottom feeder with the Kyore clan, Toshiro Kume. Body had a few bruises, but the cause of death is pretty obvious. Two puncture wounds, straight through the eyes. The cops think the murderer used something like an ice pick, pierced right into his brain. My eyes hurt just thinking about it. Oh, <sighs> you're telling me. Looks like the murder weapon went through Kume's eyes, then tore him out when the killer took it back. Only natural to think the Tojo was trying to make an example out of him. You know, threaten the Kyore. So even if Hamura didn't do it, it's damn likely that someone from the Tojo clan did. And if we can figure out who it was, Hamura will be off the hook. What? Find the real killer? That's a step too far. Priority number one is proving his alibi. We do that, we're in the clear. Uh-huh. There's pretty much no blood anywhere near the body, meaning Kume wasn't murdered in that alley. If I had to guess, I'd say he died in a moor. Hmm. Night of the crime, an employee from another bar tossed their trash out in this alley. Around 2 a.m. Didn't see anything out of the ordinary, though. 
In other words, Kume got dumped sometime between 2 and 6 a.m. when the body was found. Uh huh. Suspicious. Nothing was found in Kume's pockets. No wallet, no phone, nothing. Bet the murderer broke the phone. Cops tried one of those find my phone things, but came up empty handed. Guess the killer at least tried to cover his tracks. Hmm. You take a peek in the alley when you were over at Amor? Doubt there's any traces left at this point, but it's apparently just out the back. Anyway, this is Kume, just before he died. Before the killer took his eyes. Come on, don't say stuff like that. So what's the prosecution's angle on this? Well, try thinking about it in the context of the Tojo Kyori feud. Two other Kyori Yakuza turned up dead before this, each with their eyes gouged out. Not a far leap to assume the Tojo's responsible for all three murders. You follow? Yep, go on. All right. This is how the prosecution thinks it all went down. December 3rd, just around 9 o'clock, right out front of Club Amor. An argument breaks out between Captain Hamura of the Matsugane family and Kume and Murase of the Kyore clan. Hamura and his thugs drag Kume into the club at which point Murase abandons Kume and flees the scene. Hummer then locks Kume in a moor for around an hour, while he and his boys beat the daylights out of the guy. Around 10 p.m., Hummer kicks everyone out, leaving only himself and Kume in the club. Up to that point, their story matches the camera footage and the testimony we have from the owner of Amor. The prosecution's story continues as follows. Once the two of them were alone, Hamura tortured Kume even more violently. Then, between 2 and 3 a.m., he drove a sharp weapon into Kume's eye, killing him instantly. Once he finished gouging Kume's eyes out, Hamura dumped the body in the alley behind Amor. When questioned, Hamura said, Me and Kume left Amor around midnight. I went for a steam right after. But since no evidence can back up that claim, the prosecution doubts its credibility. 6 a.m. on the morning of the 4th, Kume's body was found. And one week later, they arrested Hamura. So they've got three things. The camera footage, the blood stains in the club, and Hamura's Swiss cheese alibi. Any of those alone wouldn't be enough to get a conviction. But with all three, prosecution thinks they've got this case in the bag. End of the day, to them, it's just Yakuza offing Yakuza. Makes sense they'd see it that way. I'm more interested in what you think, though. Did Hamura actually kill Kume? I don't know. The guy rubs me the wrong way, yeah. But I'm pretty sure he's innocent. A cunning Yakuza like Hamura wouldn't just offload the corpse in an alley like that too sloppy. If he really did it, forget about the eyes. You'd never even find the body. Agreed. That's uh, Arshintani Sensei. Prickliest guy in town. But damn if he's not a terrific lawyer. With you there. Um... Was that supposed to be a compliment? What? Something wrong? If Hamra didn't do it, the person who did is still out there somewhere. Huh? 
We've just got to find them if we want to clear Hamura's name. Ha! Huh. You think we've got the manpower for that? Tracking down a criminal like that takes an entire organized front. Best leaving that to the cops, if you ask me. My only job here is defending Hamra. Then what's your next move? Ah, I need some more info on the victim. Remember Kume's buddy? The one who ran off when the Matsugani boys jumped him. Name's Akira Murase, from the Kyore clan. I want to hear what he has to say. About what? About what he did after he watched Kume get dragged into the club. Did he really just abandon his friend? It's hard to believe. Come on, man. Is this the time to go knocking on the Kyore clan's door? Sounds like suicide to me. I bet they're out for blood after what happened to Kume. One way or another, I want that info from Marase. Huh. You're the ones who have to figure out how to get it. That's the deal, remember? The deal my ass. Poking a hornet's nest ain't gonna get us anything but stung. <laughs> He's right, though. Come on, Kaito-san. Fine. First things first, we need to find out where the Kyorei clan's hiding. They gotta have a base or something. Probably quickest to just go ask Matsugane-san. He's got all the real Tojo clan dirt. Oh, uh, I guess I'll pass. Can't exactly waltz in, being expelled and all. Yeah, I'll take care of this one by myself. I'll call you when I'm done. Here, right this way. The Matsugane are an offshoot of the Tojo clan. Not the biggest Yakuza family on the block. They're a small branch that's low on the tree. But the family's patriarch, Mitsugu Matsugane, is like a father to me. And Kaito-san. Excuse me. Yagami-san's here to pay you a visit. Oh, so good to see you again, my boy. Now then, feels like ages since you last stopped by. I know. I wonder why that is, huh? Could it be that you're the only one who's glad to see me? Well, you have a point there. How's Kaito these days? Staying out of trouble? He's okay. If not for that incident, he'd still be part of the family, you know. Hard to believe it's already been a year. Uh, the both of you are more or less the sons I never had. The past is what it is. True. But I'm glad to hear he's doing well. Under your watch. I'm sure Kaito-san will always feel like my Aniki. If not for you, I would have taken another direction in life. I'd be a very different person, I think. You'd have turned out just fine, my boy. Excuse me. T. So then, what would drag you back to an office where you're not exactly welcome? Hamura is giving me some grief. Is he now? I was under the assumption Genda is handling the issue. Are you helping him out with the case now? Shintani's got me looking for the Kyori clan. I just need to find them, so I can ask him a few things. Not wise, my boy. You do know they're all up in arms right now. Sure you want this? Don't worry. I just want to have a word. Does the name the Kajihira group mean anything to you? No. I can't say that it does. They're a Kansai outfit. It's... they've got a front in the city, the KJ Art Office down on Senrio Avenue. 
Be careful, though. There's Kyori crawling on every floor. He's at Tojo Clan Streets, but that's their turf now. Senrio Avenue. KJ Art, eh? I'll check it out. I know you're busy. Although, you think I could visit your office someday soon? Keep it on the down low? Yeah, of course. Kaito-san, just left the Matsugane office. The QRA are shacked up in some place called KJ Art. Huh. And that's where we'll find Morase? Not sure. We won't know if we don't check it out ourselves. You're thinking stakeout, huh? Sounds like the perfect time to give the drone a whirl. That might be our only choice. Fingers crossed. Anyway, I'll see you over there. What's up? It's me. You at KJ Art yet? Looks like it. Where are you? I'm on the opposite roof. Look up. See you. Be up in a sec. View, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Too bad the place is absolutely crawling with Yakuza. Guess this is the Kyore hideout after all. No doubt. And Marase? Couldn't find him. I looked pretty damn hard with the drone, too. You sure it was hard enough? Uh, sure. Come on, let's try again. I'll fly it this time. When you want something done, do it yourself, right? Sure, you ass. Hmm. This here is Marase. Wonder if we can just peek through the windows, see if we can find him. Suspicious. What the? Suspicious. Suspicious. What the? What's with the book? Don't these guys have anything better to do?
Hold up, hold up. That's him. Shit, he went inside. Let's try and figure out where to. Suspicious. Hey, suspicious. Hey, there he is. Well fucking Woo! done, man. Guy has his own office, huh? He must be important. Think they'd let us meet him? We wouldn't get past the front door. <laughs> Especially if we told him why we're here. We'll need to find another way in if we want to put the squeeze on Marase. Agreed. What are you thinking? Oh, there's a few options on the table. As for the best one... Maybe I could go undercover. Oh yeah? Who has? I was thinking pizza delivery. You ever seen a pizza guy get invited inside? Right. Forget the pizza. What about some kind of repairman? Now you're talking my language. They've got jumpsuits over at Don Quixote. Still, you can't show up and expect them to just let you stroll on in there. True, huh? I think I've got it. Huh? What would they do if the heater broke? Call a repairman, obviously. Are you suggesting we just wait till it breaks? I don't know. Maybe we could speed things up a bit. Never thought I'd see the day you came up with a plan like that. Who are you? And where'd you bury Tok's body? If I told you, I'd have to kill you. Anyway, I'm gonna make things a little chilly for these KJ guys. You keep watch, okay? Sounds good. Let's do this shit. Almost there. That'll do it.
I'm ready. Get changed then, would you? Okay, okay. Nice. I think this'll work. I know you're in a disguise and all, but don't let your guard down, okay? Try to blend in. Who do you think you're talking to? Hi there. I heard you're having some heater trouble. I'm here to fix it. Yes, it seems to have stopped. Thank you for coming on such short notice. The main unit is just out the door to the left, right around the emergency stairwell. Uh, mind if I take a look at an indoor unit as well? These things can be pretty complicated. Is that really necessary, sir? It'll help me get a better idea of the whole system. I'd rather not bore you with the specifics. Very well then. Sure. There's one in the security office to your left. Thank you very much. I'll have you guys heated up in no time. Suspicious. Just the guy I was looking for. You're here to fix the heat, yeah? Got something I need you to check out. Oh, sure. No problem. 
Come on, this way. <laughs> Freezing my balls off, man. Hope this goes quick. There it is. The power's on and all, but nothing's happening. Okay, let me see what I can do. Yep. Yeah, this thing's seen better days. Thanks, Sherlock. Can you fix it? Hey, genius. If you're gonna fix it, don't you need to take the panel off first? Uh, <laughs> <sighs> 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 hey, what's up? <clears throat> Hell yeah. <laughs> well, ain't that something? I never realized it was that simple. Glad I could be of service. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have other repairs to make. Who are you? Oh, I'm uh, here to repair the heater, sir. Weird. You ain't the usual guy. Where's our man, huh? Never had anyone else come for us. Oh, uh, about that. You know what? I'll just give him another call. See what's up for myself. Oh, the guy we normally send out here is sick today. I'm handling things in his place. Funny. I just got off the phone with him. Sounded an awful lot like he was on his way over. Well, that's odd. He must have gotten better, I guess. This guy's suspicious as shit. I bet he's a Tojo spy. Oh shit, you're right. Come on, boys, let's take him down!
Let's see. Got it. Almost there. Perfect. This was gonna happen. Please, I'm sorry! I'm so sorry! Just get the hell out of here. Huh? But... Huh? 
Kaito-san? But I got a call about a broken heater. I told you. We figured it out. All fixed. Nothing to see here. Can I at least check to make sure everything's okay? Oh, and I'll need you to sign this, too. I'm not signing shit. You didn't even fix anything. Now get the hell out of here. Uh, actually, could I borrow your restroom? I'm not feeling so good. Shit yourself for all I care. What? Just here to talk, Murase-san. Look, I risked my life to get in here. Just... I don't have to do shit. You can't boss a Yakuza around! <sighs> what the hell are you after, huh? I already said, I just want to talk. Look at this. This is you running away after abandoning Kume. Who do you think you are? I'm a local detective. Hamura's lawyer is having me look into Kume's murder. So what? You're defending Hamura? You think I'm gonna tell you shit, asshole? I thought we already negotiated. You want to go again? You're not getting out of this unscathed, you know. I know your face now. Do you really think Hamura killed Kume? Of course I do. Who else could have done it? That's what I'm trying to find out. I need to know what happened that night. <sighs> it's as clear as day. Hamura gouged Kume's eyes out. End of story. Yeah? Where? How? In the dump behind a moor. Bastard tortured Kume to death. Actually, the murder happened somewhere else, and I have the evidence to prove it. Take a look at this. What the hell? That's Kume. Suspicious. Sorry. I'm sure this is tough to look at. But as you can see, there's almost no blood around his body. That means he was killed somewhere else, then transported to the alleyway. Oh, I guess so, huh? doesn't add up, does it? So, you ready to talk now? <sighs> okay, let's take it from the top. Now, after you ran away from Amor, where exactly did you go? You couldn't just let them take Kume, could you? Yeah, I had to do something. So, I went to round up the rest of the clan. We had to take Kume back. But nobody would help, would they? You kidding? Of course they helped. We burst in there ready to bust heads. But I thought nobody else went in or out of Amor. What? You mean because the camera didn't see anyone? <laughs> Funny thing, that. Turns out you can't get seen if the camera's broken. The back alley was our ticket in. 
So you really went inside? Yep. Not a soul in the house, though. Trust me, we searched the whole damn joint. And when was that? Just after midnight, I suppose. Right when the prosecution says Hamura was laying into Kume. If you're telling the truth, that's a clear contradiction. Huh. Who gives a shit what the prosecution says? Hamura killed Kume, and that's that. Ain't no other way. Maybe so. But the police still need to hear your story. If you could just testify to that... You gotta be kidding me. Why the fuck would I do that, huh? huh? Yeah, it was worth a try. <laughs> nice work. So Murase busts into a moor. And who does he find? Absolutely nobody. Yep, Captain Hamura said he kicked Kume out and hit the sauna right around midnight. The stories match up. You really think he's innocent? Not sure. Our next step is finding proof he was at that sauna. Guess that's that. Well, <sighs> I'm pooped. How about we call it here for tonight? Yeah, good call. I'll see you tomorrow, Kaito-san. Hey, you find anything? Sure did. Murase spilled the beans over at the Kyore hideout, a place called KJ Art. And you made it out of there in one piece? Incredible. All in a day's work, Shintani-sensei. So, according to Murase, Amor was empty at midnight on the 3rd. That directly contradicts the prosecution's assertion that Hamura was beating Kume to death at the time. Wow, well, that's a hell of a find. But is Murase gonna testify? It's not that easy. Uh, it never is. Either way, Murase is telling the truth. I found something that backs his story up. Hmm? This is Amor, three hours after Hamura took Kume. Midnight. Take a good look at the edge of the screen. We don't see any of them go inside, so I thought nothing of it. But the stories match up. Murase and his guys went to a moor to take Kume back. And they left empty-handed. Sounds like we need to talk to Captain Hamura. There are too many unanswered questions. Agreed. I'll set up another visit. Give me a call once you do. Yagami-san, you spoke to Mafio, yes? Huh? Yeah, why do you ask? She seemed happy. It had been a while since she last saw you. Oh. Cool? But she looks sad, too. Sad? I wonder why. As do I. See you later. When the fuck am I getting out of here, Tuck? Don't ask me. Shintani senses your lawyer, remember? Hamura-san, I've got something to show you. December 3rd, 11.55 p.m. A Kyore man by the name of Murase comes to a moor to rescue Kume. Not wanting to be seen by the cameras, he goes in through the back. And? Murase said there wasn't a soul in sight. Well, yeah, I'd already hopped over to the sauna. And what did you do with Kume? I already told you I threw him out the back. And before that? Huh? Around 10 o'clock, you kicked everyone else out so you could be alone with Kume. I have testimony to back that up. Why'd you do it, though? What can I say? I guess Kume reminded me of an old friend. I must have been feeling nostalgic. Who knows, though? I was pretty plastered. That's so. 
Did you need to kick everyone out just for that? Uh, I told you I was drunk. Who knows what I was thinking? Well, you seem to remember other parts clearly, though. Like when you left the club. What are you getting at? For a so-called innocent man with an alibi, your story has an awful lot of holes. Oh, yeah? You wouldn't hide something from us, would you? Of course not. Something like the true killer's identity? I said I'm not hiding shit! Now get the hell out there and prove my alibi! I was at the sauna all night long. Prove that and I'm in the clear! I need to have a backup plan in case your alibi doesn't pan out. But I can't help you if you're gonna hide things from your lawyer. You're suspected of abducting a rival clan member, gouging his eyes out and dumping him in an alleyway. They'll lock you up and toss the key if we can't win this. Has that thought even crossed your mind? Or are all Yakuza just that fearless in the face of a life sentence? Fear has nothing to do with it. But like hell am I gonna beg you to save me. Then who would you beg? <laughs> None of your business. It's only a matter of time, Hamura. I'll figure out what you're hiding. Hey, Yagami! Yo. Sounds like you've been busy. Had a little chat with Hamra. Wasn't real productive. Figures. He's keeping something from us. There might be more to this case than we thought. So what? You telling me we hit a dead end? More or less. I need more to work with. Specifically... Like what Hamra and Kume did after leaving Amur. Eyewitness testimony. We don't have time to scour the city for leads, though. Hey, how much money you got? How much you need? You'll need 30k or so. I've got this friend, a local detective on the force. He'll tell you anything for the right price. Anything? <laughs> anything. Guy's an informant. You want the dirt only cops have access to. He's the guy you hit up. So you're saying he's a dirty cop? Name's Ayabe. He's a regular over at Tender. Really? Yeah. Surprised you never run into him there. It's where everyone goes to meet him. Try asking your pal Masuda. Hey, you have a sec? Of course. What do you need? I'm looking for a detective. Ayabe. You know him? Sure do. He hasn't been by in a few days, though. Why? Ah, uh, damn. Guess I came at the wrong time. It's okay. I'll let him know you were looking for him. Why don't you have a drink or two in the meantime? First one's on me. What's all this? <laughs> Just buttering you up. Remember when I mentioned someone who had a job for you? Yeah, what of it? Well, turns out they won't have one for you after all. Sorry. Apparently the client was trying to get back at some Yakuza who sucker punched him. And he wanted me to do what? Not sure. Doesn't matter now, anyway. Why, did he go all vigilante on him? Not exactly. It sounds like the Yakuza ended up behind bars. For killing a man and gouging his eyes out. Huh? Wait a second. Captain Hamura. Surprised? Though, now that you mention it, I remember something about a host getting smacked in the face that night. By a Yakuza? Yep. Don't think he got hurt too bad, though. Pretty sure it happened right around midnight. Anything else you can tell me? Sorry, but that's all I've got. You'll have to ask the guy directly. Who is he? 
man by the name of Seiya. He's a host over at Club Stardust on Tenkaichi Street. That's where I'd look. Hey, you have a sec? Depends. What do you need? I'm looking for someone who works here. Think I could talk to Seiya for a sec? Seiya-san, huh? No can do. Not today. Is he off today? Not quite. He's out on a date with a customer. Damn. He could be practically anywhere then. Third day in a row, too. He's got it wrapped around his finger. Yeah, that's great. Any idea when he'll be back? No clue. I doubt he went far, but that's all I've got. All right, cool. Thanks anyway. Yo, Tsukumo. Oh, hey, Yagamishi. What's up? I, uh... I need something. Think you can do another message search for me? Sure. Just hit me with the keywords you need. Hmm. Let's go with Stardust and Seiya. Oh, and let's limit the search history to just today. You got it. Give me just a second here. It's working. It's working. <laughs> I'll just push this to your screen. Huh, might have worked too well. Any other keywords you want to narrow this down by? Hmm. <laughs> oh, that did the trick. Great. Should be easy to check these out myself. Thanks, Tsukumo. I'm sure you'll find your pretty boy in no time. Excuse me, ma'am. What is it? I'm looking for a host named Seiya. Works at Stardust. Wait, you know Seiya-kun? Is he alright? We were gonna go on a date tonight, but he never showed. I'm kinda worried. Huh? I'd heard he was on a date around here too, but I guess that means it wasn't with you. Uh, better luck next time? Wait, what? Seiya-kun's out with another girl? Sounds like it, but don't take it too hard. I'm sure you'll bounce back. Oh, thank goodness he's safe. I thought he'd gotten into an accident or something. I wonder if he's having fun on his date. As long as he's happy, I'm happy. I hope Seiya-kun gets here soon. Wait a sec. You mean Seiya, that host from Stardust? Hmm. Who are you? Are you from the club? Uh, no, sorry. I'm just looking for Seiya. I'd ask where he is, but it looks like you know as much as I do. Hey, are you implying my Seiya-kun stood me up? I'm sure he's just taking his time getting ready. Hmm. He'll be here any minute. Uh-huh. Uh, how long have you been waiting anyway? I... I... <laughs> I shouldn't have asked. Excuse me. Excuse me, ma'am. What? I'm looking for a host named Seiya. Works at Stardust. Huh? What do you want with Seiya? Uh, I need to ask him something. I heard he was on a date around here. Did you say date? Who's the bitch he's cheating on me with? Oh, uh, you know what? Never mind. It's fine. It is not fine? What the hell is going on? Oh, uh, look at the time. Gotta run. Yagamishi, did you manage to track down that host of yours? Nope. Struck out on all three leads. Huh. How about giving it another try? Nah, I'm good. I'll figure out some other way. Don't be such a sourpuss, Yagamishi. I bet there have been more posts since earlier. Doubt that's gonna change much. But sure, why not? Let's see what you got. <laughs> Let's start with the same keywords from before. See that? A new hit! The landscape of social media changes every second. Apparently, they posted it only a minute ago. <laughs> That's not a hot lead. I don't know what is. All right, I'll check it out. Thanks for everything, Tsukumo. <laughs> not a problem. <laughs>
Hey, Seiya, right? From Stardust? Huh? Sorry to butt in. You have a sec? You'll have to excuse me, my chan. I won't be long. Hey, is everything okay? Don't worry, it'll all be fine. Mind stepping outside, Yagami-san? Wait, you know who I am? I do. The owner over at Tender told me about you. Thought I'd ask you to do me a favor. You want to get back at a Yakuza who hit you, yeah? Yes. He said you might be able to manage something. A disgraced ex-lawyer who's not afraid to get his hands a little dirty? Sounds like you're pretty well known in Kamurocho. So that's what people say about me? One more thing. This is just a rumor, but uh, I hear you'll do anything for your clients. You even got a murderer off the hook, right? Oh, did I say something wrong? No, it's all right. Anyway, you said Captain Hamra hit you? That's right. When? The night of December 3rd. The day of the murder. You're sure? Yes. Funny enough, I've been hired to look into Hamra's case. This story of yours could be key evidence. That's so. Not sure I want to be the guy who sets him free. I know you two have a history, but I need this. Please. How could I say no to a celebrity like you? It's fine. What time did you run into Hamra? I think around midnight. Out in front of Kyushu Number One Star. Not the busiest place. Kyushu Number One Star? Isn't that near Sonic Goten? Yeah, it is. Mind telling me more? Why'd he hit you in the first place? <laughs> Wish I knew. The guy reeked of booze, though. I was just walking down the street when I noticed him coming towards me. He was like mumbling to himself or something. Kind of scary shit. I tried to avoid him, but he just barreled towards me anyway. And how many times did he hit you? Just the once. He left a fucking nasty bruise, though. Knocked one of my fillings clean out, too. A filling, huh? Did you go to the dentist? Huh? Yeah, the next day. Then you'll be in their records. That'll corroborate your testimony. Ah, so that's what you were getting at. Moving on, what did Hamura do after he hit you? He stumbled away into a sauna, that Goten place you mentioned. So just to recap, he hit you around 12, and then headed into sauna Goten. Yes. And as long as I can prove Hamura was here, we'll have our alibi. Oh yeah, the cops mentioned something kinda similar. Can I count on your testimony in court? No problem. It'd be nice to have the great Yagami-san owe me a favor. Maybe Masuda could give me a few freebies too. <laughs> sure, I'll ask him. <laughs> hey, one more thing. Did you see any security cameras around when you ran into Hamura? Video evidence would lock this up for me. Hmm, <laughs> couldn't say. I don't usually look for that stuff. Right. Well, thanks anyway. I'll be in touch. Of course. See ya. Hello? Yo, it's me. Find Ayabe yet? Negative. But I did track down someone who had a run-in with Hamura. Yeah? Is it good news? His alibi might be more airtight than we thought. You're kidding me. Just around midnight on the day of the crime, this guy Seiya got hit by Hamura, then saw him go to the sauna. It was apparently right by Kyushu number one star. If they have a security camera, it would have caught everything. I'm heading to check it out now. Hold up. Isn't that near KJR? Those Kyore guys won't be happy to see you. If I was worried about getting seen, I'd never leave the office. <laughs> Fair enough. Later.
Uh huh. Suspicious. I know you, boy. Marase. What a coincidence. Clear your schedule, because I'm going to take my time with you. Boys! Get this fucker back to the office! I really don't have time for this. Yo, talk! Kaito san. Stay the fuck out of this! Where are you? Come on! That was pretty sweet, man. Hey, you wanna try helping out? Sure thing. My turn! You two fuckers are going down now! Please tell me you found something. You did, right? I think I did. Check out that camera. We're in the clear if the thing puts Hamra here at midnight. And if it doesn't? Let's... Let's try and stay optimistic. Well, camera. You got good news for us or what? This video shows everything you need to see. My client, Hamarasan, drunkenly attacked this passerby on the night of the murder. Then, after the altercation, that same passerby watched Hamarasan walk into Sana Goten. Nobody came out of the building after that, until the train started in the morning meaning the defendant was accounted for during the hours in question. The defense asserts that this video establishes a clear alibi, which can only be seen as proof of Hamarasan's innocence. To that end, I have a question for the prosecution. Did you have any prior knowledge of this video before the trial began? I assure you that we reviewed all the relevant footage from the sauna. And yet the defendant was nowhere to be found, Counsel. At least so I was told. Meaning, you never actually went to examine the site personally then. Would you say that's correct? Yes. My associates took care of that. Nonetheless, the defense's video is far too blurry to clearly identify either participant. There's no way to tell whether the man in the footage was the defendant or just a random pedestrian. <laughs> Thank you very much. In that case, the defense would like to call a witness to the stand. Seasan, do you claim you're the person in this video? That someone assaulted you that night? Is that accurate? Yes. It is. Now tell us, this person who assaulted you, are they here in the courtroom?
Witness? Is there a problem? I, am. Um... Hmm? I must have... been mistaken. I am the one getting hit in the video. But as to who the other guy was... I can't say. Excuse me, Your Honor. A uh, recess, if you don't mind. What happened in there? I... I, I can't do it. I'm so sorry. But why? You were all ready to go this morning. I... got a phone call earlier. Go on. It said it was from my sister, but there was a strange man on the line. He said his name was... Murase. Told me you'd know him, Yagami-san. Murase? And he told you not to testify? Yes. He said if I did... If I did, I'd never see my sister again. Got it. What are you doing, Yagami? Calling the police? Kaito-san, it's me. Those KJ art guys took Seiya's sister. I'm heading over there now. Could use a hand. The hell are you doing? We're in the middle of a trial here. A trial doesn't mean shit if you can't protect your witness. Uh... <sighs> Buy me as much time as you can. I'll get Seiya's sister back. I'm the one who dragged you into this. I'll be the one to drag you out. Promise. By time, he says. He knows this is a court, right? Yo, it's Kaito. I'm here. Where are you? I'm right around the corner. Place looks kind of deserted. Lines down and everything. Are we sure this is where they got her? They're from Kansai, remember? They can't have that many hideouts. Plus... Plus what? I bet there's a reason all the blinds are down. If anything, that makes it more suspicious. I guess you've got a point. Anyways, I'll be up on the roof again. See you soon. Still can't get eyes on what's in there. Got any bright ideas? Well, we can't just barge in. Who knows how many of them are in there? No way I'm getting away with a disguise now, either. Then... I guess we gotta sneak in. That's the only way. <laughs> I had a feeling. I've got a plan. Yeah? Lay it on me. First, I'll make a big scene out front. Then when they're distracted, you sneak in and get the girl. That's your big plan? Pretty good, huh? Uh, sure. How are you gonna do it? You'll see soon enough. Just remember, both our asses are on the line here. I won't forget. So, the girl's in there, yeah? Let's go bring her home. Right. I'll go look for a way in. Let you know when I find one. Bring him out, or I'll burn this shit down! 
Oh yeah, go on! I dare you! Just stay right there, punk! Gota, this is your chance. On it. Don't die, okay? You really stuck around? You should have bailed when you had the chance. You're pretty fucked now. Dumbass! Who the fuck are you? I said I wanted Morase! You fucking scrubs ain't worth my time! Get Morase! Almost there. Got it. You. Where's the girl you took? I don't know nothing, honest. I'm new here. They don't tell me shit! Huh? Well, then you're useless to me. No way to go but up. there. Oh, I suck at this. Nice. Almost there. Got it.
this. Almost there. Nice. That'll do it. Oh, shit! Now, tell me what I want to know, or else. Where's Marasi? Hell if I know. Probably with the girl. Yeah, probably. Where's the girl? She's up in the reception room. Got it. Appreciate the honesty. How many of you Kyori guys are there? <laughs> Who knows? Fifty? A hundred? Any way you slice it, you're trapped. No chance you leave here alive. Shut it. What's the code for the reception room? <laughs> like I tell you. I don't have time for your games, understand? Now I'm gonna ask you again. What's the code to the reception room? One, three, seven, zero. Well, that wasn't so hard. Thanks. Let's see. Got it. Almost there. Why am I bad? Nice. Almost there. Nice. Perfect. You're Seiya's sister, right? Don't worry. You're safe now. Yagami! When the hell did you get here? Let the girl go. Right now. What do you mean, let her go? The girl can leave whenever she wants. We don't have her tied up or nothing. I get it. It's all fine if you aren't keeping her captive, right? Just have to make her stay here until the trial's over. You really thought this one through. But that's not gonna work. Huh? Confinement is a crime whether or not your captive is tied up, idiots. Shut your trap! You know, false imprisonment will get you between three months and seven years. Maybe even longer if you hurt the victim. Guess you'll have to take a little dip in an acid bath then. No body, no crime. <laughs> Intimidation too? Tack on another year. You piece of... Come on! Let's make sure this asshole never talks again! Come on. Not so fast, Yagami. marasi son. Hasn't this gone on long enough? You're only gonna make things worse for yourself. Hamura has an alibi. Someone else clearly killed Kume. There's no reason for you to keep Seiya from testifying. But if Hamura didn't murder Kume, who did? I'm not sure, but Hamura might have an idea. 
He must have been working with the real murderer. What? The night of the crime, Kume went into Amor and just disappeared, right? He didn't contact you. Nobody saw him. He didn't even show up on any security footage. The way I see it, Kume never left Amor. In other words, Hamra must have handed him over to the real murderer. While Hamra was at the sauna making an alibi for himself, someone else was murdering Kume and gouging his eyes out. It almost makes sense. If Hamra ends up behind bars, I'll never be able to prove that theory. So what? You want to let Hamra walk? Better that than threaten a girl to stop someone from testifying. Besides, I thought you were above shit like this. <sighs> All right, just get out of here. You got guts for a detective. Huh. Thanks. Hamura-san is the one punching me in this video. The same man standing here today. I remember now. There's no doubt in my mind. So, you retract your earlier statement? Yes. My apologies. Your Honor, clearly this witness has no credibility. How does the defense respond? I admit, the witness was shaken up before. But I believe that's a perfectly understandable response. This is his first time in court, after all. I have no doubts regarding his credibility. This Stardust establishment. It's a host club, yes? How long have you been employed there? About two years. For that short a time frame, you seem to have an awful lot of trouble with your customers. Huh? I'm not sure what you mean. Several of them have approached you in hopes of marriage, have they not? They come spending huge sums of cash, so you act like you're ready to seal the deal. You say whatever it takes to make them happy in the moment, but your story changes once things start to get real. Five women have filed reports with the Consumer Affairs Bureau, and those are just the ones who have stepped forward. Can we really trust the words of such a manipulative man? With these character traits in mind, I sincerely doubt the credibility of the witness's testimony. And if the witness is indeed lying, the defendant's alibi is invalid. That is all. How does the defense respond? I'd like to continue on the topic of credibility. Mind if I ask you a few questions, prosecutor? Go ahead. First, Allow me to fast forward the security footage to just a few days after the crime. Oddly enough, we'll be looking at the exact day the prosecution filed their suit. Hmm. Isn't that you, prosecutor? Uh, yes. And in this footage, you're reenacting the altercation that took place between the defendant and our witness, yes? What? No. Well, that's strange. You stated earlier that you hadn't seen any footage from the camera near the sauna. But then, how would you be able to reenact things exactly as they went down? You also claimed you did not inspect the area yourself. It seems that wasn't the truth. Why are you hiding the truth from us, Prosecutor? <laughs> You're wrong! As you can see, the original footage isn't exactly clear. I would understand if you had denied that the defendant was the man who punched our witness. But instead, you claimed you hadn't seen the footage at all. If I had a guess, when you first saw the footage, you realized Hamra might have been the other man. At the very least, you couldn't rule out the possibility. So you lied, I would say. 
that, that's not true. Can we be sure that what you say is credible? You've already lied outright in a court of law. And unfortunately for you, there's only one person who thinks the defendant is guilty. And that's you, prosecutor. The night Kume got murdered, Hamura was holed up in Sauna Goten till morning. The footage from the security camera, Hamra's alibi, Seiya's testimony, it all lined up. With a story that airtight, there's no chance he could have killed Kume. We find the defendant, Kyohei Hamura, innocent. I will now clarify the reasoning behind this decision. Defendant, please be seated. The judge was right. Hamura definitely didn't kill Kume. But he had to have been involved. Meanwhile, the real killer is still out there, hiding in the shadows of Kamurocho. Murdering Yakuza, gouging their eyes out, retreating into his den. So, I've given him a name, the Mole. A lawyer's job is done once he proves the defendant innocent. But me, I'm not a lawyer, not anymore. Meaning my search for the truth only ends when I say it does. My office might be small, but that doesn't mean I don't have a reputation to uphold. In other words, I'll do whatever it takes to bring Hamura and the Mole down. Yagami-san, nice seeing you. Gorgeous day. How's the detective business been treating you lately? Yeah, I knew you'd show up here, Hattori. Listen, I'm not in the mood for your shit today. Ah, but it's my journalistic duty to hear what you have to say. It's not personal, just trying to do my job, okay? I've already seen what your so-called job produces. A fraudulent lawyer lets a murderer walk. Helpless girl suffers the consequences. <laughs> you and I both know. You're the only reason the girl died. You just had to go and set that killer free, didn't you? And the good people who raised her still suffer for it. You can't be coming back now. What would her poor family have to say to that, huh, Yagami-san? No need to worry about that. If you say so. <sighs> See you around, then. The year is 2018. Kamurocho is playing host to Kansai-based Yakuza, who've been turning up dead with their eyes gouged out. Lawyer-turned-detective Takayuki Yagami took on the case, proving the suspect's alibi. But he can't shake the feeling that the true culprit is out there. He gives this anonymous killer a name, Yagami calls him the Mole.
three bodies have turned up in Kamrocho, each of them missing both eyes. Every one a Kyori man. Kume is the most recent. And the guy who killed them all was your mole, huh? Yep. Got Kume hand delivered to him by Hamura. But Hamura kept that hidden and ended up getting off scot free. In turn, making us look like fools. I'm not about to let him get away with this. Agreed. We gotta go all out if we wanna win. Too bad the pay sucks. Don't hate, man. I don't get it. Why would the captain want to protect the mole anyways? He could have gotten life in the slammer if things went south. Hard to say with what we know now. First things first, we need to figure out who the mole is. That's why we're here, remember? The mole's first victim was found right in this very alley. Mm-hmm. Happened back in August. Kenkichi Mashiba. A Kyore guy, 27. Pretty small time. Even lower rank than Kume. Body got reported in the morning. Eyes gouged clean out of his skull. Where exactly did they find him? What sort of position was he in? Not sure. Cops don't really publish those kinds of details. Well, guess we'll have to do one better then. Hold up a sec. The cops already did their whole song and dance searching for the mole. But they couldn't turn up a damn thing. Why do you think we can do any better? Doesn't matter whether or not we can do better. We have to. Hamra made us look like fools, and I'm not about to stand for that. Right. Anyways, the next victim was in, uh, October. Found in an alley off Tenkaichi Street. Shall we head over? I'm actually gonna head over alone, if you don't mind. Think you can get in touch with that informant in the meantime? Huh? Why I obey? Didn't you say something about him selling police info? If he's got info on the mole, we need it. Yep, I can ask. Thanks. Suspicious. Hey.
Hey, what's up? What? Get back here! Hold it! Stop! Wait, wrong guy! Okay, let's go. Getting any thanks for that. Here, you earned this back. Yeah, I own it. Look, it wasn't a perfect plan, but it worked out in the end, didn't it? So thanks. Is that what you call that? And I don't want your thanks, asshole. <laughs> okay. See ya. No.
Excuse me. Mm -hmm. This is Yagami. Hmm. Excuse me. Well, look what the cat dragged in. Afternoon. Did I keep you waiting or something? No. We were just talking about you, actually. Do you have a minute, Yagami-san? Of course. Especially if you've got a job for me. <laughs> You're always so eager to work. A great fighter, too. You ever take lessons? I did back when I was a kid, yeah. The rest has been more of a learn-by-doing thing. I like to think of it as... Kamurocho style. Because you trained yourself on the streets? Man, what a life. I bet you've got some crazy stories. Um... Yagami-san. What's up? Actually, I do have some work for you. Yeah? What kind? Here, take a look at what I've got. I'll send the details to your office. Put them up on your board or something. Sounds good. Thanks, Sari-san. Yagami. You still sniffing around that Kume case? Yeah. That's not a problem, is it? Not a problem, per se. But the case is closed. I can't keep paying you to investigate. Fine by me. It's a personal matter now. Even so, you're convinced Tamara's covering for the killer, right? You know he'll be none too happy if he finds out you're still on the case. He brought this on himself, if you ask me. Speaking of, have you seen him since the trial? No, but he and Shintani keep in touch. They're practically drinking buddies these days. Really? Come on in, Hattori-san. Small, but it's home. Oh, I know all about this place. Right, Yagami-san? Oh, sorry. I forgot. Shintani had an interview today. Just pretend Yagami isn't here, yeah? Wouldn't want your readers thinking he had a hand in getting Hamura's acquittal. Oh, don't worry about that, Shintani-sensei. That courtroom was yours, and yours alone. I should go. Looks like I'm the third wheel here. Without a photo, Yagami-san? For as much as you did on the case? Let me just get one of you in Shintani Sensei, huh? Tea, sir? What a treat. 
That would be great, Shirosaki Sensei. Excuse me. Hi.
Kim-san? Oh! Oh! Yagami-san! You look kind of rattled, man. Don't try to get away, bitch! Crap! They are here! Sorry! Got the run! Ah! Not if we can help it. Who the hell are you? Finally caught him, huh? Good work. Kasai-san! Just drop it already, you guys! I will never give her to you! Come on, man! It's damn disgraceful making a babe like her work at a Yakiniku joint! <laughs> that has nothing to do with you! Listen, Kim-san. You might not know this, being a foreigner and all, but we got a saying here. A hot girl is a terrible thing to waste. <laughs> what? Yeah, that's not exactly how it goes. Yeah? <laughs> All this over a girl, huh? Doesn't reflect too well on you. Though in this case, it looks like that reflection's actually kinda accurate. Mind your fucking business! Who do you think you are? A friend of Kim's. Someone who's not gonna just stand by and let you beat him to a pulp. Yeah, but give me some! All right, buddy. I don't want to do this, but you were asking for it. Picking a fight with the Kenta Kasai of the Kahin Gang. Let's see how smart you really are, Mr. Know-It-All. He's tougher than he looks. Know-it-all, son of a bitch! <sighs> now get lost, and I better not catch you near Kim-san again. I'm not going down that quiet. <sighs> You're gonna regret making an enemy out of the Kahin! And don't come back! That's what you say when you win, dumbass. Nobody asked you! You okay, Kim-san? <laughs> Thanks for the help, Yagami-san. We should probably get out of here before they come back. Yeah, good call. I'm so sorry about this, Yagami-san. Yeah, I, I never meant to drag you into my mess. That guy mentioned the Kahin gang. What's their deal? Oh, it's a group of thugs that have been running wild recently. They have the whole town in the tizzy. <laughs> Not even the Yakuza know how to deal with them. Huh. 
Must really be something then. Oh, you got that right. They're a thorn in the city's side. One of the leaders at Pankasai won't stop coming for one of my employees. Oh, I don't want to think about what he wants with her. Ooh. So you were just looking out for your worker? But of course! I am her boss! But Yakami-san, you really should not have gotten involved. Now, oh, we are out for your head, too. Don't worry. I'll be just fine. Well, okay. Well, now. I will be here if you need anything.
をお願いします。Ready for us? Says he might have some info on the mole. Nice work, Kaito-san. <laughs> We're meeting at that indoor fishing pond, koi bride or some shit. You heard of it? Indoor fishing pond? Can't say I have. <laughs> Neither had I till about ten minutes ago. Anyway, it's over on Shichifuku Street. I'll meet you there. Yo, welcome. Yo, pull up a chair, Tuck. Ayabe said he'd meet us here, but don't know what his deal is. This is pretty out of the way. Maybe he's just trying to play it safe since we're new clients. Yeah, maybe you're right. Ayabe is sure taking his time getting here. Should we ask that guy? I wouldn't. Who knows if he's one of Ayabe's boys? True, but... Look, Ayabe's a dirty cop. The last thing he wants is his cover blown. We won't get a peep from him if that happens. Got it? Sure, sure. Hmm? Hey, someone's coming. Welcome. Pick a rod, I guess. Yo, gotten any bites today? Not even a nibble. And you're scaring them off. Get lost. Come on. Don't be like that. You're here for Ayabe, right? <laughs> Who's that? Don't play dumb with me. It's not gonna end well for you. You got it all wrong. Just fishing. Right. We ain't your boys. We look like the type to hang out with cops. Huh. Who said anything about him being a cop? Oh, well, I... Oh, fuck. So you do know him. I fucking called it! These assholes baited me! That one was all you. So what do you want with Ayabe? Tell me, or else. Yeah, I'm real scared. Look, we don't want trouble. Just step off and we won't hurt you. You got balls, don't you? I'm gonna serve them to you! <sighs> you all done? Or do you want some more? <sighs> Doesn't sound like they do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You boys are in. You what? Ibe-san's careful dealing with new people. He's selling police info after all. Gotta make sure his partners can keep a secret. And these guys? Working for Ibe-san. <laughs> Ibe knows me, though. Doesn't he? You're Kaito-san, yeah? The boss told me about you. You're dumber than I thought. D dumb! L look here, asshole! Right, not now, Kaito. As for you, where's Ayabe? Behind the counter. Come take a look.
What the? You're looking at the entrance to Lamont, the best kept casino in all of Kamurocho. Lamont? French for lover. You know what they say. There's an amazing lover behind every coy bride. <laughs> well, aren't you guys international? Go down and have fun. Ayabe-san will be here soon. Here, he's around the house. So the stupid pawn was just a front? Wow. <laughs> Fine by me. Well, wanna see what they've got to offer? May as well put those chips to use. Hit me. Hit me. I see you got me. Do you want to do it? I'll give you a bed. I'll give you a bed. I'll give you a bed. I'll double down. どうされますか Playtime's over, Tak. Come on, Ayabe's waiting. Good to see you, Kaito-san. I take it you're Yagami-san. Or would Yagami-sensei be more appropriate? <laughs> Whatever works for you. Sorry about that whole test thing. Name's Ayabe. Kamurocho Organized Crime Division. Pleasure. So, how you like in the casino? Pretty swanky, huh? Why? You the owner or something? Not quite. I do my part to keep it hidden, though. Cut a deal with the Tojo, too. Barely pay a lick of protection money now. I guess I do practically run the place. And you never invited me? I'm hurt. Sorry, I can't give you the VIP treatment when all you buy is the dirt off my shoes. Alright, let's cut to the chase, shall we? You know those Cure murder cases? They're all managed by my boss. Guy named Kuroiwa. He's the one who brought your captain in. But, thanks to you, Hamura walked, and now Kuroiwa's got egg on his face. <laughs> Felt good, let me tell you. 
<laughs> I'm a fan of your work. So here, the first one's on the house. Guess we got Kuroiwa to thank for this. Now, I pulled together reports on all the cases so far. Three in total, including the trial the other day. Not so fast. You're on the hook if this shit gets out. Oh, pretty scary. And what happens if it does? You're dead? <sighs> Figured as much. <laughs> Protect that with your life, huh? Will do. Can you tell me more about this Kuroiwa guy? He's the darling of the Camaro police station. Strong, popular, and always gets his mark. They've got him fast-tracked for promotion. And you don't like him, why? Guy's too damn perfect! Think it's any fun working with a perfectionist? Not to mention, he's a handsome devil. Envy's what makes a man ugly, friend. Especially, uh, coming from a dirty cop. I don't know. I think it's kind of refreshing. <laughs> Glad you see it my way, Yagami-san. Here. Look at this asshole. Yeah, handsome. <laughs> right. He knows who you are, by the way. After all, you're the guy who got Hamura acquitted. <laughs> Fair enough. Anyway, don't open that here, okay? I'll keep it shut tight till I'm back in my office. That work? I'm usually hanging around Tender. Swing by there if you need anything else. Got it. Glad that's over with. I'm gonna play a few hands while I'm here. You staying, or...? I'll think about it. Righto. See you around. What was that about? Were they going after this? Let's see. One of us is earning this pay. How are those docks from Ayabe looking? Not bad. How things go at the casino? I want a mill or so. A mill? I'd have kept going, but it seemed like a good round number. Oh, good. Guess I don't need to pay you this month. Hey, I ain't a charity. Anyway, anything good in there? Not yet. Cops only got as far as arresting Hamra. Well, according to this, that was the only lead they had. They're as stumped as we are. Huh. No wonder Ayabe was practically giving that shit away. 
There is something in here about the second murder, though. Apparently, they had been tracking the victim, Kunimura, right up until his death. I take it that's Kunimura? Yeah. Two hours before his death, he was seen leaving a brothel called Konban Wife. Kind of place where the girls pretend they're married. Sounds like he was there for a Kanai-chan. <laughs> At least the guy had some fun before he went out. Hell, that's how I want to go. I'm gonna go talk to this Kanai-chan. See if she knows anything about Kunimura. With any luck, I might even get a lead on the mole. Come on, man. Leave the sexy shit to me. You're too young to handle a married woman anyway. <laughs> you do realize I'm just gonna talk to her, right? You're seriously not letting me take point on this one? What if I tell Mafuyu Chan? Go ahead. No skin off my back. Welcome, sir. Any requests tonight? Huh? Oh. Yuna Chan, Marin Chan, and Kanai Chan are all free tonight. Here's their pictures. It's a thousand extra to make specific requests. So I don't have to pick any of them. I see. Is this your first time here, sir? Why don't we start by picking a duration? Duration? And any options you'd like. Uh, options? Right. Uh, let's start at the top, huh? For durations, we have 35 minutes for 9,000 yen, 50 minutes for 13,000 yen, or 65 minutes for 17,000 yen. Let's do 50 minutes? Ah, oh, the big 5-0. Our most popular duration. Not too short, but not too long. The perfect length to soothe your body and mind. Interesting. Ultimately, it's your choice, though. Don't worry, there's no wrong answer. Did you have a specific girl in mind? At the moment, we have Yuna-chan, Marin-chan, and Kanai-chan. I'll go with Kanai-chan. A fine choice, sir. Something wrong, sir? You wanted Kanai-chan, yes? Yep. Kanai-chan it is. Great. Next, you can pick any options you'd like to add. There's quite a few. You can discuss those directly with the girl. What kind of options are we talking? Oh, all kinds. Although, not every girl is open to everything, you know. All you need to know about Kanai-chan is she doesn't do blindfolds. Bl blindfolds? Yes, sir. She had a bad experience with them when she was younger. Sorry to hear that. Guess there have been all those murders lately, too. Yes, well, you came here to forget all of that, yes? Anyway, let me show you to your room. Right this way, sir. Of tastes. Sort of out of your price range, huh? Why are you even here? What's going on? Maybe I should be asking you the same question, yeah? <laughs> Not that I need to. Why are you still looking into the Curie murders, Tuck? Keep your eyes to yourself, lest you want to lose them. Are we clear? <laughs> you don't get to decide what I do. Don't go digging up dirt. Shintani went through a lot of work making those charges go away. <laughs> you want to keep playing detective? You ought to work out more. Well, I... got jumped earlier by four assholes wearing ski masks. Yeah? And why should I care? Well, I think... maybe you had something to do with it. I'm pretty sure that's the four of them right there. Huh. 
I think you must have my boys confused. Right, Kengo? Yeah. No one likes a fucking liar! Kanai-chan oh. <laughs> quit, packed her bags and went back home. So stop looking for her. Why? I'm gonna let you off with a yellow card this time. <laughs> but only because the boss likes you so much. That's Yagami. You got a sec? Sure. You okay? You don't sound too good. I could use a hand with uh, the family captain. I'd really appreciate it if you could get him off my case. I see. Well, uh, I'm just killing time at the office right now. Why don't you come on by? We'll talk. Sounds good. Take a seat. <sighs> Forgive me if this is rude, but I'll cut right to the chase, my boy. Hmm? I don't know what's going on between you and Hamura, but there's nothing I can do to help. What do you mean? You're not even gonna hear my side of the story? You'd just be wasting your time. Hammer has been bankrolling the family for a while now. I get by on the scraps he leaves me. I'm... I'm just a figurehead. But... The clan will do the things I ask of them, yes. But if they had to choose between my orders and Hamura's, who knows? Maybe they would choose not to hear me. How long has it been like this? Years. The prime of my career was... Well, it ended back when I was raising you. Atsugane-san. If only Kaito was still in the family, maybe things wouldn't have turned out like this. We're not done here. Actually, we are. I have a message from Captain Hamura, Yagami-san. He says to go see him right away. He's waiting for you at Cafe Alps. He wants to talk. Fine. I'll head over when I feel like it. Don't piss him off, Yagami-san. Unless you want to lose your eyes, too. Welcome, sir. Please, take a seat wherever you'd like.
I didn't think you'd try to pull that. Running off and telling an adult. Like a fucking child. Oh, I just thought that the guy who actually runs the show would want to be able to keep tabs on his captain. He doesn't need to. So you keep your goddamn nose out of this shit. Understand? Or do I need to spell it out? Yeah. I'm hearing you loud and clear. So... I guess we're done here. We're not done until I say so. don't really work on you, do they, Tark? Well, I guess you always have been a fighter. None of us thought you'd last a day in law school. But you sure showed us. Went to night classes, passed the bar. You say you're done, but a guy with balls like you doesn't give up. You fought for your lawyer's badge, but trash with a badge is still trash. And it's about time to take you out. Ozaki! Ready to die? Huh? Oh, enough of this. You're dead! <sighs> this is some bullshit. You already went. Huh? It's only fair I take my turn. about the eyes. One bullet in each. Man the fuck up, Kengo! Who the hell? No way. We gotta go. This way! Get them both! Let's go! <laughs> Let him move it! 
You don't give up, do you? Let me borrow this real quick. Oh. 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 You don't give up, do you? Damn it. They finally give up? Move it. Not yet. Up, do you? Out with it. Just who are you? I'd appreciate it. Thank you, first. Why should I? After what you did to me this afternoon? I gave your phone back, didn't I? Then why even take it? What was the point of it? I was trying to get away from a cop. Asshole just wouldn't get off my case. But when I saw you on the phone, I had the greatest idea. Okay, go on. Well, I guess the first step was taking your phone. I knew you'd end up following me after that. Then, seeing you and me running in the same direction, the cop would think you were my buddy. And while he took his sweet time arresting you, I was gonna escape. I have to say, never thought you'd actually get away from him too, though. Eh, guess all's well that ends well, yeah? And just now, why'd you come save me? Good question. Why did I do it? Eh, beats me. <laughs> Interesting stuff. <laughs> Let's just say I wanted to apologize for stealing your phone. Lucky break, huh? You'd have got your brains blown out if it wasn't for me. You're telling me. Guess I owe you. In which case? We're even now. Hey. Why are you so dead set on this burglary ring? 
There's got to be something better. <laughs> what? If you're looking for work, maybe you could join us instead. <laughs> and have the Yakuza out for my head? <laughs> Fat chance. Those guys from before were Matsugane family. But, uh, the Kyori's also looking for me. <laughs> you sure know how to sell it. <laughs> but... I don't think we can trust each other just yet. Yagami-san? What'd you say? How do you know my name? <laughs> Matsugane family captain Kyohei Hamura is connected to the mole. Confirming his suspicions, Yagami's progress is impeded. The entire city is under Hamura's surveillance, and it went deeper than he knew. Alone and out of options, Yagami receives a little support. But the night is still young. Don't show your face again until you've got him. Search the whole fucking city if you have to. What, the kid in the mask? Find him too, dumbass! Ah! Time no see, Yagami. Higashi? Hey, Is that you? <laughs> Said he's here on Captain's orders. They've been looking for you. I know. Sounds like he really doesn't want our killer caught. You're not giving up, are you? With how much it's pissing Hammer off? I wouldn't dream of it. Keep your nose out of this, asshole. It's your fault I'm here cleaning this shit up. What? Something wrong? I thought you were all about being Hamura's lapdog. I'm willing to do a few tricks for the treats he hands out. And hell, he's a better leader than you were. Kaito Anaki. You've got no business calling me that now. I suppose not. Then take your thugs and go, Higashi. Fine. We can call it here for today. Looks like if I want to fight you, I'll have to be ready to kill you. Looking forward to it. We're done here. Come on. Remember what I told you. Yagami here is a ticking time bomb. Get rid of him if you want to survive. Damn, Higashi. You're finally looking like a real Yakuza these days. Whatever, asshole. Talk. Think you can tail Higashi real quick? Huh? 
If I'm being honest, I've been worried about him ever since I left the clan. Yeah. He's changed a lot. I couldn't tell you what he's been through, but it's pretty clear he's had it rough. It's like you said, he's changed a lot. All right, I'm on it. Here, let me pay you. It's the least I can do. <laughs> you really think I want your money? Besides, how else am I gonna get more dirt on Hamra? Hello? It's Kaito. I have a read on Higashi. Just turn right down Nakamichi Street. Alone. Right on Nakamichi. Got it. Thanks again. What is it? Got it. I'll be right there. Aniki! Help me out here! The fuck are you? Oh, shit. Get lost, pal. He's out of our league, man. Let's move. Thank you so much! Anytime. Watch it! I'm so sorry.
This is Kaito. Higashi went into an arcade on Park Boulevard. Ring any bells? An arcade? Yeah. Looks like it's called Charles. Oh, that. I used to manage the place. Guess the family has him running it now. A Yakuza arcade? Well, they have a casino in the back or something? Nah, we just used it for deals every so often. It's pretty much a regular shop. You know, for kids. Okay. I'll see what I can find. Hey, just a sec. What? It's, uh, pretty tight in there. You're gonna need to be covert if you don't want him spotting you. Right. I'll change real quick. Got it. Machine ain't my coin. Pipe down, brat. Can't you see I'm busy here? Yeah, but... I said beat it, kid. <laughs> Sorry about that, kid. Here, go have some fun. Whoa, really? Thanks, mister. What do you think you're doing, huh? Off limits. I said stay out, asshole. Yagashi san, this guy's crazy! Yagami? You followed me, asshole? Wait, what the hell are you wearing? Let's not worry about that now. So, what do you want? Kaito san's worried about you, you know? Oh, yeah? As far as he can tell, you're nothing like you were in the old days. Why the fuck would I be? And who the fuck cares? This is how the Yakuza roll. Right. Except it's all a big act, isn't it? <laughs> huh? I saw you give that kid some cash. You big softy. Deep down, you're the same old Higashi. The one who used to look up to Kaito-san. You sure about that asshole? Look, I don't want to fight you. I can turn and walk away if you want. <laughs> Coward. <laughs> Same old story. How long has it been since we've seen each other? A year now? It was the day Kaito-san got expelled. You were... pretty upset by it. A thief going after Yakuza Cash. 
Couldn't imagine anyone's that dumb. But they did it. All under Kaito-san's watch. The family lost 100 mil that day. But there was nothing Kaito-san could do with a gun shoved in his face. <laughs> what the hell do you think you're doing? Making sure there's some accountability around here, boss. As if that'll suddenly make things right. How exactly does this get our money back? Well, it won't, but it's a start. It's important to set an example. A hundred mil, huh? Sounds like that's one expensive finger. Talk. Why are you here? We were outside having a chat. The hell do you think you're doing? That pinky's big money. Thought I'd get a good long look before it's gone forever. Shut it! Huh. <laughs> Pretty pathetic, isn't it? But Hamura, the damage was a hundred million. You really think one pinky can cover that? Huh. There's gonna be a whole lot more coming his way. More than this? Uh... What more can you do? Good question. Kaido-san. You're out for good. There's no way. Kaito Anaki is... <sighs> Boss, you're okay with this? Begging him won't get you out of this. You see, boss, it's gotta be done. You know it's only fair. You should know. I already informed the main family of this. Did you know? You were awfully efficient about that. Thank you very much. <sighs> Atsugane san, you really gonna go through with this? It's done, Tak. Kaito's out. From this point forward? Are you sure about that? I'm certain. Good news, Kaito-san. You get to keep your pinky. Huh? You don't get to decide that! Yakuza cut off their fingers to show accountability for the things they do. A civilian like Kaito-san has no reason to do that. The fuck do you think you are? With all due respect, your own boss just said Kaito's not Yakuza anymore. Captain. <sighs> Back off. I'll do what I've gotta. Kaito-san. This is how it's gonna have to be. I'm not afraid. I'm Yakuza, dammit! Wait! Kaito! You're not Matsugani family or Yakuza anymore. You hear? I don't need your pinky, so just go. It was fucked up. The boss brought you in to save Kaito Anaki. But it was too late. He was gonna get expelled no matter what. Even so, you gave him the best defense a man could ask for. Yeah, and Hamura's had his eye on me ever since. You know, you're doing pretty well for yourself, Higashi. Looks like you're moving up the ranks. I heard this used to be Kaito-san's arcade. The hell do you know? Hamura practically controls the Matsugani family now. With Kaito Anaki gone, Matsugani-san's command has slowly slipped away. This would have never happened if he'd stayed. Couldn't you have done something? You just sat and watched while he took control. Easy for you to say. I couldn't have done shit. Maybe not. By the way, Whatever happened to the family's hundred mil? Huh? 
Did they ever get the money back? Or find the thief? <sighs> Fuck off. It's none of your business. True. To go. Fine. I ended up going in that arcade. Talk to Higashi. He caught you, huh? Nah. I just wanted to have a chat. Anything come of it? First off, Matsugane-san's completely lost control of Hamura. Apparently, Higashi has no choice now but to follow his captain's orders. Fucked up. When we talked, though, it felt like I was talking to the same old Higashi. Didn't look same old to me. You know a year ago, when you got expelled from the family? Uh-huh. It was because someone stole a hundred mil from the safe, right? Yeah, what about it? What ended up happening with that? Did you ever hear anything? Apparently, Higashi got it all back. At least, according to Ayabe. Higashi did? But how? Not a clue. I would have had to fork up another 200 grand for more info. I didn't have the cash, so I dropped it. Haven't brought it up since. Sounds like Ayabe has a lot to tell us. It'll cost you. Bet you can find him a tender around now. I wonder what Hamura will do next. He'll be back here soon enough. It's just a matter of time. Wouldn't even be surprised if he tried to off us. <laughs> you think we pissed him off that much? Well, he doesn't want us catching the mole, that's for sure. Other than that... I think he just hates our guts. Damn. Even though we're the reason he's a free man? Guess we just can't catch a break. Kaito-san, how long's it been since you saw Higashi? Today was the first time since getting the boot. Hamura would have been all over him if we kept in touch. I didn't want to weigh him down, you know? Gotcha. You heading to tender? Whatever info Ayabe's got is gonna cost you, you know. I well, hope I have enough then. I'll figure something out if not. Welcome back, Doc. So, rumor has it you've been serving drinks to a dirty cop? In my bar? I take offense to that. <laughs> Ayabe here yet? He said he's heading over. Before that though, Doc, uh, I've got a little job I'd like you to handle, if you would. A job, huh? Only the best detective in Kamaroto can handle this case. Oh yeah? Well then how can I refuse? Ah, you're blushing. I mean it though. Then clue me in. <laughs> Would if I could. I never actually asked. The client's a regular of mine though, so you don't need to worry. Anyway, you'll need to head over to a place called Hill's Garden on Park Boulevard. Right now? Right now. And I'll let you know when Ayabe-san comes in. Come on, detective. It's not like you to turn down a paying job. Huh. You got me there.
Hm? Oh! Huh? <laughs> hmm? Excuse me. Hmm? Ah. 
Hm? Must we? Hey. Thank you. 
Out of the way. Ayabe. Masuda told me to give you a ring. You need something? Yeah. Info I hear you got. You got the cash? I'm done handing out freebies. Oh, and the price will depend on what you want to know. Well, it just so happens you already told Kaitos on the price. 200 grand. Hmm? You know how all that money got stolen from the Matsugane? I want to know what happened to it. And what? I said it'd be 200k? That's what he told me. In that case, let's make it 100. Price drops with age. Oh, does it? Look, I'm not pulling the numbers out of my ass. I got calculations. System. Anyway, I'll drop by your place tomorrow. Have the cash ready. Ayabe. Wake up and look behind you. <laughs> huh? God, next time just knock, would you? Those are the files on the Matsugane robbery investigation? Investigation? What have you been smoking? No Yakuza's gonna report a robbery on their office. I mean, they'd have cops swarming the place. Wait. The Matsugane incident was never a formal case. I rounded all of this up myself. You have the cash? A hundred grand, just like you asked. Nice. Everything's so clear. And these are practically real case files. You want to know how long I spend on this stuff? Way more than I do on the streets, that's for sure. <laughs> Someone's proud of himself. <laughs> now then, this is the floor plan for the Matsugane family office. It's from a year ago when the break-in happened. They haven't remodeled since then, have they? <laughs> Doubt it. So, to avoid getting seen by the security camera, the thief snuck in behind a guy coming in. Once they were in the camera's blind spot, he pistol whipped the guy and knocked him out cold. At the time, Kaito was the only one watching over the office. That's why the thief went in at 3 p.m. Barely any guards to deal with. All he had to do was point his gun at Kaito and get him to open the safe. There was only one thief. Why didn't Kaito-san fight back? What would you do if a guy pointed a gun at your head and then shot the ceiling to prove his point? Even a guy like him would freeze up under that kind of pressure. You're really gonna chance playing hero? Once the safe was open, the thief smacked Kaito too. Knocked him out just like the last guy. And that's how the story ends.
sounds a little too well thought out. <laughs> this guy was a pro. And consider this. If he didn't know when the office would be empty, he'd never have been able to pull it off. Clearly, he had a contact on the inside. Maybe, but still. I don't understand why Kaito-san reacted like that. Normally, he'd have killed the guy, or died trying. <laughs> thought you'd say that. Hmm? That was all just a warm-up. This next bit is what's worth the hundred grand. So, I said Kaito was alone in the office, right? Well, turns out someone else was there too. Huh? Higashi. He saw the whole thing go down. But Kaito's the guy who took the proverbial bullet. Bad move, dumbass. Open the fucking safe. Hurry up or I'll kill you. Interesting. Well then, you better make it count. Otherwise, it's gonna be my turn. Apparently, the poor guy was polishing his boss's shoes off in the corner. By the time he figured out what was going on, he was fucked. Okay, then. You got me. The money's yours. I'll just... Go get it. He <laughs> guess he couldn't forget that face if he tried. It was seared into his memory. You could say it all worked out for the best, since no one got killed. You could also say Higashi abandoned his Aniki and let the thief get away. And that's one way for a Yakuza to lose a finger. Kaito never did tell anyone else that Higashi froze like a deer in the headlights. Instead, he took the fall for the missing hundred mil and got himself tossed out of the family. <laughs> Why am I not surprised? That sounds exactly like what Kaito-san would do. Right? But what happened next? How did Higashi get the money back? Couldn't have been easy. He chased the thief down and took it back. Thought that'd get Kaito back into the fold, which it obviously didn't. Thing is, he needed access to the police database to search for faces. I see it now. That's why you know what you do, huh? You think so? It's the only way you'd know about this case. They never filed a police report after all. <laughs> ding, ding, ding! Long story short, Higashi used the database and found his man. A homeless guy living on the streets of Kamurocho. Known around town as Red Nose. Here, just sent you a pic. That's what he looked like before his life went to shit. I don't think his nose is all that red. Not my name, don't ask me. Anyway... I think you know what came next. He tracked Red Nose down and took the money back. But Kaito-san's still out in the cold. Ain't that funny? Meanwhile, Higashi's shooting up the ranks. Guess he got on Hamura's good side. And Red Nose? 
Haven't heard a peep about him. And I'm keen to keep it that way. Higashi didn't kill him, did he? Beats me. Hmm. Well, how was it? Worth the hundred G's? A year ago, Higashi must have turned the city upside down looking for Red Nose. If a guy like him could pull that off, so can I. Sorry, mind if I ask you a question? <sighs> Go on. Do you know a homeless guy named Red Nose? Here he lives around here. Nope, not ringing a bell. I only just moved to this part of town. Oh, okay. Sorry to bother you. Hello. Do you have a second? Huh? I'm looking for a man named Red Nose. Red Nose? That homeless guy? Yeah, I know him. Ain't seen him in at least a year, though. Any idea where he went? Nope. Uh, maybe a drink will jog your memory? No, I, I really don't know. Go bug someone else. You have a minute, sir? What do you want? Uh, I'm looking for someone. A man by the name of Red Nose. Call that a Red Nose? I sure as hell don't. Yeah, I thought the same thing. Guess that's what his friends call him, though. Never seen him. Now fuck off, yeah? Damn, guy. Sorry. Can I ask you something? Depends. What do you want? I'm looking for someone. A man by the name of Red Nose. Red Nose? Never heard of him. Nothing, huh? But maybe my friends know something. Can you ask them? You bet. Might take some time, though. That's all right. I can wait. If you say so. Oh, and in return, I've got this thing called a play pass. You mind taking a shot at it? Come again? It's for a new game this Big Shot Committee just opened. They call it Dice and Cube, over at Paradise VR. Which is what? It's uh, some kind of fancy board game. You wear stupid glasses, you roll dice, a heck of a It's over on Theater Alley, and you need one of the play passes to get in. Huh. This town's crazy sometimes. I hear they got some pretty nice prizes if you win, too. But my legs are shot to shit. No VR for this hobo. Yeah, I guess you'd still have to move around. I got a few friends who've tried, but it sounds like they're all having trouble. So I want you to get a prize for me. Young guy like you can do it no problem, what do you say? Sounds interesting. All right, you wait here. I'll go win you that prize. Thanks a million, buddy. I'll ask around about your red nose in the meantime. Yep. Here we go. Let's do this. Whoa! 
Come <laughs> on. 
Roll them. Hey, pal, how'd it go? Get me one of those sweet VR prizes? Sorry. Turns out I suck. You couldn't do it, huh? Oh, well. Sorry for borrowing your legs. Anyways, I asked around about your red nose fellow. Still don't know where he is, but I did find who might. Yeah? At least that's what they told me. Oh, and speak of the devil. You're the one looking for that homeless guy? Yeah? You find him? No, not yet. Try heading over to the children's park, then. Some volunteers are handing out free food. All the hungry homeless of Kamurocho will be there. Thanks for the tip. Eh, don't mention it. See ya. Yo, it's Kaito. Where are you? On my way to the children's park. Think I might run into the thief. You mean the guy who robbed us is still in town? Not sure. But even if he isn't, I might find a lead or two. According to Ayabe, the thief was a homeless guy by the name of Red Nose. You're saying a bum took our money? Looks like it. No clue if he's still alive, though. After Higashi got to him, that is. Right. Well, I'm in. See you at the children's park, yeah? Hey, sorry about this. Looks like they weren't handing out food after all. My bad. So we're doing this instead? Yep. Red Nose sends his regards! You guys are getting old for this. Why'd you attack me? We wanted to know who you are. Why would someone want to know about Red Nose now? So, you're a friend of his? Is he still alive? No. Hasn't been for a while now. When'd he die? About a year ago. Someone found him floating face up in the sewer. Body was all shot up with bullet holes. Shot? Did you go to the police? No, of course not. What are the cops gonna do for us? Dead bum in a ditch is just more paperwork for them. Either way, his body's long gone. But we still want to find out what happened to him. That's the best funeral we can give him now. Right. Don't have a clue who killed him, though. Or why. All we remember is that a year ago, some Tojo clan Yakuza was looking for him. Must be Higashi. And is that Yakuza the one who killed Red Nose? <sighs> Not sure. Those types are kind of out of our league, you know? We thought if anyone would know something, it'd be you. That's why we... Sorry, but my buddy here's got more fight in him than some random Yakuza. Fighting's been the only constant thing in his life. <laughs> That's Kamurocho for you. 
You're late, Kaito-san. Is this the guy who was looking for Red Nose? Yep, that's him. Not a doubt in my mind. So, a year ago, Higashi took the money back from Red Nose and returned it to the Matsugane family. Around the same time, Red Nose turns up ice cold in the sewer. Who do you think killed him? I... I just can't believe it. Higashi's not a murderer. Where would he have even gotten a gun? There are ways. This is Gamurocho, remember? I'm gonna go talk to Higashi. You're coming too, right Kaito-san? Don't you want to know what happened? Okay, I'll come. Let's head to Charles then. Higashi-san! Yagami's here, and Kaito's with him. Wow. <laughs> Never thought I'd see you roll in here. Kaito-san. Only seemed fair after what you pulled. Look, we need to talk. <laughs> and about what, exactly? Higashi. Red Nose. Did you kill him last year? <laughs> Who? Don't play dumb. The guy who broke into the Matsugane family office. Look, we already know you got the money back from him. And not long after, Red Nose turned up dead in the sewers. As for the cause, it seems he'd been shot. Higashi-san! Motherfucker! How dare you! I need you to answer me. Did you kill Red Nose or not? Start talking, Higashi! I did it for you, man. If I could have just gotten the money... Maybe they wouldn't have kicked you out of the fucking family. I was ready to do whatever I needed to do. For Kaito, huh? If you really mean it, then drop the goddamn gun! Not a chance! So it's all on the table. You really gonna kill us, huh, Higashi? It's over. You don't have enough bullets in that damn gun. You can't kill us all. <laughs> Thanks for that. Now go! Fuck you! God damn, that felt good. Come on! Yeah. This is what I pay you for, Kaito-san. Fuck yeah! I didn't. I didn't kill him. What? I'm not the one who murdered Red Nose. Then who the hell was it? Red Nose must have had a contact in the Matsugane family. That's the only way he got away with it. And whoever that contact was gave him all sorts of info. When security was light, where the safe was, not to mention when there'd be the most money. There's no way you steal from the Yakuza without some help. So... Is Red Nose's contact the one who killed him? To cover it all up? Probably. But who would have done something like that? Stealing their own family's money? It wasn't about the money. Huh? They wanted to rub you out of the picture, Kaito. That's why it happened when you were on guard duty. To rub me out? If that's it, then the contact must have been... Yeah, Captain Hamra. 
You were the only thing between him and total control of the family. With you gone, he could consolidate his power. At least that's how he saw it. And he wasn't wrong. Just look at it now. Yeah. Nobody can stand up to the captain anymore. With the power and money he's got, he's the only thing keeping us afloat. How exactly did Red Nose die? You know, don't you, Higashi? It was the day after the hundred mil went missing. After Kaito Anaki got expelled. I bought some info from a dirty cop. Led me right to the name Red Nose. I asked all around town. Till eventually I ended up down in the sewers. But me and Red Nose, we weren't the only two there. You found Hamura, didn't you? They were making a deal. Hamura was gonna get 90 mil, and Red Nose would have walked away alive. And 10 million yen richer at that. Should have been all wrapped up, clean and easy. Who's there? Come out! Hamura... Is that him? It's Higashi, sir! Sorry to barge in on you like this. Higashi... What in the fuck are you doing here? Are you alone? I, uh, I don't know if you realize, but that's the guy. That's Red Nose. He stole the hundred mil from our office. Sorry, Red Nose. This is nothing personal. <gasps> Captain? Hey, um, that really a good idea? Tell me, how'd you find out Red Nose was the thief? I... Uh, I... Well, I... Uh, What was I supposed to do? I told him everything. How I was in the office when the thief broke in and stole the money. How I bought police info from Ayabe and followed the trail to Red Nose. I kept talking, like my fucking life depended on it. Probably did, to be honest. Hmm. Real insightful. You did all that so you could clear your buddy Kaito's name, huh? Aren't you just the most loyal boy in town? Please, don't shoot. Whatever it is you want, I'm begging you, Captain! But, Captain, hold on. You sure? Huh, probably right. You want to stay alive. You show us some loyalty. Prove yourself once and for all. But how? How can I? Here's how. What? He wouldn't have had to die if you didn't show your sorry face. Not only that, he would have walked away ten million richer. Poor son of a bitch. His blood's on your hands, you know. No! <laughs> oh, wow. You scream like a fucking whore. Kind of a turn on, to be honest. What are you so upset for? You're finally a real Yakuza now.
So you really didn't kill him, huh? No. But people know I was out looking for him. My prints are all over the gun, too. No matter how you look at it, I don't got an alibi. You said it yourself. I look like a real Yakuza now. I was thinking the same thing. Hey, what if we told Matsugane-san about this? Think he could put the squeeze on Hamura? Not a chance. The boss can't stop him anymore. Telling him would just make things worse. That's why Higashi kept it a secret. Tough as it sounds, it was the right move. Right. Hell of a thing. All right, I'm gonna go, Kaito-san. Mm hmm? This is between the two of you now. I'm sure you've got a lot to catch up on. Not sure what it is. I just can't stand that guy. Yeah? I mean, he's known you way longer than I have. And the boss has his back, even though he never swore up. I don't know. Something's just off about him. Hey, you ever hear what happened to his dad? Nope. What happened? Let me start from the beginning. From what I've heard, he was a stand-up guy. <laughs> Taught him kung fu and everything. He was a lawyer, too. Oh, yeah? Things changed when Tak was 15. His dad took a dead-to-rights murder case and actually managed to get an acquittal. One of the victim's relatives wasn't too happy about that, though. Huh? <laughs> when Tak was younger, his parents were both stabbed to death. Tak was at a friend's house when it happened. He was there to avoid them. Pissed about the hours they were working. But maybe if he'd been home... Maybe he could have done something. Anything. Maybe his parents would still be alive. So this guy who killed the family, did they ever catch him? He hung himself at the scene of the crime. Tragic doesn't even begin to describe it. Tak ended up coming to Kamurocho right after that. Didn't want any help from his relatives, neither. So he lied about his age and snagged a job at Tender. Got it. So that's when he met you, huh? Yeah. And if you want the truth, I wasn't too big on the guy at first, either. I was pretty green at the time, too. But here comes this 15-year-old punk picking a fight with a Yakuza my size. The ball's on that one. Probably thought he stood a chance. <laughs> Probably. Until I broke his nose. But no matter how much he gets beaten down, Tok's not the kind of guy to give up. Every time I beat the crap out of him, he'd act like it was no big deal. Then one day, and I couldn't tell you why, Matsugane-san took a shine to him. This weird father-son thing just kind of happened. Tak wouldn't listen to anyone else. For me and you, becoming Yakuza was our only choice. But for him, it was different. And if I had to guess, the boss could see that. And that's why he took him in. Tak didn't let him down, though. Ended up passing the bar exam not long after. I remember. Wasn't too pleased with it myself. <laughs> but that's all in the past. It's different now. He's a dead man walking. What do you and Matsugane-san still see in him? I could ask the same question about a guy who got kicked out for letting his safe get robbed. Kamurocho chews up guys like us, and when it spits you out, you're right back on the street. 
But me and him, we grew up here. We don't have another home. So even if it means butting heads with Captain Hamura, we're gonna see this shit through. Anaki. The Captain's word is absolute. At least for now. But if he ever gave the order to off you, I might have to think twice about it. <laughs> I think I can live with that. As Yagami chases the mole, the Matsugani family's net tightens. A year ago, Kaito was expelled from the family, and its power structure changed entirely. But the whole thing was a setup. In Kamarocho, men are pulled into the criminal underworld's currents. But those that refuse to submit to its tides will always struggle. So, Higashi, tell me, you have a good reason you aren't doing what I asked? No, I don't, boss. You sure could use one with talk still hanging around. It's time to start doing your damn job! Awfully tense lately. Uh, kind of kills the whole room, you know. Huh? Uh, yeah. Mm, he's always in such a bad mood. One dead, one wounded in the Tojo clan's Matsugane office shooting. Dead guy's name was Kurimoto. Been in the family for years. Did I know him? Doubt it. He didn't make a habit of standing out. Well, at least they got the killer. Apparently he says he's just an office worker. Bullshit. Guy's a Kyore assassin, no doubt. You sure? Yep. At least that's what Higashi told me. Oh, you mean the guy who was ready to shoot me the other day? <laughs> you still sore about that? Anyway, according to Higashi, this guy shot Kurimoto three times in the torso. Then, he shot both his eyes out. Why? Must be the Kyorei's idea of revenge. If things keep going like this, though, even the Tojo clan proper might end up getting involved. So the Kyorei clan wants a war? Looks like it. Kamurocho is turning into a goddamn battlefield.
Hello? Yagami-san! Huh? Yeah. No. <laughs> yes. Huh? Yaga me son. Hmm. 
Hmm. Hey. Hmm? Give me some. Suspicious. Y'all give me some. <laughs> ah. Yagami-san. Huh? <sighs> Please. Okay. 
okay. Nope. Okay. Check this hmm? out. Well... Thank you. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. Yagami? What, what are you doing here? Just here to chat. To chat? If Captain Hamura knew this, he'd... What? Never mind. Don't gotta worry about that now. He's in no position to be coming after you anymore. You mean because of the shooting? Yeah, it really shook him up. He's been MIA ever since that night. Went into hiding even before the cops came. So, what do you want? Don't just stand there. You're a guest. Take a seat. <sighs> Sounds like the family's a mess right now. Got that right. The office is crawling with cops. Gonna head over there myself once I'm done with this. Why? Gotta shore up the defensive line. The whole family's on duty for this shit. Right. I'm just wondering, why'd the Kyori decide to come after you now? They've been pretty quiet. It's obvious. They're second in commands in town and ready for war. Took the train up from Kansai and everything. Who's this guy? Name's Satoshi Shioya. The guy's a natural-born fighter, and soon enough, he'll be chairman. And he's the one who ordered the shooting? No doubt. Though he was targeting Hamura, not Kurimoto. What makes you say that? Take a look at this. It's a shot of Kurimoto right after the shooting. Ugh. Tough to look at. Man got bullets through both eyes. That's not what I want to show you. Look at his clothes. Hmm? His clothes? What about them? The captain was wearing the same jacket yesterday. Wait. They're about the same age, and they look the same from behind, too. Safe to say the captain knows who they were really after. Explains why he went into hiding so quick. <laughs> Funny how this all worked out. You don't look very worried. If the Kyore are gunning for Captain Hamura, why wouldn't they go for the guys who set him free, too? What, you think they're coming for me? Nah. If anything, Shintani's the one who should worry. After all, he was Hamura's lawyer. Yeah. He won't stand a chance with Yakuza gunning for him. If I were you, I'd at least give him a heads up. Son? How's my favorite know-it-all doing? Good? Who is this? The Sai, you know, from the Kahin game. And you're calling me why? Yakimi san, do not listen to him. <laughs> oh shut your mouth. Kim san, you okay? Do you want to see your friend alive again? Get your ass over here! That bastard. Kim-san! Yakami-san! I'm so sorry! Hmm. I forgot how much you pissed me off, know-it-all. And I forgot how dumb you look, so we might as well call it even. What was that?! So... This is our guy, huh? 
I've heard a lot about you, Yagami-san. Rumor has it you're a skilled little skull buster. Uh, thanks? The name's Honda. Renji Honda from the Kagan game. Pleased to meet you. Honda, shut up and help us kick his ass already! Help you? Come on, boys! doing I was looking forward to this fight not gonna waste it by just dogpiling the guy be glad to give you a taste too if you disagree hey what's your deal just want to fight you that's all huh that's the whole reason I joined the Kahin locking fists with tough bastards like you so come on Let's tango. Sorry, but I really don't have time for this. Fighting's the only thing that keeps the world spinning, Yagami-san. I know you agree. <sighs> now, enough talk. I'm ready for some fun! <laughs> You're even beefier than I'd heard! This is freaking great! I'm not too big on fighting for no reason, though. Oh, yeah? Look like you were having fun to me. You're a natural-born fist-flinger! But... I think we're done here. What? Random bystander phoned the coppers on us. They'll be here any second. Go! What about your fight? I thought that's what keeps the world spinning. Can't exactly fight you if you're rotting away behind bars. Let's go! Yakami-san, hurry! Uh, okay. Hey, that was a real hoot! Let's do it again sometime, Yakami-san! We should be safe now. Who was that guy, Kim-san? You do not know? Oh, that was Honda. One of the Keihin Four. The... what? Oh, 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 it's what they call the four highest ranking members of the Keihin Gang. Kasai, Honda, Sakakiba, and Koga. Each of the four has their own faction, and countless thugs doing their dirty work for them. So, there are two more? Yes, and I hear Koga's faction is the strongest of them all. Yes, word on the street is that they line their pockets selling weapons on the black market. Not even the Yakuza are keeping up with how powerful they have become. Well, then let's hope this Koga guy stays far away from us. So sorry. <laughs> I'm afraid it's my fault that they are coming after you. That's eh, all good. Please, just be careful, Yakimi-san. You too, Kim-san. Excuse me. Yagami. <laughs> hmm? Yep. Thanks. 
Thank you. Hey. Hmm? Huh? Yeah. Excuse me. いらっしゃいませありがとうございましたエクスキューズミーは
Excuse me. Ah! 
Ja. choice. Suspicious. Uh. Hey. Huh? Yagami. Hug me. Hmm. Say what? Here's your proof.
say what? Yep. Hmm? Huh? <laughs> Excuse me.
Jage mich. Hey. Check this out. Yagami. Say what? Yagami. You have a sec, Shintani-sensei? Huh? There's something I need to talk to you about. Huh. Perfect timing. I got a few words for you myself. Huh? Come on. Sounds like Hammer is not too happy with you. Huh? He says to quit digging around. We won the case, it's done. And I gotta say, I agree with him. Or was my victory not good enough for you? Oh, your victory and yours alone, huh? <laughs> you heard me. I was the lawyer, my victory. And thanks to that, work's been just flooding in. It's over, Yagami, let it die. Your work might be over, but the murderer is still out there. This mole you're dying to catch? Well, fuck right off! Your little detective game has done enough damage! Why don't you just leave this alone, huh? Hamura knows who the murderer is. He hid it from us the whole trial. And that innocent verdict made fools of us all. Maybe you're okay with that. But I'm not about to give this up. Ha! <laughs> you talk big, but you're just a mouse, and Hamura's a hungry fucking cat. Funny, he's the one in hiding. The Kyore are gunning for him. That's what the shooting was about. See, Hamura knows he's a target. And I believe he's not the only one who should be worried about himself. Do you get the picture? Huh? Keep your eyes open. I'm telling you this as a friend. Otherwise, 
You do you. I'm gonna do the right thing. <clears throat> Don't talk down to me! <laughs> you might as well let this mole shit go. Think this is some kind of Yakuza pissing contest, do ya? Come on! The mole is way bigger than you know. What do you mean? You know something. I can see it in your eyes. Hamura trusts you. Now tell me the damn truth! What about stopping the mole? You willing to take responsibility for another murder? Don't talk like I owe you. Attorney-client privilege. Not like you'd remember it. Go back to school. Shintani! Well, that's no good. I thought you said that you respected that guy, Yagami. Hello? Yo, it's me. I'm out in front of the Matsugane office. Looking into the shooting? Yep. The place is absolutely swarming with cops. Kuroiwa's running the investigation. Kuroiwa? Kuroiwa? You mean Ayabe's boss? That's him. Speaking of, Ayabe's here too. Makes a convincing cop when he tries. I was actually thinking I'd invite him over to tender. Try and get my hands on that juicy police info, you know? <laughs> you mind coming along? Not at all. See you over there. You must be making a killing with the state this city's in. Ain't that right, Ayabe? And it's all thanks to you. Do you know anything about the Matsugane shooting last night? Not too much, no. But hey, I thought you got Higashi for all your Matsugane needs now. Word travels fast. Who told you that? Kaito. Just now. Huh? You forget how to keep a secret, Kaito-san? Or are you trying to get your buddy killed? Higashi's screwed if Hamura finds out he's been helping us. Look, man. There's no point keeping stuff from Ayabe. Better to just tell him up front than have him find out somewhere else. What can I say? I'm a professional. Sure. Professional snitch. If the shoe fits. But sorry. I really don't have much for you today. Say what? You telling me I bought you a drink for nothing? What? Our time's too tough to buy around? Here. Let me at least repay you for the booze. Go on. <laughs> Did you know Hamura's in hiding? He's been out of the office ever since last night. Not even the cops can find the guy. <sighs> yeah, Higashi told us as much, actually. You charging us for this old news? I'm starting to wonder here. Okay, okay, fine. You want answers? Go ahead and ask. Everything's on the house for tonight. I'd rather talk business than sit here in silence anyway. Sounds good to me. Let me think. Why are the Kyori and Kamurocho to begin with? What's a Kansai group doing this far from home? Because they wanted turf in Tokyo, duh. Even if it meant war with the Tojo? They couldn't have the numbers for that. True. Compared to the Tojo's 25,000, Kyore have a meager thousand at most. Plus, Kamurocho is not exactly their home turf. And by that logic, they don't stand a chance. And yet they've been here almost two years now. Crazy when you think about it. Even the cops put money on the Tojo clan, crushing them into dust. So, what's the holdup then? The Kyore has the backing of the Kajihiro group. In other words, a lot of fucking money. Kajihiro? Isn't he a construction bigwig? Yep. And one of his subsidiaries is the perfect Kyore cover. I suppose you'd know it better as K.J. Art. Yeah, we're familiar. 
What does Kajihira have to do with the Kyore? Why is he funding Yakuza? Probably so he can expand East out of Kansai. The real money is out here anyway. From what I hear, he's got some big redevelopment plans for Tokyo. What kind of plans are we talking? Not a clue. But if they're coming from Kansai to do it, shit's gotta be important. And there's always dirty work with those kind of jobs, you know? Like what? Evictions, land sharks, laying the political groundwork. The Kyore is handling all that shit for Kajihira. At least, that's the word on the street. Yeah, thanks. These rumors of yours are gonna do us a ton of good. Well, what I know for sure is that the Kajihira CEO's been up in Tokyo a lot lately. Schmoozing with politicians, government officials, even Kazumi, the head of the Ministry of Health. Why would a construction guy be talking to someone from the Health Ministry? What's the connection? Beats me. Point is, the Kyore aren't here just for Yakuza shit. It's way more complicated than that. How are things in the Matsugane family? Well, you already know about the shooting. Their hands are tied while the cops are running the show. So, yeah, they've been pretty quiet. How's Kamurocho seem to you lately? Tense. And that shooting only made things worse. Nobody knows when the next fight will break out, or where a stray bullet might end up. Right. And our killer's only gone for Yakuza so far, but he could target anyone next. Gunfights? A murderer on the loose? This city's a mess. <laughs> you got that right. By the way, Amura might have walked, but the cops are still pretty fixated on this mole case. Even the public's wondering who'll be next. Huh. Just wondering, how does it feel when people call you a dirty cop? Eh, anyone who knows that side of me ain't exactly a saint either, you know? Good point. That's the pot calling the kettle black, or the kettle calling the pot black, whatever. <laughs> yeah, guess so. All right, I gotta go. Already? You're a busy boy. Yeah. Kaito-san? Huh? Yagami and Kaito, yes. What an honor. Tokyo Police. The name's Kuroiwa. Kuroiwa. The one who almost put Hamura behind bars, before you two pulled him out of my grasp. Huh. <laughs> so what? <laughs> I've become a department punchline now. I have you to thank. Hmm, you're very welcome. And I see you're <laughs> here too, Ayabe. Oh, Kuroiwa-san. Nice nights. It's great to see you. Yeah. I cut out of work to grab a few drinks. You doing the same, Ayabe? Nah, <laughs> old me? I don't play hooky. Well, we should be on our way. Hey, let me ask before you go. The Okubo case. You let that murderer get off scot-free, after which he burned his poor girlfriend to death. And yet, here we are with another murderer roaming the streets of this city. I wonder who the next victim will be. You consider that, Yagami-sensei. Good talk? Yeah, I'm used to dealing with assholes like that. 
What was Kuroiwa doing there anyway? I bet he knows about Ayabi's little side gig. Probably came to keep him from chirping too much. Right. Or maybe he wanted to keep an eye on us. Hope not. I don't need that guy breathing down our necks. Anyway, you want to head home? Not yet. Something's bugging me about the Kyore clan. What do you mean? Until today, I just thought they were here scouting out some new turf in Kamurocho. But it turns out they've got a construction conglomerate behind them, and they're involved in redevelopment, too. So you want to figure out who the real Kyore is? Not a bad idea. But how are we going to investigate? You don't remember? We have a friend on the inside. <laughs> you mean Morase? Oh, yeah. Come on, let's head to KJR. Hey, talk. We're getting close to KJR. Hey, you want to bust out the drone? See what our old friend Morase is up to? Yeah, should be pretty easy to find him this time. <laughs> Right this way. All right, it's spy time. Okay, I'll handle the flying. You keep watch on anyone coming in or out. Expected. Yeah, not so sure it's that simple, though. Take another look. Morase's alone. Your point being? Hands up. Matsugane guy died at our hands. Always knew we'd get some Tojo clan boys sent over here. So, you see, we've been expecting guests this whole time. Yagami-san. <laughs> ideas, Kaito-san? I, uh... You're the ideas guy, aren't you? Damn it. If you two clowns really were Tojo clan, We'd have gouged your eyes out by now. The Town's sure noisy, huh? No one will care about, say, a couple of gunshots up here. Whose bright idea was this? This guy. Oh, is that really how it's gonna be, Kaito-san? <laughs> and just who are you? Good question, Kaito-san. Satoshi Shioya's the name. The Kyori clan's captain, huh? Higashi mentioned him. Hey! Get some cuffs on these fools. I've got some burning hot questions to ask them. <laughs> you ready? I think we're gonna have a little fun. You think I'm messing around? Take him out now! No! Shoot him! Shit! You? Why? Is this really the time? 
Fair enough. <laughs> Come on, let's move! That's enough. Come on, let's roll. Yeah, no reason to stay here. We owe you one. You should come with us. Hmm. Coming? Sure. May as well. Wait, just like that? Hold up. I'm not letting you assholes get away that easily. Yakuza don't fuck around. <laughs> you three are gone. <laughs> well, shit. You're not half as ugly as I figured you were. <laughs> what can I say? Not a good idea? Well, not like I'll get very far with it on, you know? <laughs> okay, let's go. Guys, what the hell were you thinking coming here? What? You don't want us around? No. It's just, if Captain Hamura saw you here, he'd... How's he gonna find us if he's off the grid? What are you worried about? Yeah, but... Forget it. Who's your friend? Good question. I'm Sugiura. Fumia Sugiura. This isn't the first time Sugiura here saved my neck. That mask. Ain't that the symbol of some big time burglary ring? It is, but I bailed on that. I'm flying solo now. What were you doing over by KJR? Don't want to talk? No, I just don't know where to start. It's kind of complicated. Hmm? Okay, well, I used to work for the Kajihira group, down at their headquarters in Kansai. You mean the guys backing the Kilray clan? Yeah. I had a job doing IT work for them for a bit. Keeping their servers safe, that kind of stuff. I was their systems engineer. Go on. Well, one day I noticed some accounting data was off. They were cooking the books. Really? Turns out the top guys were making a slush fund. They stashed away millions, writing it all off as some vague business expense. Digging it all up was kind of a thrill. <laughs> Until I got caught. Everything happened so fast after that. They accused me of embezzling company funds and threw me out on the street. Nobody would believe a word I said. But I knew where the money was going. A group of Yakuza known as the Kyore clan. Specifically, a shell company called KJ Art. If I could just prove it, I'd be able to get back at the bastards who cheated me. Which is why you were staking out the place. I've been keeping watch over there for a while now. <laughs> I even saw you break in and beat the crap out of Murase. Assuming all that's true, why did you rescue us? You remember when you asked to team up, Yagami-san? I thought about it, and... It seems like a pretty good deal. Might be worth putting our heads together for a while. Me and the Yagami Detective Agency. <laughs> Especially you, Kaito-san. Huh? No matter how many Yakuza come to take you down, you always have it handled. It's incredible.
<laughs> what can I say? You got a good eye, kid. And don't let it go to your head. Hey, can you guys please take this shit elsewhere? So, what do you say? I'm not saying we've got to become best buddies, but we can at least give each other a hand. How? You want your mole? I want the Kyore clan. We might not be after the same thing, but there's a lot of overlap. How can I get in touch with you? <laughs> Will that work? How the hell did you do that? I took your phone, remember? Not like I had to hack it or anything. Ah, kids these days. You know, I kind of like this Sugiura kid. That little compliment really won you over, huh? It's not like I fully trust him yet, man. We scratch his back, he scratches ours. As long as that's all he wants, I'm good. Agreed. Anyway, I'm gonna head back to the office. Cool. Later, man. Hmm? Hello? Hmm? Suspicious. Hmm.
Isn't that... He can never be too careful. Isn't that...
got it. Doc. Huh? Hey. Hello? Yagami-san. Um, this is Sari. What's up, Sari-san? You don't usually call me. I haven't been able to reach Shintani-sensei. It keeps going to voicemail. He hasn't picked up since he left the office after talking to you. Mm hmm And? Didn't you say the Kyori clan was after him? Yeah, he'll be fine. I just wanted to give him a scare. Okay, still. Could you try him for me? Sometimes he ignores my calls. Maybe he'll pick up for you. Are you sure we're talking about the same guy? <laughs> but I might as well. Can't hurt to try. Shintani here. Uh, hey, Shintani Sensei. It's Tak. Where are you? No, what the f You've reached the voicemail box of the one and only Masamichi Shintani, Genda Law Office's finest attorney. Shintani. Leave your legal troubles after the beep. The Tojo clan is struck by Kyure clan gunfire. Kamarocho's disarray only spreads wider. On the surface, the diagram resembles a Yakuza turf war. But in the shadows are glimpses of a construction firm and political influence. And in Yagami's own shadow, the mole's sharp claws claim yet another victim. What do you mean he's dead? Didn't you just say... Everything would be okay. Stay calm, sorry, son. I'm just as shocked as you. But I think the mole is responsible. <sighs> Have you contacted the police? No, not yet. You should do that right away then. Do you think you could make the call, sorry, son? What? 
I need time to check things out before the cops show up and take over. Please. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. We received a call from the Genda Law Office. You got here fast, Detective Kuroiwa. Shintani, huh? Yeah. His name has been coming up a lot lately. He's the reason Hamura walked, after all. <laughs> Perhaps you couldn't stand his newfound fame so you often. Huh? I heard you two weren't exactly on good terms. <laughs> Do you greet everyone by accusing them of murder? Guess that's just how cops like you operate. Forensics will be here soon. We will need you present as a resident of the property. After that, we'll need some time to investigate. How long? We'll have to find somewhere else to stay tonight at the very least. <sighs> I don't have money for that. Yet you can afford bribing a cop. Ayabe's sources aren't even that reliable. Don't know what you mean. Oh, I'm sure you do. Yeah, sorry. I had to wait around for the cops to get here. Is Genda-sensei still at the office? Yes. He wants to talk to you about Shintani. As do I. Hoshino, too. Okay. I'll head over now. See you soon. I know you've had a rough night, Yagami. But if you're up to it, can you tell us what happened to Shintani? Saori-san was having trouble getting in touch with Shintani. So I decided to give him a call myself, see what the deal was. But when I dialed him up, I heard the phone ringing in my closet. Shintani was killed the same way as all the others. The others? Do you mean his eyes were... Gouged out, yeah. But Shintani's beef was with the Kyore clan. Why would the Mole target him? 
I'm not so sure. It sounded like he knew something when you talked earlier. Right. Think this is some kind of Yakuza pissing contest, do you? Come on! The mole is way bigger than you know. He probably knew more about the mole than I did. And his source had to have been Hamra. Maybe they killed him to keep their secret safe. But... Uh, why did he have to put Shintani-sensei's body in your office? Not sure. Maybe to harass me? Maybe to scare me off their trail? <laughs> Maybe both. Yagami. Hmm? You might want to lay low for a bit. It's not safe for you here. Get out of town. Go... somewhere quiet. If the mole comes after you next... Right. I'll do just that, Genda-sensei. You know... I watched over Chintani since his first day as a lawyer. Kid had a good head on his shoulders. And a knack for the job I could never compete with. But he didn't have the guts to succeed when push came to shove. Not the most persistent lawyer I've seen. Even so, he looked up to me. Guess I took it for granted. Thought he'd always be part of the team. When I first joined, Shintani-sensei was the one who showed me the ropes. He was a reliable man. Thanks for this, Yagami. Come on, Sarikun. I'll walk you to the station. Sure. Feel free to stay here tonight, Yakami. <laughs> I appreciate it. What about you, Hoshinokun? I think I'll work a little more before I head home. <sighs> if you say so. Good night. Good night, boss. Make yourself at home, Yagami-san. I'll leave you the key. You've been here way longer anyway. You deserve it more than me. Um, Yagami-san, do you have a minute? Sure, what's up? Well, it's about Shintani-sensei. Yagami-san, I know you just told Genda-sensei you're gonna lay low, but that's not true, is it? You want to keep hunting down this killer. And if I said yes? Don't worry, I won't tell Genda-sensei. But in return... Hmm? I want to help you. Look for the mole, that is. I won't slow you down. I promise. Looking to avenge Shintani, huh? <sighs> He wasn't as strong as he let on. The tough guy act was a mask he wore to hide his insecurities. Deep down, he was just weak. That's why he was going along with Hamura, not because he wanted to. I mean, who can say no to a Yakuza? And now look how it turned out. I was sitting right next to him this whole time. Yet there was nothing I could do to help. You know, I'm still young. I don't even know what kind of lawyer I want to be. Criminal? Civil? Not the slightest idea. But I know one thing. I don't want to be the kind of lawyer who sits on his hands after his friend gets murdered. Which means... Are you sure about this, Hoshino? Genda-sensei told me to lay low. If you're seen helping me... Don't worry about that. I'll defend myself in court if I need to. Now, Yagami-san. Do you mind if I tag along? <laughs> You'll just tell Genda-sensei if I refuse, huh? Yeah, you got that right. Not much choice then. Welcome aboard. Glad to be working with you. Well, let's get down to business. First off, I want to know what Shintani was doing before he died. And I have some evidence that may tell us just that.
Shintani dialed this number earlier today. I want to know where it goes. Right. That makes sense. It's a good thing the killer forgot to take Shintani's phone, huh? This way we can see who he was calling. The killer didn't forget. Even if the phone was gone, we'd still be able to get Shintani's data from his provider. Really? I had no idea. Yep. I bet he left the phone so I'd find the body quicker. Huh? I mean, he went through the trouble of hiding it in my office of all places. Probably wanted to cause as much chaos as possible, you know? Hey! The number got a hit in the search! It's apparently for the, uh, Advanced Drug Development Center? What the hell? What, do you know it? Three years ago, there was a pretty famous murder there. A patient was killed, and their body dumped in the mountains. And the man they arrested for it was named Shinpei Okubo. Okubo, Okubo. Wait, he was your client, wasn't he? He worked as a contract laundry man for the center. Every two or three days, he'd stop by to pick up their dirty linens. According to the police report, it was thought he carried the body out in a bundle of sheets. Right. And you defended him in court and won. But then he... he got free and... You can stop there. But why would Shintani-sensei have called the ADDC? Who would he even talk to? I bet we'll find out if we give them a ring. But it's getting late. You should go home. We both need some shut-eye, yeah? Yeah, we can start fresh tomorrow. Where do we want to meet? Oh, right. <laughs> we want to keep this a secret from Genda-sensei, after all. There's an arcade called Charles up on Park Boulevard. That should work for now. Okay. I'll let Kaito-san know. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I'll see you. Excuse me. <clears throat> hmm? Excuse me. This is Yagami.
Must we? Excuse me.
Excuse me. Era. Kaito-san told me you'd be here. Don't forget about me next time, yeah? Wish you'd fucking forget about me. Is there a reason your little gang needs to keep meeting up here? It's so nice of you to let us use your store, Higashi-san. Especially when you're clearly so opposed to the idea. Don't talk down to Yakuza, kid. It's okay, Higashi-san. I think we all know you're nicer than you let on. What the hell? Damn. And you're braver than you look, Hoshino-kun. You got the skills to back it up? Just a third-degree black belt. Huh? Not that I've ever had to use it. <laughs> well, I'll call this meeting to order. Sure. I'll do the honors. Masamichi Shintani of the Genda Law Office has been murdered. Given that his eyes were gouged out, it's likely the Mole was responsible. And I'll need all of your help to track him down. The ADDC, huh? Weird time for that to come up again. <laughs> again? It's come up before? We can talk about that later. What's important now is Shintani called them before he was killed. Hmm. I think I remember them being in the news a lot last year. Something about a new drug that could win a Nobel Prize. Yeah, here it is. The ADDC's research into AD9 has now been published in one of the world's leading scientific magazines. Leading to the gathering of reporters from both Japan and abroad we have here today. It's a brand new dementia drug. They call it AD9. This was right after Director Kido from the ADDC published his paper on it. They're still undergoing clinical trials on larger animals, but apparently every single mouse they've given it to has made a full recovery. Now with the, the man giving the presentation here is Dr. Ryusuke Kido, a world leader in neurophysiology and the primary researcher on AD9. He's the one who showed me around the center when I was looking into Okubo's case. Guess he's been the director for a while now. From what I can tell, the Ministry of Health is increasing the ADDC's budget to hasten the development of AD9. They're even adding another building to the center. It's a huge project. <laughs> Damn good deal they've got. I'm still not getting it, though. Why Shintani go and call them? That's what we're about to find out. And there's only one way to do that. Come on! Can't just take a man's phone. First off, we'll need to figure out who Shintani was calling. Yeah, but how are we going to do that over the phone? I suppose that all depends on your acting skills, Detective Yagami. <laughs> hey, 
ADDC, front desk speaking. Hi there, ma'am. This is... Well, who I am doesn't matter. Huh? But anyway, uh, I think a lawyer named Shintani called your office yesterday. I was wondering if you could connect me with whoever you spoke to. I'm sorry, but I can't do that. It's in violation of our personal information policy. Well, the truth is, Shintani-san passed away yesterday. This is the last number he dialed, so I'm calling to ask about him. Are you... With the police? You're not, are you? Uh, well, not exactly. I. You know what? I, I'll try back later. <laughs> no way this happens over the phone. It'll be faster to just head over there myself. You think that's gonna work? Not sure, but I know the director, remember? Worst case scenario, I come back empty handed. I'll come with you, Yagami san. Okay. Me and Agashi will go check out what's going on with the Matsugane family. Shouldn't be tough with Hamura out of the picture. Hey, I don't remember saying I was gonna help you. By the way, Yagami-san, whatever happened to that guy from three years ago? Shinpei Okubo. He's in the detention center. Been there since they gave him his death sentence. Have you ever gone to see him, Yagami-san? No. Why would I? Why do you ask, anyway? <laughs> I don't know. I was wondering what he was like. The case got tons of news coverage, you know. I was also wondering what you thought about the case. I mean, did you really think that he was innocent? Probably. But then he walked and killed his girlfriend. You defended him for that too, yeah? Yeah. Did you believe him then, too? He kept saying the same thing. How he could never have killed anyone. But... I didn't believe him, no. Fighting for him in court made me sick to my stomach. Do you think he deserves the death penalty? That's enough of the question, Sugiura. <laughs> well, my bad. Was that too far? <sighs> nah. If you say so. Um, Yagami-san? You're heading to the ADDC now, yes? I'm gonna grab a taxi for us. I'll wait for you over on Park Boulevard. Over here, Yagami-san. I have a taxi for us. I've heard a bit about this place before, but the ADDC, isn't it just one part of a larger organization? If I recall correctly, they call it the Medical Institute. Is that accurate? <laughs> yeah. They own every last inch of this campus. <sighs> it's incredible. Even with all these buildings, they're still getting budget to expand from that new drug. So? Is it the same as you remember? Yeah. Uh, 
Huh? Don't go too far ahead. Yagami-san! What are you all shaken up for? Calm down. Just stick with me and you'll be fine. Got that, Yagami? Yagami-san! Try not to just ditch me, okay? Is something wrong? It's just... After three years, it still looks the same. Huh? Almost like time itself has stopped. Yagami-san. Come on. Front desk's over there. Do you have an appointment, sir? I don't, sorry. My name is Hoshino, from the Genda Law Office. This is my partner, Yagami. We're here to talk about a murder that took place in Kamurocho yesterday. A, a murder? A co-worker of ours named Shintani. He was the victim. We have a record that he called this center before he was killed. Huh? We're hoping you can help us track down exactly who he spoke to. I'm very sorry, sir, but I can't provide such private information. Well, could I at least talk to Director Kido instead? He's an old friend of mine. Just let him know Yagami stopped by, to say hello. Uh, I don't think that'll be necessary. Look over there. Gentlemen, I really don't know what else you want from me. I have nothing more to say. I've told the police all that I know. Yeah, I know. Sorry about all this, Director. Problem is, my partner here won't give it a rest till he sees the scene of the crime. But I'm sure we'll be leaving soon. Well, that's not what we agreed upon. You know this isn't about how long it takes. And what about Okubo? I take it he's still not fessed up? Uh, no. Not quite as of yet, sir. But we all saw where the body was. Exactly where he said it would be. Quite true. Not much point in fighting this now. The Minister has made it clear that he wants it resolved soon as well. Just look at how much trouble one contractor has caused. Sorry, which minister? I didn't know about this, sir. The health minister. It's all his call how much funding we get. The director, if I may, if you would just direct me to the scene of the crime, I could head over there myself. I'll be out of your hair in no time, I assure you. I'd rather you didn't wander on your own. So instead, she can show you. Terasawa-kun, these gentlemen here are Shintani-sensei and, uh, Yagami. It's a pleasure. I hope I can help you find what you need. Well, with that, I'll be taking my leave. Thank you again, Director. Apologies for all the trouble. This way. I can show you how to get to Wakusan's room. Who's Wakusan? The guy who died in his room? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And you are... Terasawa-san, huh? 
Wow, you're young. And a looker to boot. Um, can we keep this professional? Huh? Nice try, Shintani-sensei. Not the friendliest girl in town, huh? We're not exactly welcome guests here. After I busted my ass to pass the bar, I always figured I'd have my pick of the ladies. Right this way, please. Straight ahead is the ADDC's general ward. Wakusan's room is on the fourth floor. This was the room assigned to Wakusan. What's down there? That's the research wing, where they develop all our new drugs. Oh. You can't get in without a gold key card, though. Not even I have one. <laughs> gold, huh? I suppose because it's the heart of the Center's operations. Huh. <laughs> Sounds like it's a whole nother world back there. Security like that must be a bitch. Come on, Yagami. Before he died, Wakusan spent most of his time in here. And when was he admitted? Two years ago. With Alzheimer's. Some kind of dementia, right? Alzheimer's is a neurodegenerative disease that leads to dementia, yes. In fact, it's the cause of almost 70% of all dementia cases. So, they're one and the same, kinda? Anyway, do what you gotta do, Yagami. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Suspicious. Hey, has anyone else slept here since Wakusan's death? Nobody, no. And Wakusan was missing from his room the morning of the incident, yes? That's right. So, he was murdered here, then carried out. I can't say for sure, but it's likely. Suspicious. Window sealed shut. There's no way Wakusan could have escaped through here. Suspicious. What the? Suspicious. All the rooms have windows like this, right? It seems like people would notice if something was going on in here. Well, we only have so many employees in this ward. The halls stay fairly busy, but it's mostly dementia patients moving between appointments. I see. I wonder how the room looks from the hallway. You got all you need from here, yeah? I think so. Hmm, you can definitely see what's going on from out here. Shintani-sensei, can you lay on the bed for me? Uh, I guess so. Care to join me, Terasawa-san? What do you got to lose? It was a joke! So from this vantage point, you can't make out the person's face. So... Was this the colossal waste of time I knew it'd be? Nope. I got something I'd only get from being here. Does it matter? It's been days. Case is practically closed. Shinpei Okubo is guilty as hell. Well, according to him, he's not. Well, of course that's what he says. Consider the facts, though, man. You want to review the case? Shinpei 
Sure. Let's go over what we know so far. Whatever you want. All right. Here we go. Our victim was the patient staying in this room. Koichi Waku. Male. Age 66. At 8.30 a.m. on the morning of the crime, the nurses noticed he was missing from his bed. Given Waku's degenerative state, they assumed he was wandering around the hospital somewhere. But after being unable to track him down, hospital staff filed a missing persons report. Right. You know what a dementia patient's like, though. Hard to imagine they'd make it outside on their own. The only conclusion, then, was that somebody must have taken him out of the hospital. After inspecting all the cars that came in and out of the center, they were left with one possible suspect. A laundry man by the name of Shinpei Okubo. It didn't take much prodding for Okubo to confess burying Waku's body out in the mountains. And lo and behold, three months after Waku disappeared, the cops found his body rotting away right where Okubo said it'd be. Cause of death was most likely suffocation, but they still don't know for sure. Any objections to this so far, Yagami-sensei? Actually, yeah. You're forgetting something. And what's that? Okubo-kun insists he didn't kill anyone. All he admits to is dumping the body. Oh, sure. But come on, Yagami. Guy's got a history of assault, and it's on record. Roughed up his girlfriend, accidentally broke her finger. Right, but that was over six years ago. He was just a kid. Got drunk, made a huge mistake. And what? It's okay for a kid to hit a woman? Of course not. But that's not what he's on trial for. True. I don't condone what he did. But legally, committing one crime doesn't mean you're guilty of another. Fine. But what about Okubo's shaky alibi? He said he left the center at 10 a.m. after grabbing the sheets from the general ward. Claimed Wakusan's corpse somehow got loaded into his truck. <laughs> Who's gonna believe garbage like that? If anyone should, it's his lawyers. <laughs> We're meeting with Okubo after this, right? He should just be honest with him. Tell him the case is unwinnable. Are you two done here? Yep. Can you show us the garage next? The one where Okubo-kun parked his truck. A service entrance, I think it was. That's the only other place we'll need to see today. We'll need to take an elevator down there. Follow me. Follow me. Yagami, you're never gonna last if you keep taking cases like this. Criminal suits are a constant test of your conviction. Your sense of justice. They don't even pay that well. Careful who you say that around. Look, just chill out, okay? Take it from me. I've been around the block way longer than you have. Like a regular old garage to me. Hmm. You'd make it out with no problem if you put a body into your truck down here. It's quiet. 
It is. Hey, Yagami. Check this out. These are the carts they used to collect sheets and linens. Day of the crime, Okubo was all over the hospital with one of these things. It would have been simple for him to sneak a body in there and cart it right out. Maybe so. Where was Okubo parked on the day of the incident? Oh, um... The truck was parked here, with the back facing the elevator. Here's a recreation of it. I see. DNA evidence from the victim was found in the flatbed of the truck. That's proof enough that the body was there. And when they confronted Okubo, he flat out admitted it. When was Wakusan last seen? Just before 8 a.m. on the day of the crime. Yeah, 7.50 to be precise. An ADDC scientist will be testifying to that. He claims he saw him nice and cozy in his bed. I see. Can we talk to this witness? I tried to get an appointment, but they shut me down. Said they don't want us interfering with their research anymore. They're not willing to make an exception this once? This isn't an issue you want to push, Yagami. Worst case scenario, you get charged with witness intimidation. All right, all right. Anyway, the victim was last seen at 7.50. That's right. Breakfast is at 8 o'clock, so the patients who can walk on their own gather in the break room. But on the day of his disappearance, 8.30 came and went with no sign of Wakusan. You thought you'd find him quickly. Didn't exactly turn out that way. Right. Got that, Yagami? Here, let's go over some more details. What we know is, Waku was taken out of his room sometime between 7.50 when he was last seen, and 8.30 when everyone noticed he was gone. During that 40-minute span, somebody suffocated Waku and stuffed him into the laundry bin. Nobody suspected there was a body in the cart. And the only clear culprit was Okubo, the man in charge of the laundry. To further back this up, DNA evidence from Waku was found in Okubo's truck. Then when the police questioned Okubo, he confessed to burying the body in the mountains of Okutama. Three months after the crime, Waku's corpse was finally found. With me? This thing's airtight, Yagami. I know you're getting into this, but come on. Just give it up already. You don't have a chance. Even though Okubo says he's innocent, I promised him we'd do everything we could. Not my problem. You shouldn't make promises you can't keep. <sighs> Fine, then I'll do it alone. You don't have to be involved. Even if I'm not, the loss will hurt Genda-sensei's reputation. I'm sorry, but our client says he's innocent. I can't back down from this. Ah, fine. I'll be in the lobby. Um, if you like. I could take you to see Wakusan's room again. You don't mind? Oh, that would be great. Um, are you finished? Yeah, I've seen what I need. Anything else you can share? How long will Okubo-san's sentence be? Huh? I if he's found guilty, that is. Probably ten years, maybe more. It's hard to say for sure. And what if he confesses? Would they shorten his sentence? 
Well, at the very least, he did make a better impression than insisting he didn't do it. But you're still going to push an innocent plea? Even though Okubo-san is the one who'll suffer for it? If he's really not guilty, he won't have to. I'll win. But to be perfectly honest, this is my first criminal case. What? Civil cases have been a mixed bag for me, too. I've actually lost more than I've won. Is that so? Apparently, a smart lawyer would never even consider an innocent plea in this case. Guess it's a good thing that I'm not so smart then, because I honestly believe I can win. Terasawa-san, were you close to Okubo-kun? I spoke to him pretty often, yes. I would see him around the ward all the time. And what did you think of him? Did he seem like the kind of guy who'd do something like this? I'm sorry. The director told us not to say too much. Wait! If you know anything that can help, just get in touch, okay? I'll do whatever it takes to set Okubo-kun free. But I can't do it alone. Just... give it some thought, Terasawa-san. Just now, we went to the ADDC. Thought I should have a look at things with my own eyes. And... how did it go? There's no chance you walk. You're practically a lost cause. Hey... Yagami-sensei, is that what you think? It's like this, Okubo. You tell me you're innocent, and I'll fight to the end. I really have nothing to lose by helping you out. It's just like I told you. Whoever did it is framing me. On the day of the crime, you were in the general war at the ADDC, yes? Starting at 8 a.m., you went around to each room and gathered the linens. Yes. Nobody would dispute that. And after that, you covered Wakusan's nose and mouth, suffocated him, and then carted him out in the laundry bin. That's not true. Wakusan wasn't there when I went into his room. I didn't see him at all that day. You have to believe me. And I do. So when you went down to leave the center at 10 a.m. after gathering the linens, you realized there was a body hidden in the truck. Yes. That's what happened. Then, after debating whether or not to report the body, you chose to hide it in the mountains. I had a criminal assault on my record. I knew the police would have suspected me if I went to them. Aren't you forgetting the bad blood you had with Wakusan? Huh? Bad blood? What are you talking about? Three days before the murder, Wakusan claimed Okubo-kun here punched him and stole his wallet. They told me all about it at the center. When did you even ask? While you were busy chatting up Terasawa-chan. <laughs> even if I bitch about it, I'm still damn good at my job. Well, Okubo-kun, did you take his wallet, or...? Not quite. They call it delusion of theft. It's a symptom of dementia. If you think something's been stolen from you, then blame the first person you see. Not the easiest thing to deal with, right? Someone accuses you of theft for no reason? Must have been a shock. So when Wakusan tried to hit you, you just about hit him back. But I didn't hit him. No. You murdered him. I wouldn't kill a man over something like that. Ah. I wish I could believe you, pal. Come on, Okubo-kun. You've got a record of violence. It wasn't me. I swear. Somebody set me up. Please, you have to believe me. Whoever did this is laughing at all of us right now. <sighs> Calm down. Yagami-sensei, do you believe me? I do. Okay. Then 
And next time, come alone. Fine. I can take a hint. You and Yagami Sensei can cuddle up all you want. Hey. You know that nurse, Terasawa san? Cute girl. It sounded like she was worried about you. Bet you'd have a chance with her once you get out of here. I don't know. If you'll excuse me. So Shintani just left you hanging, huh? He's gotta learn some damn patience. Maybe so. But this is my case now. I can handle it myself. Huh. Okay. Yagami-san. Hmm? Have you seen Mafia lately? Well, where's this coming from? She's just not that great with men. I suggest you be more assertive. Right. Okay. Uh, you mean that friend of yours, Sarikun? She's got Shintani all riled up. Said he'd have been nicer to you if he knew you had friends who looked like her. <laughs> Jackass. Hey, nothing's official yet, guys. Regardless, keep it on the down low, okay? Mafia Kun's a prosecutor, right? Isn't it kind of taboo for her to date a defense attorney? Can we not do this? Either way, guess the Okobo case comes first. We're pleading innocent, yeah? That's the plan. What is your plan here? This isn't gonna be an easy win. Well, I'm working on that. There's one piece of evidence that still bothers me. Yeah? And what's that? It's the hospital room the victim was staying in. This is the last place Wakusan was seen before he disappeared. The window doesn't open, so the only way out is through the door. No one saw him leave though, even though there are always people in the halls. And the only one who entered the room was Okubo with his laundry cart. Hey, I don't want to be a downer, but doesn't that point to Okubo being the killer? Well, that's not my point though. The evidence I showed you is that evidence won't win you the case. What the hell's your problem? Was that Shintani? I think so. Get back here! <laughs> that bastard. Oh, was eavesdropping on you. What the hell? Uh, I tried to stop him, but... Uh, he pulled a stun gun on me. Uh, uh, Hey! Wait up! You won't get away!
Hold up. Sawasan? Let me go! We got a groper out here? Scum of the earth! <laughs> Not on my watch, you son of a bitch! Can all lawyers fight like that? Did you really need to run away like that? I assume you came to see me. There was something I wanted to talk to you about, yes. But I wasn't sure if I should. Then that pig-headed friend of yours started shouting, so I just lost it. Okay, but did you have to tase him? Not that he didn't have it coming. Anyway, I'm listening if you want to talk. No matter what it is, I'll keep your secret. Anything you tell me will fall under client's attorney privilege. Well, you know the witness who last saw Wakusan? Said he saw him sleeping in his bed. Uh-huh. Well, that witness is a man by the name of Shonasan. He's one of the scientists at the ADDC. Not only that, but he's the director's right-hand man, too. And this is him? Yes. He's a very dedicated doctor, so the nurses have a lot of faith in him. But something felt off when I heard what he had to say about the incident. And what's that? I guess I'm just skeptical as to whether or not he actually saw Wakusan. I don't think he's intentionally deceiving us, but he may be mistaken somehow. And if I had to guess, I'd say the other nurses feel the same. Still, why hasn't anyone mentioned this until now? How could we? Nurses talking about a doctor behind his back? That's not something a nurse could do without consequences. And if it came to a courtroom testimony... None of you would testify? Maybe the other nurses wouldn't, but I would. I never really fit in over there anyway. Besides... Yeah? I think Okubo-san is innocent. Oh, really? Sounds like I've finally got an ally on my team. I'm currently employed as a researcher at the Advanced Drug Development Center. Part of our research consists of clinical tests we perform on patients in the general ward of the center. On the day of the crime, I was making my usual rounds through the ward. And what time was that? Around 7.50. You're sure? Yes, the patients eat breakfast at precisely 8 o'clock. I always head to the break room myself, uh, right around then, too. This break room, to be precise? That's correct. Our more mobile patients walk there for breakfast, instead of eating in their own rooms. Then, while the nurses help the patients eat, I ask about how they feel and how the medicine is treating them. And on the day of Wakusan's disappearance, you pass by his room before going to the break room? Yes. And in that room, you saw Wakusan lying on the bed? Yes. Can you describe the situation to us as you remember it? The door has a window, 
so you can see into the room from the hallway. And this is the room you're referring to, yes? That's correct. From where I was standing in the hallway, I could see Waku-san lying in bed. He was asleep, with a blanket covering most of his body. And what time was that? Around 7.50. No further questions. Yagami-sensei, why did you call her to the stand? She actually asked to testify. Is that a problem? Not really, no. Terasawa-san, you were present for Shono-san's testimony just now, yes? Yes. And what is your opinion on that testimony? For a scientist, I felt his wording was rather imprecise. And as a medical professional, I felt his actions were negligent. Could I ask you to be a little more specific? Our witness, Shono-san, claims he saw Waku-san sleeping in his bed during his morning rounds. However, there's no way he could have known that just by looking in from the hallway. I have evidence supporting Terasawa-san's testimony. Please look at this. It's a photograph of the victim's room as viewed from the hallway. In other words, this is what Shono-san would have seen when he checked in on Waku-san. Shono-san was lying when he said he saw Waku-san in the bed. Excuse me? What he saw from the door was likely nothing more than a bulge of sheets. He couldn't have been able to identify it specifically as Waku-san. So to claim as much in his testimony seems like quite an exaggeration, don't you think? But common sense would dictate otherwise, would it not? Who would be in the bed other than Waku-san? The staff nurses are trained to always enter a room when checking in on a patient. In Waku-san's case, it's impossible to tell anything just by looking in from the hallway. There was actually one time a while back where we thought he was under the covers, only to find Waku-san eating in the break room a second later. And upon re-examining the room, we realized that we had mistaken a bunched up pillow for Waku-san. The witness makes an important distinction. The prosecution asserts that Shono-san's testimony is clear, that the victim was taken out of his room at some point between 7.50 and 8.30 in the morning. They claim that because of this time frame, the defendant must have smuggled Waku-san's body out in his laundry bin. But if Shono-san's testimony is invalid, as the defense asserts, we have to consider the possibility that Waku-san was taken in the middle of the night when nobody else was around. After which, the killer could have waited until the morning to plant the body in the defendant's truck. In other words, the defense establishes that there is reasonable doubt that Okubo-san is the killer, rendering the prosecution's central argument unsound. Your Honor, taking this new testimony into account, I'd like to call Shono-san back to the stand for cross-examination. Shono-san. Yes? I'll get right to the point. On the day of the crime, what did you see when you looked into Waku-san's room? I saw Waku-san asleep in his bed. I think. And did you get a clear look at his face? I don't remember. So it's possible that it could have been someone other than Waku-san in that bed. Or maybe even a pillow that you mistook to be Waku-san's body. Isn't that right? Objection! The defense is leading the witness. Sustained. Please rephrase the question. Shono-san. Can you say, without a doubt, that Waku-san was in that bed when you checked on him? I... I don't think I can, no. 
then the defense rests. But I do have a quick remark for the prosecution. Huh? The charges against my client stem from your assertion that he's the only possible suspect, assuming the crime took place within the stated time frame. However, the defense has proven without a doubt that Shono-san's testimony is unreliable, establishing reasonable doubt for my client. I would suggest, then, that you withdraw the charges against my client. With such inconclusive evidence, you'll only be wasting the court's precious time. The prosecution does not consider the witness's testimony inconclusive. His memory of the incident may be fuzzy, yes, but that doesn't change that he saw the victim. So, your whole case is based on a fuzzy memory? This promising young man's future is at stake, and you're willing to throw that away on unreliable testimony? Dr. Shono is a bright and diligent researcher. After watching his own grandmother develop dementia, he vowed to create a drug that could cure the disease. After paying his own way through medical school, he went on to become the head researcher at the ADDC. Day after day, Dr. Shono visits his sick patients out of the kindness of his heart, leading to his valiant testimony here today. If you want to know whether I trust this man, then my answer is a resounding yes. In other words, because he's such a great researcher, his testimony is infallible. His own admission that he's not sure is somehow overlooked? Is that the sum of it? <sighs> because from here, it sounds like you're putting your faith in Shono-san's title not his testimony today. The prosecution is not as easily swayed as you think. And you want to talk reputation? What of your client's history of domestic abuse? Six years ago, the defendant broke his girlfriend's finger. The poor girl is still suffering from the effects. And the cause? A minor, drunken disagreement. Now, fast forward to what occurred a few days prior to the crime. Wakusan, suspecting the defendant of stealing his wallet, lashed out and punched the defendant in the face. Given the clearly violent nature of Okubo-san here, that alone would be motivation enough to murder the poor old... Is something wrong, ma'am? Please remain seated while court is in session. Terasawa-san? Okubo-san is not a violent person. And he hasn't even had a drink in over six years. Not a single drop since the incident. My court will not stand for this commotion. He didn't blame Waku-san at all. He knew that the outburst was just caused by his dementia. That it was all the sickness's fault. So there was no reason for him to resort to murder. Terasawa-san, please. Okubo-san really is an incredible, caring person! Please leave this courtroom at once. You're right that he may be hard to approach, but he's a kind soul, and he always keeps his promises. Okubo-san's not the only person in this courtroom who would be affected by a guilty verdict, either. As a matter of fact, it would break my heart. And even through it all, he wanted me to keep this a secret! Not to tell anyone, not even his lawyer, that we were dating! Even though he knew he could have ended up in prison, making sure I was safe was the only thing in the world he cared about. That's just who he is! But when the prosecution has already decided he's a criminal, how could he possibly be given a fair trial? <sighs> Her little outburst wasn't technically admissible, but as the trial dragged on, it hung over the jury like a stone. And in the end, Shinpei Okubo was found not guilty. But only a month after his release, everything changed. The same girl who had so bravely proclaimed Okubo's innocence died by the man's own hand.
something wrong? No, it's nothing, Vice Minister. But... I haven't seen you in about three years, Kido-san. I see you're still the director. You look familiar, but I can't quite place the name. I seem to recall you looking sharper. I'm a detective based in Kamurocho now. The name's Yagami. Ah, I remember now. You're the reason Terasawa-kun's no longer with us. Remember, Shono? Okubo-san was unstoppable. If only my testimony had been better. Shono-san, right? Does it matter? What brings you here, anyway? I'm investigating a murder. And I'll need your cooperation with it. Just like old times. Yes, I see. Yes. Thank you. It does seem we received a phone call from this Shintani-san you speak of. Do you know who he was calling? Dr. Shona. The same Shono-san you were just with? Yes. However, it's unclear as to what the point of the call was meant to be. Shono was away from his desk at the time, you see, and Shintani-san didn't leave a message. You have no idea what he wanted to talk about? None. Shono says he doesn't know a Shintani-san, and sees no reason why he would be calling. Oh, really? <sighs> Shono and I co-authored the research paper on AD-9. We're quite well known, as it turns out. Sometimes, complete strangers pretend to be close friends or relatives in order to contact us. Perhaps Shintani-san fell into that category. Have you heard of the mole murders taking place in Kamurocho, Dr. Kido? Three Yakuza, each one with their eyes gouged out. It's a grisly business. Shintani was killed in the same way. I've seen the news. Can you think of anything tying the ADDC to those murders? Huh? Look, just what are you implying? Look, I believe we're done here. There's nothing I can help you with. Please stop! You can't! Who are you? Detective Kuroiwa, Kamuro Police, Organized Crime. One of your guests here has information related to the case I'm currently investigating. That would be you, Yagami. Hmm? I'd like to speak to you as a material witness to the murder of the lawyer, Masamichi Shintan. Is that so? The mole's latest victim was the lawyer, Shintani. The last call he made brings the case that ruined Yagami three years ago back to the surface. A patient was taken from a hospital and found buried in the mountains. Yagami defended the suspect, Shinpei Okubo, and got an acquittal, but one month later, he murdered his girlfriend, Emi Terasawa, with a kitchen knife and burned the remains. I'd like to speak to you as a material witness to the murder of the lawyer, Masamichi Shintani. Is that so? I'm Hoshino, an attorney at Genda Law Office. Officer, is this interview voluntary, or...? It is. It's your call, Yagami-san. I think I'll pass. Excuse me? You have your answer, sir. You can go now. You can make this easier if you come now. Next time, it won't be voluntary. Your empty threats don't mean much to a lawyer. Can you take this elsewhere? I really must be... Too bad he's not a lawyer anymore, then. 
Your friend's nothing now. Just come along quietly. I'll come back with a warrant if I have to. <laughs> I'd like to see you try. Why do you suspect me anyway? I bet you don't even have a reason. I can come up with a few good ones. Enough! Get the hell out of my office! You regret this, Yagami. Karoi was on. <sighs> you two, out. Before we go, can we speak to Shonosan for a sec? We need to know why Shintani called him. Listen, I already told you he doesn't know. Get it through your skull. Now, please leave. No problem. We'll let you get back to work. This is really getting out of hand, don't you think? I can't believe that detective thinks you're a material witness. Yeah. I don't know what he's talking about. But what I'm more interested in is how he even knew where to find me. That's a good point. How would the police know we were here? Beats me. For now, let's focus on Shona, though. It would be a waste coming here and not talking to him. Agreed. Let's see if the receptionist can help us. Can I help you? Actually, I've already been here. I was just with Director Kido, remember? Um... Oh, of course. Did you forget something, sir? Well, not exactly. I'd actually like to speak to Shono-san, the 89 researcher. Where would I be able to find him? Let me see. Uh, that should be the research wing. I believe he's in the Protein Abnormalities Lab. Probably need a gold keycard to get in there, huh? That's correct, sir. I should be able to lend you one with the director's approval, though. Just give me a moment to ask. Could you tell me your name, sir? Actually, uh, never mind. Kido-san seemed pretty busy earlier. I'll try back later. Are you sure, sir? Good call. There's no chance Kido-san would let us in. At least now we know where Shono is. Yeah. I wonder if there's a map around here somewhere. Hey. Hmm? This leads to the research wing. The receptionist said he would be in the protein abnormalities lab, right? Huh. Well, I guess that's not on this map. Uh-huh. Suspicious. Some kind of security gate, huh? The research wing must be just past there. Um, excuse me. Yes, ma'am? This is one of Shono-san's researchers. She was just about to return to the lab. Oh? My name's Hashimoto. I can show you into Dr. Shono's lab if you'd like. Are you sure? Of course. <laughs> Great. We'll take you up on that. Wonderful. Hashimoto-san just happened to be passing through. Thank you. Right this way. I really appreciate this, Hashimoto-san. I'm Yagami. And I'm Hoshino, from the Genda Law Office. Thank you for doing this. Oh, don't mention it. I'm glad to help a guest of Director Kido's. This place is so massive, you practically need a tour guide to get around. I hope you're okay with walking. Oh, that's totally... So, Hashimoto-san, what kind of work do you yourself do here? I'm part of the team developing 89. Dr. Shono is the head of that team, but I'm pretty new around here. Speaking of, what exactly does AD9 stand for? Well, the AD comes from the name of the center. The Advanced Drug Development Center, ADDC. And it's the ninth drug our department's developed. Oh, that was surprisingly easy. Is 
It'll be the first dementia-curing drug on the market, right? Seems like it's really getting fast-tracked because of that. But there's a lot riding on this one, right? It could finally cure Alzheimer's disease. That's right. Do you know how many dementia patients there are in Japan alone? A couple hundred thousand, at least. Maybe even in the millions? Right. As of 2012, there were 4.62 million. That many? By 2025, that number will increase to at least 7 million. Potentially up to 13 million, including at-risk patients. That's one in every nine people. Yikes. However, as a nation, we're already at capacity in caring for these patients. In many cases, people over 60 are stuck looking after their dementia-struck parents in their own homes. Worldwide, it's estimated there will be 135 million patients by the year 2050. It's staggering. In other words, AD9 could save the world. This could be a real miracle. I gotta say, uh, this is making me feel kind of bad about how we treated Kido-san back there. Director Kido will go down in history if we achieve this. A lot's changed in three years. The bastard's really made a name for himself. Be nice. Dr. Shono is right over there. Well, if you'll excuse me. Shono-san. Yagami-san? But uh, how did you get in here? Hey, calm down. I just want to talk. I, I I can't do that. Kido-san doesn't know you're here, does he? Is there a problem? Ah, oh, Ichinose-san. Uh, well, uh... I've never heard you raise your voice, Shono-san. Aren't you the guy from the lobby? My name is Ichinose. I'm here from the Ministry of Health, offering political support to AD9's development. Kiro-san called you Vice Minister. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Pretty lofty for a Vice Minister. You can boss scientists around, but I'm not biting. So I see. Shono-san, please. I just need a few minutes to talk. We'll leave right after we're done, promise. I already told you I, I can't. Not without Kiro-san here. I need you to tell me. Why did Shintani call you? Shintani? I've never heard that name in my life! This is important, Shono. You have to have some idea. Please! I, I don't! Now get out of here. I'm calling Director Kido. Do what you want. Just let me ask you one thing first. <sighs> AD9 is a pretty revolutionary drug, huh? I heard the Ministry of Health is even funding a new wing here. Sounds like there's a lot of money getting thrown around. And? You're sitting here knee-deep in government cash. Shintani tries to contact you, then he's found dead hours later. Pretty suspicious if you ask me. I already told you, I don't know who this Shintani even is. If you want to talk money, Kido-san's the one to ask. Now please, let me get back to work. What the? What are you doing here? Kido-san. I believe I told you to leave. What about that didn't you understand? I wanted to ask about Shintani's call. About which I already said Shono doesn't know anything. And I needed to hear that from him, not you. Enough. Call security. We were just leaving. Come on, Hoshino-kun. I'll be filing a complaint with the Bar Association, under the Minister's name. The Minister? Of Health? <laughs> That's right. 
Minister Kazami expects great things from AD9, and he won't tolerate distractions from your ilk. I feel like we came up empty-handed. Why would Shintani-sensei have called Shono-san? Yagami-san? That wasn't the first time I've heard about Minister Kazumi. Huh? When was it, though? Who was talking to me about the Ministry of Health? Maybe it was Mafuyu? I don't know. Have you even seen her lately, though, Yagami-san? I thought, you know... Yeah, it's been a while. So that means... It must have been Ayabe, when we were drinking over a tender. I definitely remember him mentioning Minister Kazumi. We were talking about how the Kyore clan ended up in Kamurocho. Apparently, they're being used as muscle for a construction company called the Kajihira Group. A while back, Chairman Kajihira himself was going around, laying the political groundwork for a Tokyo revamp project. And one of the people he met with was now he's a Kazumi from the Ministry of Health. Huh. You'd think he'd go to the Ministry of Land, though. His project has nothing to do with health. What would he gain from meeting Kazumi? That's true. Do you think it has to do with our case somehow? I don't know. Depends on what the two of them are talking about. In that case, maybe our Kajihira expert can help us out with that. Who? Sugiura-san. He used to work for them, remember? Oh, yeah. So, you want to know how Kajihira and Kazumi are connected? Yeah. Any way you can find that out? Not really sure, but I'll give it a shot. Thanks. You're still at the ADDC, yeah? Just give me some time. I'll call you if I find anything. Oh, Yagami-san. Um, I'm gonna head back to the office. I just got an email from Saori-san. Apparently, a journalist named Hattori barged into the office. Says he wants to interview you. Me? It sounds like he's looking into Shintani-sensei's murder, too. Anyway, I'll go ahead and drive him off. <laughs> You'll be Genda-sensei's ace attorney before you know it. Nah, I don't know if I'm ready for that. Honestly. Why? Too much responsibility for a guy my age, you know? <laughs> I, I think I make a much better sidekick for now. Okay. But when that gets old? I don't know that it will. Being a professional sidekick for the rest of my life sounds okay to me. <laughs> I'll see you later. Excuse me.
Yep. <laughs> Chuck. Huh? <laughs> Kaito! Kaito! Aibo!
Kaito! Duck. Nope. Yo.
point. Hey. Chuck. Kaito. Yo. Yeah. Huh? Duck. Hmm? Kaito! Yeah.
Huh? choice. Yagami-san, it's Sugiura. Want to meet up and talk Kachihira? Heard of a place called Koi Bride? Unfortunately, yeah. How do you all know this place? <laughs> Just gotta have connections? Anyway, I'll see you there. <laughs> you got here faster than I thought you would, Yagami-san. Well, how'd it go? Find anything between Kajihira and Kazumi? <laughs> Just a couple of rumors, really. Then <laughs> what's with that grin? Fine. You got me. You know that meeting they had? Turns out, it was about the ADDC. What? For years now, the Kajihira group has been secretly planning an absolutely massive redevelopment project. And where were they planning it? This plot of land, right here. That's the ADDC. Yep, the area around it too. To be precise, Kajihira wanted all the land belonging to the Medical Institute, which, as you know, is managed by none other than the Ministry of Health. That explains why Kajihira needed to talk to Minister Kazumi. If they want to go forward with the redevelopment, they'll have to shut the Institute down, including the ADDC. But is getting just one bigwig on board with the project enough? It is in this case. Apparently, Kazumi was already planning to shut the center down. Huh? See, the Institute was created with the goal of addressing Japan's aging population problem. Too many seniors, not enough babies, all that. But for the past 10 years, the money's been going into a black hole. People even call it a tax scam. I mean, they're not wrong. Management's just a bunch of crusty government types. I see. So if the Minister of Health says the time's up... Bye-bye, ADDC. 
Hello, giant plot of land. Wouldn't that reflect poorly on Kazumi, though? Maybe, but I doubt he'd mind so long as he got a nice kickback from it. And that's exactly what Kajihira put on the table. I'm sure it was enough to cover the damage. A big old bribe, basically. On top of that, Kajihira bought up all the land around the center years back to avoid rising prices. <laughs> They're not even trying to hide it. Yep, but as luck would have it, it just wasn't meant to be. One day, Kajihira's redevelopment project suddenly got flushed down the drain. Something happened preventing the ADDC from closing. It's all thanks to this guy. Kido and his 89 research. Yeah, you don't just shut down a dementia drug that could change the world. So Kazumi started singing 89's praises to anyone who'd listen. And you know how it ends. The ADDC stayed in business, the money kept flowing, the research kept going. Kazumi brushed the whole deal under the rug. And pulled it right out from under Kajihira. Yep. Guy must have lost billions in the process. Wonder what that feels like. I guess he's not too happy with his 89 business. Right. How'd you get all this anyway? I literally asked you today. <laughs> you wanna look behind the curtain, huh? What? Uh, it's not that impressive. It was all published online last year. It was a pretty gripping article, but they couldn't substantiate their claims. Everyone wrote it off as tabloid nonsense. I think they might have been right. Well, why? The piece is by Kohatori. And he's an asshole. You know him? Yeah, we go back. And apparently he stormed Genda's office today looking for an interview. Huh? Doesn't that mean you can ask him yourself? You better get a move on. Uh, I guess I'll have to. Oh, hey, Yagami-san. Is Hattori still here? No, he actually left a while ago. Oh yeah? <laughs> you really did scare him off then, huh? More like he couldn't handle Saori-san staring into his soul. <laughs> Who can? By the way, um... Hmm? Mafuyu. I came to offer condolences for Shintani-sensei. That's not the only reason. Tell Yagami-san straight. Right. Something you needed to say? Yes. Well, Izumira wants to take you in, Yagami-kun. For Shintani Sensei's murder. Does he? A detective by the name of Kuroiwa said I was a material witness, too. What is going on, Yagami kun? <sighs> hey, I could ask you the same thing. Just to be sure, you didn't do it, did you? Me? Kill Shintani? Yes. Of course I didn't. How could you even ask? I'm a prosecutor, remember? Doubting people is my job. So, why does Izumita suspect me? Does he even have anything to go on? I I'm not sure. They're leaving me out of the loop on purpose, I think. But even Morita-san suspects you. They really don't like me, huh? I don't think they can charge you with a murder on the grounds of not liking you, Yagami-kun. Well, either way, I'm glad you didn't kill anyone. But if anything comes up, feel free to get in touch. If it's within my power, I'll do what I can to help. Thanks, Mafuyu. See you later. Say goodbye to Genda Sensei for me. Did Sugiura-san end up finding anything? What's the latest? 
He did. Apparently, Kajihiro was trying to get Kazumi to close down the ADDC. Wait. What? He wanted to use the center's land for his redevelopment project. But then the AD9 research came out and threw a wrench into things. Kajihiro lost a lot of money. Wait a second. That means he's connected directly to the ADDC. According to Hattori's article, at least. Hattori-san wrote about it? That's why I stopped by. I wanted to ask him about it in person. So, he hangs around when you don't want him, and then when you need him, he's nowhere in sight. <sighs> that guy's the worst, seriously. Hello? Yagami-san, it's Sugiura. Uh, did a woman just leave that office you hang around in? Hmm? Oh, you must mean Mafuyu. Oh, I didn't know her name. She's pretty, though. Wait, does that mean you've been following me? I'll tell you later. I'd worry more about all the Yakuza tailing Mafuyu-san. Huh? Yeah, it's like four Yakuza. Maybe more. What should I do? We should do something, right? I'll be right there. Where are you? Head straight to Theater Square once you're down. And be quick about it, yeah? I can't take them all by myself, Yagami-san. Coming, Yagami-san? Where are you? I just left Ganda's office. How's Mafuyu? Fine for now. But maybe not much longer. Those Yakuza are getting closer by the minute. You've gotta hurry, Yagami-san. She's just about to cross Theater Square. Are you there, Yagami-san? Mafuyu just went left on Theater Avenue. Got it, thanks. She's got even more Yakuza on her tail now. It's way more than four by my count. Are they on her about some Yakuza-related case? What family are they from? I haven't figured that out. Better just to get over to her quick. Yo, road's closed, pal. You're Yagami, yeah? I don't have time for this. Afraid that's not your call. We've got an appointment with the lady prosecutor, you see. What? You heard me, asshole. Now step the fuck back, or else! <sighs> Damn it! Who are you? And why are you following Mafuyu? <laughs> don't think we're giving up that easy. Yo, need a hand talk? Kaito-san. I'm kinda bummed you started the party without me, man. I'm raring to go. <sighs> what the hell? Not a second too late. Mind taking care of these guys? I gotta get after Mafuyu. Mafuyu-chan? She's not in trouble, is she? Handle it, please. See ya. I get it. You guys are tailing Mafuyu-chan. I can't exactly let that kind of shit slide, assholes. Ugh! Son of a bitch! Can you hear me, Yagami-san? Are you still coming? I'm coming. How's my for you? Safe. Over on Nakamichi Street now. Her and, uh... Four more Yakuza. I don't know if I can take them on my own. Got it. I'm turning onto Nakamichi Street now. Hurry, okay? Watch your back, Yakuza-san. Looks like the Yakuza are onto you. Huh? All four of them are heading your way. Got it. Keep an eye on Mafuyu for me.
on a minute. <sighs> Yakumi, you're going down! Okay. Yeah, I think so. Who were they? Not a clue. I'm only here because a friend tipped me off. Kaito's on help too. Don't forget to thank him later. I don't understand though. Why would the Yakuza come after me? Sorry, give me a second. You okay, Yagami-san? How's your friend? She's okay, thanks to you, Sakura. <sighs> Glad to hear it. By the way, I'm tailing that van that tried to nab her. Great. We'll need to figure out where it was going. Right. Hello, Izumita-san. This is Fuji. Oh yeah, Yagami-san. Those Yakuza? Or Kyorei? I recognized a few of them from KJR. Why would the Kyorei go after Mafuyu? We might be better off asking them that in person. Think you can head over now? No. I need to make sure Mafia gets home safe first. I'll call you later. I'll be fine. Don't worry. Izumita-san says he'll send some officers over for me. The Kyore clan is a Kansai-based group, yes? They're the ones who were harassing me? Looks like it. As for why... I think it was probably to get to me. Huh? I got kind of... involved with the Kyore clan. That's gotta have something to do with this. What are you doing messing with Yakuza? What is it? I saw them hit you earlier. Are you hurt? Uh, no. I'm gonna make sure this never happens again. Hmm? I'll sort this out with those Kyore guys. You can't. That's not safe. Don't worry about me, okay? I'll stay far away from Kamurojo for a while. In fact, maybe you should come with me, Yagami-kun. Lay low for a while. Your carriage awaits. You gonna be okay? I'm sorry. But I can't leave now. Not yet. Why, though? It looks like the killer we're after now is somehow connected to the murder three years ago. That would mean... the Shinpei Okubo case? Yeah. Right before Shintani was killed, he tried to contact a researcher named Shono at the ADDC. The same Shono who testified against Okubo in the trial. That's all you have? <laughs> I'm still trying to piece everything together. But I have to keep going until this puzzle is solved. You know, it's been three years since I've seen you this worked up. Hmm? It's kind of refreshing, actually. Huh? <laughs> you just look so... alive. <laughs> Maybe I am. See you later. Hello? Hey, it's Yagami. I'm free now. Where are you? Turns out the van never even left Kamarocho. They all got out at some sketchy cabaret. A place called Honmaruen on Park Boulevard. Honmaruen? Gaito-san's heading over too. Gotcha. I'll be there ASAP. Yeah, it's Gaito. Hey, where are you? I'm almost to the cabaret. Right out front. 
Sugiura's here too. Okay, I'll be there in a sec. Look, that's the van we tracked. Right. Does that mean this is another Kyore hideout? Wouldn't be surprised. Who knows how many of the bastards are gonna be in there. But are you ready to find out? Yeah, let's roll. Huh? Hey, do you guys even have a plan? Don't need one. What? There could be a freaking army in there! <laughs> Doesn't matter how many there are. Yeah, I don't really care. Besides, I'm not in the mood for strategizing. <laughs> Why not? Come on, man. You think he's gonna let him slide after they hit his girl? You guys are freaking nuts. All right, it's all you, Todd. <laughs> you get to take point on this one. Clubs rented out, asshole. Can't you fucking read? Aren't you? It's Yagami! Stop where you are! So, this is where you were gonna drag Mafuyu-chan, huh? Hmm? Who gave the order? Was it Marase? Or maybe it was Shioya? What's it matter? We want to talk to the big boys. Yeah, what he said. Shut it! But fine! If you want to fight, bring it on, asshole! What the... Hey! You're out of step, dumbass! You're never gonna get any laughs with moves like that! Give me some fire, chuckleheads! Now! Un, deux, trois! Un, deux, trois! What the shit is this? Whatever it is, killing the mood. Chuck! Kaito-san, Sugira, you made it. Told ya. Trust us next time, man. Right. Let's get going. Oh, shit! What the? Drop something! <laughs> Why am I not surprised, Shioya? <laughs> I know how to make an entrance, don't I? It's damn good to see you, Yagami. Crying shame these idiots were so goddamn useless, though. Guess strength in numbers ain't all it's chalked up to be. Pansies, you all trying to get your fingers chopped off tonight, huh? You tried to kidnap Mafuyu. Hmm. <laughs> Girls? You should have just told me if you wanted to fight. Would have been glad to do it at my place. What is it you want? Well, I've got a little job I need done. You boys in? What job? I'm not in the business of being refused, so I needed to take out an insurance policy. That's why I decided to give that girlfriend of yours a little ride. <laughs> Fuck off. 
We would have done it for next to nothing. Almost no questions asked. We're that desperate? Damn right. But now this asshole went and hit Mafuyu-chan. So we're never gonna help him, no matter what he says. And even if Tak ends up on board, I'll still kick your ass! Have a little faith, huh? <laughs> a couple of comedians, huh? Fuck it. Looks like I'm just gonna have to bust your pathetic skulls myself. Easier that way. Yeah? <laughs> now go. Break their fucking faces. Buddy Hattori, isn't it? Great. And who's the old man? Well, well. Never thought I'd be running into him here. Huh? So... You're the ones from the Yagami Detective Agency. Uh, that old man is the person responsible for all 10,000 employees in the Kajihira group. Shigeru Kajihira. So he's the guy. With the Mole's murder of Shintani, the police begin to suspect Yagami and subpoena him. The cases of both past and present become a volatile mix at the ADDC. At one point, the land it sits on had been the target of a redevelopment scheme. And behind that plan, the Kansai-based construction company, the Kajihira Group, and its chairman, Shigeru Kajihira, Uh, that old man is the person responsible for all 10,000 employees in the Kajihira group. Shigeru Kajihira. So he's the guy. You're familiar with Hattori-san here, yes? He's told me a great deal about you, Yagami-san. Me? He even clued me in on the perfect way to get inside your head. You better not be talking about Mafia Charm. As I understand it, you two are practically family. The young lady is quite fond of you, you know. I take it you're the one who gave Shioya the order to kidnap her then? <laughs> I wanted to see what you were capable of. Huh? Now that I know, the Curie clan will leave you alone. I can guarantee you that. Let me guess. There's a condition? There's something I'd like you to do. A job only a detective can handle. Here we go. A year ago, I set in motion a plan to redevelop a massive plot of land owned by the Ministry of Health. Yeah, I know. Hattori-san's article told me as much. <laughs> sure. Our plan was to take over the entire medical institute. That's enough land there for three or four Kamurochos. So I struck a deal with Minister Kazami and bought up the surrounding properties for next to nothing. All that remained was closing down the ADDC and the other arms of the institute. But I don't have enough time on this planet to wait for that to just happen naturally. So I turned to a man named Hashki. Here's a shot of the man. At the time, Hoshki was the vice director of the ADDC. But tempting him to join me was easy enough, 
But soon we were working together to sabotage the center. Sabotage? Yes, he drove out the ADDC's most promising talent and sold their cutting-edge research to rival labs. He performed his part admirably. Sounds like a real douchebag, if you ask me. So, you're saying you bought off a government official? Yes, and it was easy. But then, just as the ADDC was on its last legs, something breathed life back into it. Which was? AD-9. Minister Kazumi did a complete 180. He took Kido's side and vowed to keep the center open. That drug ruined the whole damn operation. And where's Hashiki now? Dead. What? He was beaten to death some six months ago. Somebody murdered the vice director of the ADDC? They're still not sure who was responsible. The cops wrote it off as a drunken brawl, and that was the end of it. Yagami-san, I want you to investigate Hashki's death. I have reason to believe it was premeditated. And what makes you think that? You sound pretty sure. He was suspicious of AD-9. Thought it was all a hoax. A hoax? But why? Just when we started talking about closing the center, along came this revolutionary new drug to save the day. The timing was too convenient. That's what Hashki thought, at least. He was sure that there was more to AD-9 that met the eye. So he did some digging, and not long after, he was murdered. Are you saying Director Kido bumped him off? That's a pretty serious accusation. If that were the case, I'd still be able to shutter the center. The redevelopment project would begin anew, and all my investments would finally turn a profit. But as of right now, I'm a hundred billion in the red. That's a lot of money! I can't leave that large an investment on the table. No wonder you're so hung up. The ADDC is hiding something. I'm sure of it. And that lawyer, Shintani, was close to figuring out what. At least until he got his eyes gouged out. Things are not all they seem to be at the ADDC. And if that's the case, you must want to know the truth too, Yagami-san. That's why I came to you. There's nobody else I could ask to do this. Hattori-san. Mafuyu almost got kidnapped thanks to you. Anything you want to say? Chairman Kajihira pretty much kidnapped me, too. Going after your girl wasn't my idea. I was just looking out for myself. Still feels like you owe us an apology. <sighs> that guy's the fucking worst. Hey, shouldn't we roll out of here? Our friend's just about waking up. Good point. Let's go. Yeah, name's Hushki. Used to be vice director of the ADDC. Mm-hmm. Murdered in Kamurocho six months ago. Sorry to spring this on you, Hoshino. Think you could get all that for me by tomorrow? Okay, thanks. Well, looks like that's it for today. See you at Ginda's tomorrow? Sounds good. Night, boys. Yagami-san. What's up, Sugira? I was just thinking, teaming up with you was the right call. Should make some progress on my investigation, now that Kajihira himself is out in the open. I wouldn't have saved Mafuyu without you, either. Thanks again. No prob. Let me know if anything else comes up. There you are, Tuck. Kaito-san. You're here early. Early bird nabs the murderer, yeah? 
Oshinokun dug up some dirt on Hashki. I heard the Kyore clan attacked Mafu last night. You already talked to her? Yeah. She seemed... happy. Probably because you came to the rescue. Yagami-san! Is Genda-sensei still out of commission? No, he'll be here this afternoon. He didn't sound very energetic when we spoke, though. Gotcha. Anyway, back to what you asked me last night. I looked into Hashki's murder. Hold up. I want to hear this, too. Toru Hashiki. Former vice director of the ADDC. 51 years old at the time of his death six months ago. Found lying face down in a Kamarocho back alley in the middle of the night. He was unconscious, horribly beaten. He died in the hospital three weeks later. It took the hat long? Yes. Apparently he was comatose the entire time. Were there any witnesses? Not to the crime itself, no. However, Quite a few people saw Hoshki in a drunken argument beforehand. With a man in a black raincoat. And that's all we know about the culprit. A black raincoat? As far as I can tell, the police never found him, but who knows how hard they looked, right? And, well, that's all I could find. Little more than a general overview. Thanks, Hoshinokun. This is great for now. Kajihira claimed Hoshki's murder was premeditated, yes? Huh? Yeah, that's right. But there's no evidence to support it whatsoever. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. If the culprit intended to kill Hashki, wouldn't he have finished the job? Seems kind of sloppy. On the other hand, if it was just an unfortunate run-in, the circumstances would make more sense. I don't know. I think it's the other way around. Huh? If you ask me. Whoever killed Hoshki was a freaking pro. What makes you say that? Yes, do tell. Just look at the end result. Hoshki died and whoever's responsible got away with it. Now imagine if the cops found him dead in that alley. That alone would be cause for investigation. If he's just unconscious, though, it's easier to just call it a street brawl and move on. I mean, that's just another day in Kamurocho, right? True enough. I suppose the incident never made the news, because his death didn't come until so much later. Despite how well known he was in the scientific community, that is. So the killer beat Hoshki until he sustained a fatal wound, then backed off? Is such a thing even possible? It is if you're a pro. Guys that good totally exist. It's just rare to see it happen. Know what I mean? I admit it would make sense, but we can't say for sure without evidence. More or less. What kind of evidence do you mean? Something like an investigation report. I want to know the cause of death. Which I guess means another visit to our old friend Ayabe, huh? I'm way ahead of you. Called him myself last night, but... Uh... But what? His hands are tied because of all this Kuroiwa business. <laughs> Should have known. We got someone else coming in his place, though. Meeting at the same place as before. Lamont. You're gonna come, right? Sure. Let's do it. Let's roll, Tuck. Looks like we got some company. Mm-hmm. Hold up. These guys are Matsugane. Weird. I don't think they're too happy with us. Oh, yeah? Well, what gave it away? Maybe they think we're working with the Kyore clan. All we gotta do now is meet up with Ayabe's boy. Any idea what he looks like? Nope. Bet he'll talk to us first, though. Let's hope so. Well, time to start looking. Um, excuse me, sir. 
Hmm? Are you talking to me? Sit. Seat next to me. Hurry! Hmm? Do I know you, or...? This is no time for jokes. I'm not? Can you please... Now, are you okay doing this here? Or would you rather go somewhere a little quieter? Well, can we slow down for a second? No, we can't. Let's get this over with. Yeah, but doing it right here? Uh, sorry? All right, listen, you're very pretty, and you clearly know what you're about, but I'm more of a take-it-slow kind of guy, you know? I don't like to rush into these things. Yakumi-kun, can you seriously not tell it's me? Wait, uh, who? What the heck? Mafuyu? I hate to break it to you, but when a woman comes on that strong, she's not after what you think she is. Right. Uh, anyway, what are you doing here? I'm here on behalf of Ayabe. Wait, but... really? Why did Ayabe send you? He gave me a call this morning out of the blue. Said he needed me to help you in his stead. Here's the investigation report on Hashki's murder. This is what you want, right? You took it from the prosecutor's office? Isn't that, you know, problematic? Hence the disguise. Think it's okay to hand it over here? This is really intense. All right, try to stay calm. It's okay. Think of it as a thank you for saving me yesterday. One more thing. Regarding Prosecutor Izumita. Hmm? They're planning to arrest you. Under suspicion of murdering Shintani-sensei. I suggest you figure something out quick. Will do. Thanks. Bye then. Who was that? She was smoking. That was Ayabe's replacement. Huh? What do we got here? This is the investigation report. From Hashki's murder. Mafuyu stole it from the prosecutor's office. Mafuyu-chan? Are you saying that woman was her? Yeah, I just made the same mistake. You should check this stuff out, Talk. This is Hashiki's resume. Looks like he was pretty well educated. They brought him on as vice director four years ago. Meaning, he was already with the ADDC when you were busting your ass defending Okubo. Seems like he and Kido were responsible for deciding how much money to give each project. Hashiki had more influence than I realized. This here is a map of the crime scene. Hashiki was found lying here. An hour before that, he was seen drinking at a cabaret. This one. Place called the Queen Rouge. They charge an arm and a leg, but hell if they don't make bank off it. Was Hashiki drinking alone while he was there? Nah, looks like one of his colleagues was with him. Wait, it was that guy, Shono. So the two of them came all the way from the center just to grab a few drinks. The question is, why? Beats me. After they left the club, Shono grabbed a cab by himself. He claims he went back to the center and had a chat with Kido. The taxi company's records back that up. Meaning Shono has an alibi. Kido too. Yep. As for Hashki, he had an argument with a man in a black raincoat. Then they found him on the ground. Shit beat out of him. 
Three weeks later, he was dead. That's horrible. The cause of death was a cerebral contusion due to blunt trauma. The culprit hit him 14, maybe 15 times. No fingerprints, so he must have been wearing gloves. All right. I think we understand how it all went down. So, what's our next move? I want to take a little field trip. See for ourselves where they found Hushki. The Queen Rouge is right near there too. Kaito-san, mind playing the part of Hashki? Guess not. He was round here, yeah? How's this? Wow, you look so lifeless. You could get a job doing this. Oh, shut up. Okay, so, six months ago, just past 11 p.m., Hashki and Shono finish drinking. Shono gets in a cab. Hashki stays and argues with a man in a raincoat. After which he was found here, beaten half to death. But Shono got in the cab on Showa Street. Meaning Hashki and his friend went somewhere else just so they could have their little scuffle. It's definitely quieter here. Maybe this is always where the murderer planned to kill Hashki. And what makes you say that? I don't know. Just a hunch. Big Mr. Detective. Anyway, I think we got all we can. Nothing's gonna be left from six months ago. Yeah, you're right. Queen Rouge. <laughs> so even stuffy, honest scientists come to places like this. Hashki wasn't exactly honest. Or a scientist. I was on Kajihira's payroll, remember? Looks like they're not open yet. Hope someone's in there. Where'd you go? Hello? Is anyone here? We're not open yet, sir. May I ask who you are? I must also point out that this club is members only. Oh, uh, you know a Hushki from the ADDC? He told us to stop by. Hushki, son. Sorry, I've never heard of him. All recommendations must come from a current member. You know Hashiki-san's dead, right? He got beaten to death six months ago, right after leaving your club. Who are you? You're clearly not cops. We're private investigators. The Yagami Detective Agency. We want to know what happened that night. You think I'm a goddamn elephant man? I can't remember something from that long ago. We don't need you to tell us. You have girls working here, yeah? If possible, I'd like to talk to the girl who sat with Hashki-san. Get out of my face. I have no obligation to help you. How about this? I'll talk to you once you're a member. If you can get a recommendation, that is. Let me say, though, our rates aren't exactly what I would call cheap. I don't have time to go hunt on a recommendation. Then get out of my face. Hold on. You guys are recruiting? And? Think this girl fits the bill? Pretty damn fine, huh? Hmm. Well, she's not bad, I guess. Not bad? You, my friend, have impossibly high standards. Look, we only go for the hottest chicks. That's how we rake in the big bucks. But there's more to being hot than just looks. You gotta have something extra. Some charm, you know? What the hell are you doing, Kaito-san? Mafuyu's gonna be pissed. If you can think of a better way, be my guest. All Mafuyu's gotta do is get hired and find out what Shono and Hoshki were talking about. Don't be an idiot. We can't ask her to do that. Hmm. Huh. In that case... How about her? <laughs> Sorry, son. She wouldn't stand more of a chance than Mafia you did. Who else do we got? Whoa, whoa, who's that? Now there's a girl I want to see. Huh? 
Man, Photo's not doing her any favors, but polish her up and she'll shine like a diamond. Trust me, boys. See what I mean? Even Hoshino-kun's got the hots for her. Seriously? You run this club, yeah? That's right. Please bring that friend of yours over here. I want to see her for myself. Hell, I'll hire her on the spot. I think we can manage that. Come on, Tuck. Uh, I'll be waiting! Well, looks like we're sending salary sign in there. It's the quickest way. Easier said than done. How are we even gonna get her on board? I don't know. She likes dessert, right? Just give her something sweet and call it a day. You think she'd really go for that? I bring sweets to the office all the time. Sounds to me like you're gonna need the Kaito of desserts. A dessert to crush all other desserts. Oh, yeah? What'd you have in mind? Do I look like a dessert menu? This is all you, buddy. It was your idea, jackass. How's it going, Yagamishi? There's something I need help finding. <laughs> what is it this time? I need the king of desserts. Something that a sweet tooth hound would do anything to get. <laughs> That's the oldest trick in the book. You think a modern woman's gonna fall for that one? Oh yeah, guys still do it and girls still eat it up. Really? Dating sounds pretty stupid. But anyway, I'm up for a search. Hit me with some keywords. Hmm. Uh, let's try sweets and limited. Let's give it a shot. Sharing my screen with you now. Mm, hundreds of hits too many. Can't do a lot with results like that. <sighs> so much for limited. Let's try adding another word to narrow it down, Yagamishi. Especially into red beans? Nah, she's not too picky. Uh, how about we try something else then? <laughs> Incredible! You narrowed it down to one result! Really? Nice! Yagamishi. Oh, uh, this one isn't gonna work. Let's try a different word. Nope. Barely made a dent. Guess the whole country's dying for matcha. It's the only damn flavor anyone makes. What? Well, looks like that's out of the question. Let's uh, try something else. Yeah, that one brought it down a lot. <laughs> oh, smart, smart. I'd never thought to go by the shop and not the snack. I mean, she can't have had a dessert from a store that just opened. That's my Yagamishi. Should be easy to keep going from here. Yeah. Let's toss Kamurocho into the mix. That did it. Mm, what do we have here? Famous Kyoto sweet shop Takemitsu's Kamurocho branch now open on Shichifuku Street. Perfect. I'll head over there now. You know those are limited quantity, right? I don't know if you can still get them this time of day. Guess I should get moving then. <laughs> I don't know who you're going through all this trouble for, but she's a lucky girl. Good luck, Yagamishi. Gotta run, Sukumo. Thanks again. I'll be rooting for you. <laughs> Look, pal. I don't care how long you've been running in Kyoto. If you want to open a shop in this town, you gotta to follow the rules. I, I told you. I already submitted all my documents. We don't give a shit about your documents! This is about knowing your place! Uh, you don't mean, uh, 
protection money? <laughs> protection? I don't know what you're talking about. We just want to make sure you're following the rules. Excuse me. Mind if I squeeze past you fellas? Then who the hell are you, huh? Sorry, buddy, but you're gonna have to come back later. We're in the middle of something. I'm looking for one of your special mochi, sir. It, uh, 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 well, uh, uh... This ain't a joke, asshole! We're talking here! You better beat it before this gets ugly. If anyone needs to beat it, it's you. Oh, yeah? Somebody might see you shaking this poor guy down and call the cops. Heck, I'll do it myself. You think you're safe because you're a civilian, huh? We'll think again. Come on! Let's wreck this shithead! Show these Kyoto fucks how things work around here! Dude, what the shit? Leave now and I won't call the cops. Now go! Damn it. Hey, uh, thank you so much, sir. Oh, that? That was nothing. As I was saying, I'm looking for one of your special mochi. Uh, my apologies, sir. We're all sold out for today. Sold out? Ah, oh, damn it. I should have come sooner. Uh, oh, uh, wait, sir. I think I have one. Huh? We keep a few separate from our regular sales batch, you know, for TV interviews and the like. There still should be some of those left. Wow. You guys are the real deal. Think I could buy one? You can have one for free after what you did today. I, I, I insist. Really? Well, I guess if you don't mind. Well, I, I should be going. Thank you again, sir. Genda-sensei, how do you feel? Fine. I guess. Just got back in the office. Oh, sorry, son. I got you this. Yagami. Sorry, do you mind if I talk to sorry san real quick? This comes first. We've got business. Huh? Take a seat. You're not talking your way out of this one, Yagami. Hoshino-kun told me everything. Everything about... All this shit with Shintani. I told you to back off, but you went and dug even deeper. Now you've got Hoshino-kun wrapped up in this. Shintani was practically a son to me. Sure, I told you that before. Knowing he's gone, I can barely get up in the morning. My appetite's gone too, and I'm just forcing down food. What am I gonna do if I lose you and Hoshino-kun too? Something came to me when I was in bed thinking about this. If things keep going down this path, is it even wise to keep this office up and running? That's not how I want to think about it, though. Huh? One of my own gets murdered, and I respond by lying in bed whimpering about it? <laughs> not happening. If you don't have the will to fight, you're never gonna last in this town. Every single person in Kamurocho is pursuing a dream, trying to claw their way forward, bit by bit. If you don't want to get your ass chewed up and spat out, you gotta keep fighting, even if you have to fake it. If I can't fight after what happened to Shintani, I might as well just close up shop. Yagami, you're serious about this, aren't you? You really want to avenge Shintani? 
Yes. Good. In that case, Hoshinokun is at your disposal. I'll eat the cost till this murder is solved. We're gonna find Shintani's killer, no matter what. And until we do, I'll pitch in however I can. You just say the word. Thank you, Genda-sensei. One condition, though. No more victims. After everything that's already happened, I can't afford to lose anyone else. We'll be careful. As for the next step in our investigation, uh, I'm gonna need a little help from Saurisan. Saurikun? Hmm? Good, aren't they? By the way, <clears throat> there's something I need to ask you. Absolutely not. Oh, come on, Saurisan. You ate all that mochi, didn't you? Those were a trap. I don't approve such trickery. Come on. Could be fun being a hostess for a day. Though what that club owner sees in you is beyond me, that's for sure. <clears throat> It'll be fine, Saurisan. We're not asking you to be their number one girl. No. If we got you a new dress, you'd look the part. It'll be one of those extreme makeovers. No. What about that mochi? I'll get you some more if you do it. No. I don't think she's gonna budge, Yagami. Guess not. I don't even know if the manager was that serious anyway. What do you mean, not that serious? What do you see when you look at saori san huh? No, it's not that. She's just clearly not into the idea. But why would she be with the way you're approaching it? Talking about how she doesn't have to be the number one girl or giving her a makeover. If you'd look a little closer, maybe you'd understand. saori san could be the best hostess in this whole damn town if she wanted to. Isn't that right, saori san if you really believe that, I guess I could give it a try. Wait, huh? what? I'll do it. I'll be Kamarocho's number one hostess. That's what I'm talking about! Okay, uh, you can pick out a dress, Yagami-san. And she'll need a haircut and makeup, too. You don't mind shelling out for this, do you? Hmm? No, it's fine, but I have to pick the dress? Don't worry. There's a shop around here that caters exclusively to hostesses looking for outfits. You can't go wrong at a place like that. But how's she gonna be the best if she goes to the same store as all the other girls? The primary goal here is finding out what Hoshki and Shona were talking about, right? Yeah. Then stop complaining. Becoming the best will just happen naturally. Let's go, Yagami-san. We have a dress to buy. See, I knew you had it in you. Huh, that worked out just fine. Yeah but I'm kind of afraid of what'll happen if things don't go well at the club. I'm sure it'll go great. Knowing sorry, son, how could it not? Yagami-san, the go-to place for Saori-san's dress is La Marche, over on Showa Street. That's where all the hostesses in Kamurocho buy their clothes. And why do you know that exactly? A, a good number of our clients happen to be cabaret girls. <clears throat> uh, anyway, send me a picture of Saori-san once you've picked a dress out. I'll recommend a good stylist based on what you go with. It feels like this really ought to be you doing this. I'm ready, Yagami-san. Yep, let's do it. We should start with the dress. Good afternoon, sir. Welcome to La Marche. Hey, we're looking for a dress. Specifically one for a club called Queen Rouge. Any recommendations? But of course, sir. Now then, our dresses are right this way.
How's it going in there, sorry son? Almost done? Hold on a second. I don't usually dress like this. You know, it almost feels like we're on a date. Mafia won't be happy about that. Sorry, son. You've known Mafuyu since you were a kid, right? Yes. We were close in our early teens. But then we grew distant and didn't reconnect until law school. Right. I remember now. Mafuyu's family was wealthy, so she knew how to socialize. Whereas I preferred to keep to myself. My classmates often bullied me. But whenever anything got too bad, Mafia was always there to protect me. Even then, she wanted to be a prosecutor. She didn't know it at the time, but I really respected her. Is that why you decided to go into law? Yes. At first, I wanted to be a prosecutor too. But ultimately, protecting the weak fits my personality better than punishing evil. Sorry, Yagami-san. I'm not normally this talkative. Everyone has a story to tell. Speaking of which, Mafia looked up to someone too. Hmm? When she was just a young girl, she and her mother were victims of a hit and run. Yeah, she told me about that. Her mother threw herself in front of Mafia, but ended up unstable and unconscious for a while afterward. Yes. They ultimately caught the culprit, but Mafiu's mother was still comatose at the time of the trial. With how young Mafiu was at the time, it was difficult for her to explain to the police what happened. But the prosecutor was very patient, investigating every last detail of how the accident happened. Wow. He fought for justice in place of a victim who couldn't fight for herself. In fact, that may have been Mafiu's first love. Huh? The prosecutor? He's Mafia's boss now. Mori Tassan. Huh? That's pretty crazy. Never expected she'd be into older men. Do you remember when I first introduced you to Yagami-san? We were all drinking together at Tender. That was the day Mori Tassan had married another woman. So, I wanted Mafia to meet someone better. That's why I invited you. Huh, now that you mention it, she did seem kind of down that night. <laughs> Does it surprise you? Not sure I'm gonna be able to sleep tonight. <laughs> I'm glad I told you then. <laughs> I'm kidding. Seriously, though. Meeting you helped Mafia realize the difference between love and admiration. <laughs> she thought your bad boy act was cute, by the way. Bad boy? <sighs> Sorry. Anyway, I'm done changing. Hmm? Huh. Not bad. You think? Oh, hold on. Let me get a picture. Huh? Uploading photos without an individual's permission is... Sorry, Hoshino-kun asked me to do it. Said he wants to figure out the best makeup for your dress. Huh. And speak of the devil. It's me, Hoshino. You're a natural at this, Yagami-san. Saori-san is as beautiful as ever. Man, this is incredible. I should have tagged along after all. <clears throat> so, which salon should we go to? Oh, uh, right. There's a place called Cherry, also on Showa Street. They do top-notch work. It's not far, either. Got it. Thanks. Welcome, sir. What can we do for you today? Thank you. 
Whoa. You look better than I expected. I'd rather you didn't stare like that. Sorry, sorry. Anyway, let's head to the Queen Rouge. Hey, smile for me, beautiful. Oh, she's a knockout. Uh, I'll knock you out. Oh, no, I meant a dress. Just a dress. Ooh. Hey, girl. Yo, what club you work for, huh? You got a gig tonight, babe? We'll pay you double. Hey, where's she work? That's where I want to be. Huh? Oh, well, um... Yes, come right in, sir. Thank you for choosing us yet again. Hmm. Oh, it's you. Where's the girl? You're gonna bring her, yeah? How soon can she start work? Tonight, as long as there aren't any problems. Girl's got potential, but we'll see whether or not she's got what it takes to sh shine. <laughs> Holy shit. This is Sari Shirosaki-san. Ah, uh, uh, you have the job. <laughs> You're like a freaking angel. Come work for us, please. I'm Shirosaki. Nice to meet you. I think she's still kind of nervous, but she'll warm up soon enough. No, she's perfect. I'm loving that I don't care vibe. Huh? I've never really entertained anyone before, but... Not a problem. Not a problem at all. It looks like that. Who needs experience? <laughs> Let's get you situated. Right this way, beautiful. This is the first and last time, Yagami-san. I know. We just have to figure out what Hashkin Shona were talking about. The hostess they were with should know. Okay, I'll track her down somehow. I'll call you once I do. Sorry, son, was it? Follow me. Now, you said you don't have much experience. But honestly, you seem okay to me. Your responses have been spot on. Do you mean that? See, that humility is key. Young girls like you are way too casual nowadays. I'm not even that young. We're on the high end of Kamurocho clubs, you see. Naturally, our customers are of a higher status as well. Executives from massive corporations will come here to entertain guests, or celebrities will come to throw parties. Given their social standing, it's important to be as polite as possible. Understand? Yes. Other than that, is there anything in particular I should be aware of? Number one is try to stay engaged, no matter what. Act like you're having fun, and toss out tons of compliments. So I should kill them with kindness. And once they drain their glass, get them to order another. Ask for one for yourself, too. You're saying I need to beg? Oh yeah, these guys will do anything you want if you just ask nice and rub up on them. I'm not doing that. Either way, you're not going to be the only girl at the table. Just do it like the other hostesses do. Well, that's how everyone learns coming in. I'll see what I can do. Okay, it's almost time for opening. You'll be starting on the floor, Sari-san. 
Good luck. Hi, I'm Sumi Ray. Hiya, I'm Mika. Hiya, I'm sorry. Oh, I wasn't expecting such enthusiasm. Oh ah, well. Come, take a seat. Don't mind if I do. And so, as the young blood in the company, I was called on to make a sacrifice for the greater good. A sacrifice? They're working you to the bone. It's a shame how much some places impose on their workers. But you'll persevere in the end. I just know it. Oh, you can tell? Of course. I get the feeling you're super reliable, like you'll do whatever needs to be done. <laughs> A feeling, huh? That just means you don't know for sure. No, 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 no. She can see how valuable I really am. Now she just has to convince my boss. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to interrupt the fun. You've been requested by another customer, Sumire san Ah, uh, apologies. You'll have to excuse me. Well, that's how the professional world is. If you want to climb the ladder, you have to be persistent. Yes, precisely. Have you ever experienced something like that? Huh? I... um... Have I mentioned how much I love your tie? What? This old thing? <laughs> I bought it on a whim while I was in Italy for business. You have great fashion sense. Not many Japanese men could pull off that look. So true. I can't look away. Wow, I didn't realize you had such a good eye. <laughs> Maybe I'll check that brand out myself someday. <laughs> Just warning you, they're not cheap. Sorry about that. You were covering for me that whole time. Don't worry about it. I'm used to paying attention to my surroundings. You really have what it takes, Saori-san. Way more than me. I don't know. You seem to be far better adjusted. How long have you been working here? Hmm, maybe six months? At least I'm better now than I was back then. I was the worst girl in the club, without a doubt. One time, a customer even yelled at me. I remember it like it was yesterday, and I'm always so scared that it'll happen again. It's okay. We all have down days at work every so often. Uh, about that customer? Um, well, after he left the club that day, he... he died. What? You probably heard about it when it happened. He got drunk, got in a fight, and then died from his injuries. He was apparently pretty important, too. Involved in researching this new drug called AD9. You mean Hoshki-san from the ADDC? Yeah, that's the guy! You knew him? The case was all over the news, yes. I read quite a lot about his death. I poured the drinks Hashki-san got drunk off of, and it was my carelessness that made him upset. I can't help but feel responsible for him getting in the fight that killed him. My sales numbers aren't so good either. I'm kind of worried that they're going to fire me. I know I should do more to boost my numbers, but I always think back to Hashki-san. About that, Mika-san. Mika-san, Saori-san, you've got a customer. Uh, be right there. Sorry, 
That got kind of dark, huh? Sorry, son. You good? Oh, sorry. I'm heading over now. <laughs> Let me see here. Why don't you splurge on something fancy? I wish I could, but the wallet's kind of light this month. Aww, really? I'm kind of thirsty. Uh, uh, yeah, me too. Come on, do it for us. Uh, um, all right, give me your finest booze. Yay, you are the best. Fresh bottle coming right up. Never seen numbers that high before. Don't thank me. That was all you, Mikasan. Hey, let's go grab some drinks. My treat. I want to pay you back for tonight. <sighs> I couldn't. Actually, I know just the spot. Want to go there? I can't wait to learn more about you, Mikasan. Totally down. We just gotta hang in till our shift's over. Hello, Yagami-san? Hey, any luck? Yes, I made friends with the girl who served Hoshki six months ago. We're gonna bounce and go to tender in a few. Perfect. Wait, did you just say bounce? Forget that. Where are you? At my office. A lot happened after I dropped you off at the club. Care to elaborate? Well, maybe later. This is the first and last time, Yagami-san. I know. We just have to figure out what Hashki and Shona were talking about. The hostess they were with should know. Okay, I'll track her down somehow. I'll call you once I do. Hello? Oshinokun? Sarusan made it in, thanks to you. Got a job at the Queen Rouge and everything. Great. I knew her beauty was nothing to sneeze at. Thanks for taking her around, Yagami-san. By the way, what's the plan for tonight? We wait for Sarusan to call us. <sighs> Not much to do, but wait till then. I'm gonna go kill time around town. Be careful out there. Yeah, we will do. Hello? Hey. 
Yeah. <laughs> hey, Chuck.
Out of the way. This is Yagami. Huh? 
I'm on it. Excuse me. Nani? I'm on it.
You got this, right? You again. I thought you'd have given up by now. After what you did to me and the Kahine? Not once, but twice? I'm never backing down! Sorry, but you reap what you sow. Huh? The hell are you talking about? Quit showing off with your fancy words and shit! Seriously? 
Suck a keeper! Cause I am hungry! This man is Kaito Sakakiba, one of the Kahin Four! Him? You let him in? Hey, Kasai, you're buying me food if I take this guy down, yeah? Hey, you better believe it. Steak, ramen, pizza, whatever you want, big guy. I hope you're not lying. <laughs> that mean I get dessert too? Sure, sure, cake, pudding, anything. Does, um, does curry count as dessert? Literally anything you want, as much of it as you want. Just beat his ass. Come on, you can't just let him talk you into. Food. Jeez, this guy's built like a ton of bricks. <laughs> you see that? There's no getting through his flabby exterior. Now go, Sakakiba. Smash this bitch. Uh -huh. mm. What are you spacing out for? Get him! I'm hungry. What? It's dinner time. But... <sighs> Looks like your buddy abandoned you. Wait, that would be my line. Come on, man. Kuroiwa, I've been waiting for you. Why don't we step inside for a little chat? Another voluntary interrogation? Thought I told you to bring a warrant next time. The hell was that? <sighs> Let's be civilized here, Yagami-san. Fine. Office is pretty dirty, though. So, to what do I owe the honor? There's a leak in the prosecutor's office. Pretty sure it's a woman. Got her hands on some pretty important case files. The ones about the vice director of the ADDC getting beaten to death in the street. You have any ideas? Sorry, not a clue. What kind of lowlife would sell police secrets? Shh. Scum. Right, Ayabe? Totally. The worst. <laughs> Nobody takes us seriously around here. That all you came to ask? I'm sure you guys are just as busy as I am. So, if you're finished, I'm gonna have to ask you to... Right. Izumita wants to talk to you tomorrow. About Shintani's murder. You'll be there. In cuffs if need be. Why am I being treated like a suspect? Hm. <laughs> Sorry, that's classified. Just drop by the public prosecutor's office. If you're innocent, you have nothing to worry about. You don't want to deal with getting arrested. Trust me. Better to handle this before it gets to that point. Think of it like that. <laughs> Thanks for the advice. Besides, you and Izumina go way back. But how am I going to defend myself if I don't know why he suspects me? Let me guess. I'll find out when I get there. More or less. Who knows what angle Izumita will take. Have it your way. I'll come in and clear the air and we'll be done with this. I'll be in touch tomorrow.
<sighs> Asshole's been dragging me everywhere. I can't do a damn thing on my own. I can tell. Looks rough. Hello, Yagami-san? Hey, any luck? Yes. I made friends with the girl who served Hoshki six months ago. We're gonna bounce and go to tender in a few. Perfect. Wait, did you just say bounce? <laughs> Sorry, son. Took you long enough. This is Mika-san. Hey, I'm Yagami. Mind if I join you? Be my guest. This is the man you served six months ago? You're certain? Yeah, that's him. We already discussed Hoshki and Shono. Mika-san was at their table, without a doubt. That's Shono-san, right? Yeah. What were they like? I guess nothing stood out about them more than any other pair of businessman types. Hashki-san complained about his boss, while Shono-san just nodded and smiled. What was Hashki saying? He was going on and on about this Kido-san guy. Have you heard about that new dementia drug, 89? Uh... Yeah, I'm kind of familiar. Not surprised. They used to talk about it on TV a bunch. Anyway, apparently Kido-san's kind of a big shot guy on the 89 research team. And Hashki and Shono were talking shit about him? Yeah. Sounds like Kido-san was getting wined and dined by all sorts of people who wanted to profit off 89. From what I heard, not all those deals were above board. Secret deals, huh? Is Kido-san working with the Yakuza? Hashki-san didn't give specifics, but he did say 89 could buy a lot of influence. And about the cut he'd be getting later. He seemed like a really shady guy, actually. Interesting. Did you ever hear Hashki mention a Kachihira? Hachihira. It's a big construction company based out of Kansai. Basically, Hashki was working for this Kajihira, trying to shut down the ADDC. But wait, I thought Hashki-san was super important, like vice director or something. He was. Kajihira's money was too much for him to refuse, though. Mm. Either way, I, I don't remember hearing them talk about a Kajihira. I gotta say, you remember a lot for a conversation that happened six months ago. Can you blame me? The poor man got beaten to death right afterward. I replay this a lot. Right. Sorry. And at that point, I already knew about 89. See, my grandma has pretty bad Alzheimer's. So, I was hoping they'd release it to the public soon. I'm sure that made the conversation stick out to you. Yeah, when I heard Kitasan was just another slime ball, I don't know, kind of broke my heart. <sighs> Tragic. How was Shono acting that night at the club? Well, <laughs> he spent most of the night staring at my chest. Hashki-san kept going on about Kitasan all the same, though. Maintain eye contact, Yagami-san. Shono-san seemed more interested in being a creep than indulging him, though. You don't think he was listening to Hashki-san, then? Nope. Didn't seem like it. <laughs> Disgruntled boss on one side, closet perv on the other. But then, out of the blue, Hashki-san said this. There's something fishy going on with 89, I just know it. Did he have any idea what it was? Um, what did he say again? Uh, 
something about fabrication or falsification? Data fabrication? Falsifying the effects of the drug? Yeah, that was it. He kept going on about how AD9 was too good to be true. And how weird it is that it just came out of nowhere. So he brought Shono to the club to try and figure out if AD9 was real. Right. What did Shono say? Just, there's nothing fishy about it. But then Hashki-san yelled back, I don't believe that for a second. It was kind of awkward seeing how desperate he was. Makes sense he'd be desperate, though. Why? He promised this guy Kajihira he'd shut down the ADDC. Hmm. Thanks for this, Mika-chan. You must be exhausted. That's all of it? Yeah, you helped us more than you know. Be safe on your way back. Thank you. Uh, what time's your shift start tomorrow, Saori-san? Sorry. I'm not coming back tomorrow. Huh? It was a one-night thing. I got to see a side of myself I didn't know I had, though. Man, this stinks. You're so pretty, Saori-san, and I was pumped to learn more from you. I don't think I have much left to teach. I might be able to help you, though, as a friend. You're a lawyer? Let me know if you ever get into trouble. Wow, I've never been friends with a lawyer before. This is, like, super cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. Bye now! That was amazing, Saori-san. You really pulled through for us. It's fine. Come on, I'll walk you back to the office. I want to review what we learned with Hoshino-kun and the others. Sure. Welcome back. You're so beautiful, Sari-san. Like a puppy. You should dress like that all the time, Saori-kun. Yeah, good luck finding clients. I'm changing. There's a good chance Hashki's murder was premeditated. Just like Chairman Kajihira suspected. That's the conclusion you and Saori-kun reached? Yeah. Hashki thought something was up with 89. Doubted the authenticity of the research, seemed convinced they had fabricated data. He was desperately searching for proof before he died. But was there anything actually wrong with it? I tried analyzing the paper myself to find out, but it's like it was written in a different language. I'm searching for someone more knowledgeable as we speak, but nobody seems to suspect any foul play, not even online. Yet Hashki was still searching for issues, and if he had managed to find one, the ADDC would be long gone by now. Then they murdered Hashki to keep the secret safe? Don't be ridiculous. Who would kill a man just to protect a research paper? It might not be as unlikely as you think. The ADDC has been bringing in billions of government yen ever since they published that paper. With that much cash involved, bumping someone off wouldn't be out of the question. The question is, who killed Hashki? A professional assassin, if I had to guess. The man in the black raincoat. If he was an assassin, that would mean someone hired him. Yeah. Someone who wanted to protect 89 and the ADDC. But who? Can't begin to imagine. But apparently Kido was out hyping up 89, raking in tons of dirty money in the process. Guy might even be involved with the Yakuza. You're really suspicious of him, Yagami-san. Well, if it looks like a rat... Maybe Shintani got too close to the truth, and Kido offed him for it. The thought has crossed my mind. Don't think we can say that for sure without looking more into Kido, though. But judging from our last visit, that won't be as easy as you make it sound. He's practically a celebrity at this point. Well, maybe if we can't get him to talk prosecutor's office can. Huh? 
What do you mean? I've got a meeting with Izumita tomorrow. They're calling me in. Isn't that the prosecutor who was trying to get you arrested? He can try all he wants. That's what this meeting's about. No chance in hell he agrees to help us, then. All depends on how this little chat goes. If I can convince him I'm innocent, I'll clear my name and put the squeeze on Kido all in one fell swoop. What are you planning, Yagami-san? Yo, everything's really falling into place. Guess it's good we let Saori-san handle the cabaret, huh? Yo. Got a message for you from Kuroiwa. Says to drop by the Tokyo Public Prosecutor's Office. Izumi is waiting for you. Why'd you have to come here to tell me that? Would have been easier to talk on the phone. I got a bad feeling about all this. Huh? Feels like I'm never gonna see you again if you get yourself locked up now. Come on, don't be like that. Even if I do get arrested, I won't say a word about your little side job. That's what you're worried about, right? Yep. I might have to send someone to bump you off in prison if you rat me out. <laughs> like you could pull that off. Aren't you busy dusting off Kuroiwa's boots? I'm laying low, that's all. Speaking of, I have a question for you now that you're off your leash. Why do they think I killed Chintani? They have to have a reason, right? You've got to know. Well, funny enough, I don't. Kuroiwa won't share a shred of info with anyone but his closest partners. Not sure why. Gotcha. Now, get over to the prosecutor's office. Sorry, but you gotta cover your own cab fare. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I know. I've been waiting for you, Yagami-san. Rolling out the red carpet, huh? Izumita was hoping you'd lower your guard if I was the first person you saw here. <laughs> the man never changes. He loves his mind games. Yagami-kun, how did they convince you to come? I heard your pal Izumita wants to chat. And, depending on what I say, he may or may not try to arrest me. Hmm... I'm not sure it'll be quite like that. Huh? Then what's it gonna be? Well, you're about to get thrown to the wolves. Hey, Mafuyu. Good luck. Excuse me. I've brought Yagami-san. Much appreciated. Huh. Even the chief prosecutor's in on this. Please, come in. So these are the wolves. A room full of prosecutors, huh? Yagami-sensei. I believe Kuroiwa-san already told you this. But we want to talk to you about Shintani-sensei's murder. However, this is not a courtroom. And we're not strangers. Or wolves. Just try to relax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, relax, right. I'm not telling you what you want to hear, though. You want me to say I killed Shintani, right? Sorry, not happening. <laughs> the burden of proof's on you, anyway. So why don't we start there? Why do you think I did it? Yagami-sensei. Where were you on the night of Shintani-sensei's murder? Answer my question with another question? <laughs> That's not very nice. Do you have an alibi for that evening? You heard of a company called KJ Art? The place is a front for some Kansai Yakuza, the Kyore clan. On the night of the crime, I was near there with their captain, Shioya. He'll back my story up, I'm sure. 
And care to explain why Shintani-sensei's corpse was found in your office? I was hoping you could tell me. Maybe the real killer could answer that for you. Naturally. That's why I called you here. Mind if I interject? Go right ahead, Morita-san. Yagami-san, you stole a look at Shintani-sensei's call history before the police arrived, yes? Not long before his death, he placed a call to the Advanced Drug Development Center. Knowing that, you barged into the center and interrogated both Kido-san and Shono-san. Why would you do such a thing? I wanted to figure out what made Shintani a target, who wanted him dead. Is that not the police's job? I couldn't leave it to them, or the prosecution. After all, you guys have a bad habit of going after the wrong guy. Kinda like right now. I see. So you mean to imply someone else killed Shintani-sensei? Do you have anything that could prove that claim? That's the only reason I'm here. Oh, how responsible of you. The prosecution's proven unreliable after all. I've been working my ass off because of you guys. <laughs> now, can we begin? Yes, you have the floor, Yagami. Before we get to Shintani's murder, there are a few things I need to cover. One year ago, the ADDC published a research paper on a new drug they were developing called AD9. This drug has gained global recognition as the thing that may finally cure Alzheimer's disease. What hasn't gained recognition is the fact that someone from the ADDC was murdered six months ago. An ADDC member murdered? Who? The Vice Director, Toru Hashiki. Hashiki was seen arguing with a strange man in Kamurocho before being found lying beaten in the street. He died in the hospital three weeks later. The culprit is still at large. Did you know of this case? It's the first I've heard of it. Understandable. It didn't make many headlines. Incidentally, this Hashiki guy had a pretty big secret. Uh-huh. Turns out he was working for the Kajihira Group, a massive construction company based out of Kansai. Kajihira was planning to redevelop the land the ADDC sits on. He'd already settled it with the Minister of Health, had the Kyore clan muscle in on the turf too. But the plan fell apart when AD9 was announced. Kajihira ended up taking a pretty big hit. To the tune of 100 billion yen. What? That's when Hashiki came in swearing to Kajihira that he'd scuttle 89, no matter what it took. <sighs> Just before he was beaten half to death, Hashiki went out with another member of the ADDC, someone deeply involved in the development of 89, someone he thought he could manipulate. I'm sure you recognize this man, Izumira-san. Three years ago, he testified about the murder that had taken place at the ADDC. He claimed he had seen the victim, a patient by the name of Waku, still alive. I remember him. You're referring to Dr. Shono? Mm-hmm. He's also the head of the 89 research team. Hashiki was grilling Shono, convinced that there was something fishy going on with 89. Like what? He thought they had fabricated data and falsified the effects of the drug. After all, it wasn't until rumors of closing the ADDC started swirling that Director Kido suddenly announced 89. Hashiki was convinced it was all too convenient to be coincidence. But that doubt didn't sit well with those who stood to rake in massive profits off 89's development. Are you implying Hashiki's murder was premeditated? <laughs> Sounds like we're finally on the same page, Izumita-san. 
I had the exact same thought. <sighs> Taking all this into account, doesn't it seem like there really is something fishy about 89? Hmm. But let's get back to Shintani. Just before he was murdered, he called the ADDC and tried to get in touch with a very specific someone. Maybe that phone call provoked whoever is trying to hide the truth about 89. Shintani was an obstacle, just like Hashiki. He had to be removed. What I'm saying is, there's a chance anyone who gets too close to learning the true nature of 89 is being murdered. And if you haven't investigated down that path, then one thing's pretty clear. You have a lot more work to do before you can arrest me, wouldn't you say? Answer me, Izumita! If you still want to bring me in, let's see some proof. All these prosecutors, and nobody's got any proof. That's quite a theory, Yagami-san. Truly fascinating. There were details in there even we weren't aware of. You've clearly done your homework. I'd be glad to hand over my findings if it'll help. After all, 89's practically a household name at this point. Lifting the lid on it might be too much for me to handle all on my own. And besides, I think I'd rather work with you than Izumita here. You need to lose the attitude, Yagami. Sorry, I need to take this. Yes, hello? Is that so? Yes, you've done excellent work. Thank you. Just so you're aware, the prosecution has made a coordinated effort with law enforcement. We've already submitted a request for the court to issue a warrant. I'm sorry for the call, but that was the verification of our request, you see. You're still gonna arrest me after all this, huh? Fortunately, you're not the one under arrest. What? I wouldn't celebrate. We're not done with you just yet. It's in the interest of closing the case. Listen here, Yagami. You know who Shintani's killer was? It's your old friend, Ayabe. What? Striations on the recovered bullet are a perfect match to his firearm. There's no doubt. He's the one. <laughs> like it or not, he's going down. din of the city, the death of the ADDC's vice director hardly made a sound. Behind his death are the vast profits of the AD9 drug. Yagami arrives at the possibility that all the deaths were premeditated. But the prosecution's eye for such detail is wanting, and Detective Ayabe is indicted for Shintani's murder. Striations on the recovered bullet are a perfect match to his firearm. There's no doubt. He's the one. <laughs> like it or not, he's going down. Apologies for keeping you in the dark. It was imperative for Ayabe to be completely oblivious to our suspicions of him, after all. This is a murder charge against an active officer. To put it plainly, it takes more effort to actually make an arrest. So, we had to pretend you were our primary suspect. You and Ayabe have gotten to be pretty cozy these days. Suspecting you was the perfect way to divert his attention. I see. 
So this was all some kind of act? An act? Not at all, I assure you. And I believe you should know. We're aware of Ayabe's side job. Ayabe was an informant, a spy. He was selling police intel on the black market. We plan to investigate those transactions thoroughly, Yagami-san. And so, it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest if we see you again in the near future. Speak of the devil. We were just talking about you, Ayabe-san. Listen, Yagami, you gotta help. Someone set me up. They're saying I killed Shitani. Me. Me. Uh-huh. You're not surprised? Not quite. I already heard. I'm sitting here with the prosecution as we speak. Huh? Yeah. They're looking right at me. Please, Yagami, you have to take my case. I don't know where else to turn. Okay, I'll do it. It's only fair after all you've done. We can talk more later. I'll be there soon. So, I'll see you in court then. Who do you have on the job? Izumita? Should be a good time. Someone is using you, Prosecutor. No matter who that person is, I'm not losing. So that's the story, Genda Sensei. We're going to take the case. Uh, of course we are. Anyway, you're going to go talk to Ayabe, right? I'll send Hoshino Kun along. Yep. I'm heading over right now. I've been waiting for you, Yagami-san. We can go see Ayabe whenever you want. We'll just need to grab a taxi to get there. An on-duty detective arrested for murder. <laughs> now this is a shock. Try not to look so happy about it then. This is Hoshino-sensei from the Genda Law Office. He's young, but he's reliable. Oh. Here I thought the great Takayuki Yagami would represent me. It's been years since I defended someone in court. I'll still be gathering all the evidence, though. Don't worry. It worked for Hamra. I'm Hoshino. I'll do whatever it takes to clear your name. You sure, kid? Shintani was practically your boss, yeah? If I'm really the killer... Well, I mean, you're not the killer, right? Uh, he's not the killer, is he? Probably not. What do you mean, probably? I hear your gun's the one Shintani was murdered with. Yep. Apparently the rifling on the bullet matched. Um, what's rifling again? Really? Uh, sorry. So, guns have these spiral-shaped grooves on the inside of the barrel to stabilize the bullet's trajectory. These grooves are called the rifling, and leave a mark on the bullet itself. Whoa. Now, the rifling's slightly different on every gun. Kinda like its fingerprints. 
And apparently, the marks on the bullet that killed Shintani matched my gun's rifling. So your gun must have killed Shintani-sensei? Yeah. It was the murder weapon, for sure. So, someone used my gun to commit the crime, and I'm being set up. But how? You remember the day he died? We were having a nice stiff drink at Tender. You, me, and Kaito. Yeah, I remember. That was my first time meeting Kuroiwa. I hung around after you guys beat it. It wasn't a while till I decided to go home. Thing is, I don't remember what happened next. Huh? Someone smacked me in the back of the head. Crept up so I couldn't see him. You got ambushed? Where was this? Close to the bar, I bet. But I'm not sure. It all happened so damn fast. Some great detective work there. What do you expect? Whoever knocked me out moved me, too. That just fucks with things even more. Moved you to where? Random bench, over in the Kamurocho Children's Park. Not a soul around when I came to. That's a ways from Tender. They must have taken you in a car. How long were you out for? Hour or so, Tops. But as I found out later, that hour's when Shintani was murdered. With my fucking gun. So the real killer still has your gun? No. It was in its holster when I woke up. Wait, what? Whoever attacked me took my gun, murdered Shintani, and put it back where they found it, all within the course of an hour. So the only thing missing was a bullet? Not even that, if you'd believe it. They got rid of any sign it had ever been used. Maybe if we look at the bullet from Shintani's body... Not gonna happen. Nothing spectacular about a single bullet. By the way, did you tell anyone you got attacked? No. I mean, nothing even got stolen. Reporting it just would have put me in more trouble. Don't want to draw attention to your side job, huh? Sucks being a dirty cop. A real detective could have reported it. Ah. Can't argue there. The culprit must have been counting on that, though. They went after you specifically because they knew you wouldn't make a big deal out of it. So it was all planned? Planned or not, the bullet that killed Shintani ended up with your gun's rifle marks on it. There's no denying that. Yeah, I only found out when they hauled me in, though. No surprise, they suspect me. There's no reason not to at this point. But none of my co-workers said a damn word. Hey, you know how Kuroi has been dragging me all over town with him? He probably just wanted to make sure I didn't skip town. Only just realized that now. What did you say is your alibi? You were knocked out in the park? <sighs> Not a very believable story. Come on, you and I both know I didn't kill him! Somebody's pinning it on me! <sighs> what do you say, Yagami? You think I got a chance? <laughs> You'll be just fine. <laughs> well, guess that was a dumb question. Nobody's gonna tell a guy his head's on the chopping block. Listen up, Oshinokun. Ayabe was set up by whoever killed Shintani. That's what we've got to work to prove. You really trust Ayabe-san? What if he's lying to us? He might be a dark stain on the forest, but he's a decent guy. Smart, too. He wouldn't kill, especially not with his own gun. Someone else did this. You think it's the mole? That's the most obvious suspect. Let's start by talking to someone close to the case. I've got a guy in mind. Which would be... Oh, Captain Hamara. Mm-hmm. But nobody knows where he is, right? That's true. I wonder what Matsugane-san's thoughts are, though. If anyone's gonna know where to find Hamara, it's him. <laughs> Good. Well, I'll head back to the office, then. 
I should tell Genda Sensei what we learned. What do you want? Sticking your nose where it doesn't belong again? I need to know where Hamra is. Still hiding. Not a clue where. What about Matsugane-san? Is he back at the office? Use your head, talk. No way he's gonna stick around there. Kaito-san? Hamura and the boss are in the same boat. Those Kyorei assholes would hunt him down in an instant if they were easy to track. Exactly. Wherever they are now, they're safe. No idea where that'd be, though. Can't you at least get in touch with them? Just say we want to have a few words. I can try. I'll let you know once I figure shit out. You know how to pick up a phone, yeah? Yeah, thanks. Hoshino-kun told me about Ayabe. Said the mole framed him. Guess he's really behind all of this. Yep. Which brings us right back to Hamra. We'll start from him and go from there. Plain and simple. Let's just hope Matsugane-san knows where he is. Well, no point worrying about that until Higashi gets back to us. Hello? Yo, it's Higashi. Hey, any word from Matsugane-san? What'd he say? Meet at a restaurant called Kamuroki Kanoya. On the ways out of the city. Take a cab. Boss is already there. Got it. Thanks, Higashi. Don't keep him waiting. Matsugane-san, our guests have arrived. Good. Please, take a seat. It's been some time, Tak. And you I haven't seen since your expulsion. Yes, sir. Matsugane-san, I'm sure Higashi mentioned this. But I want to ask you directly. Come now. Let's at least have a drink first, huh? <laughs> if you say so. Here. Place is pretty fancy. It's been a while since the three of us drank. Tak, I have a favor to ask. You need to stay away from Hamura. Uh, what? This family is nothing without him. Well, he's the only thing keeping us afloat. Yeah, you told me that already. Where is he? I don't know. He has no reason to keep me informed of his every move. Then why did you call us here? We didn't need to come all this way if that's all you had to tell us. Boys! Boss? I don't... Understand. My boy. You need to stay away from Hamura. The mole's my top priority now. And Hamura is the only person I can ask. Don't you understand? Hamura's been compromised. Him and that mole you're chasing, they're in this together. Time to let it go. 
What if I say no? I couldn't tell you what might happen. He's dangerous. What do you mean, he's dangerous? If you can't tell me that, why should I stop? Amara, the boy has money on his side, and a lot of it. And I don't know who he gets it from. I suggest you don't push the matter. But if you really want to put yourself in harm's way, then let me be the one to do it. At least then you'll make it out alive. You'd do that? You know, you and Kaito, well, I've always tried to keep you two kids safe. All this time, I've never asked for anything in return. But here we are. This is the only thing that I'll ever ask of you. Abandon this pursuit of the mole. If you've ever held a shred of regard for me, then heed this one request. I'm not turning back. The risk doesn't matter anymore. Okubo, the mole, the ADDC, it all connects. This isn't about what regard I have for you. I won't stop. Then I'm sorry. <clears throat> Boss, I've always looked up to you. And good Yakuza don't disobey. But now, I'm in Yagami's corner, damn it. Yes, that you are. Matsugani san! Higashi. <sighs> Sir. Pick your side. I've had enough. You're Matsugani, are you not? I am, boss. <sighs> Prove it, then. Good luck, dude. Guess we're doing this, huh? Not like we got a choice. And now that we're up against the wall, you're just gonna have to do it. Let's see what you've got! I'm sure he's gonna be just fine. <laughs> Time to die! That was simple for you two. Far too simple. Makes me realize how old I really am. It's a shame, isn't it? That I've all but faded away. Ah, time sure flies, my boy. Just gets worse and worse with every year. Damn tragic. Matsukane. <sighs> and stay down, asshole! Not 
not going to be that easy. <sighs> You're really laying it on him, Kaito. Oh, boss. Is this the Yagami kid you were talking about? Yep. Happens every fucking time I run into the guy. So, asshole, you, uh, get some kind of sick pleasure out of him beating the crap out of you? Time after time, you just keep coming back for seconds. You all right in the brain, kiddo? I'm saner than you, you bullshit Yakuza. Huh. Bullshit Yakuza, huh? Some rotten attitude you got there. Hey, why don't you go fuck yourself? Who the fuck do you think you are? <laughs> Back in the day, I was a lot more like you than I think you even know. I was in a real bad place, so I just started punching anything that pissed me off. And before long, my time was up. Nowhere left for me to go except this cesspool of a city. And you, my boy, that's exactly where you are. Don't talk like you know me. You don't know shit. Oh, but I do, you see. When I was your age, my life was going down the shitter and I just kept flushing. And now, <laughs> you, my boy, you're the same little punk I was. I can tell. You know, sometimes people have no choice but to turn to the Yakuza. But, even if my chance is gone, you've got a future ahead of you. <clears throat> now, I might have called this place a cesspool. But it's more than that. Kamurocho. It's a city of dreams, where even from the gutters, you can shoot for the stars. So if you want to get ahead in this town, well, kid, I'll teach you everything I know. But look, if nothing else, you might want to lay off your little date nights with Kaito. In times like these, it's hard to even enjoy a drink. The mole you're searching for is a hired gun employed by Hamura. An assassin? Yes. It seems Hamura always turns to the same person when he needs someone taken care of. That's your killer, without a doubt. Do you know anything about him? No. But whoever he is, he's a goddamn pro. He's killed several people now the exact same way, yet barely left a trace. Do you know what he looks like, at least? No. The only one who does is Hamura. Are you still going to pursue this, Tuck? That's the plan. You should know. Even if you track down Hamura and the Mole, that won't be the end of it. They're just puppets on a stage much larger than you realize. And once you step foot on that stage, there's no hiding from the limelight. Do you understand? I'd rather try and regret it than never try at all. Huh. <laughs> Nobody listens to their elders these days. Sorry about this, boss. Seriously. Can I just say one thing, Matsugane-san? What is it? The Matsugane family I know would never turn a blind eye to cold-blooded murder like this. You say you can't exist without Hamura, but... Don't make me repeat myself. Times have changed. Hamura is the Matsukani family now. 
It's not my place to interfere anymore. That's my prerogative as Patriarch. Matsugane-san. Thank you for everything. All that, still no clue where Hamura is. We're back to square one. Not exactly. The boss slipped us a pretty big hint. Oh yeah? When he was talking about Captain Hamura. Hmm? He might be in hiding, yeah. But the family looks to Hamura for guidance now. He's gotta be communicating with them somehow. If we can just listen in on one of their conversations, that should lead us straight to him. We just gotta get ears in there. You follow me? I think I do. You wanna bug their office. Exactly. But after everything that just went down, you know what'll happen if we get caught. They'll kill us. Which means, we'll just have to enlist the help of an expert burglar. Aha. Uh -huh. You wanna make Sugiura do it. I'll give him a ring. You go track down some bugs. Me? Make sure they're HD audio and shit. Meet me at the office once you've got them. Hey, Tsukumo. Oh, Yagamishi. What is it this time? I'm trying to keep this on the down low here, but I'm looking for bugs. Think you can help me with that? <laughs> you know who you're talking to, right? Of course I can. Not so. Well, any time works for me as long as I've got the parts. You're gonna make them by hand? I won't find a safer pair of hands than literally my pair of hands. Plus, you get a friend discount. If you say so. Anyway, what do you need? I'll run to a department store and pick them up. <laughs> no need. Here's a riddle. You can get me from here, but I am not here. What am I? What? <laughs> Online shopping! Things get here in no time with rush shipping. I'll just need you to give me the cash. How much are we talking? For parts and labor, let's say... a hundred thousand? That's with your friend discount? <laughs> yes, sir. I'm taking a loss on it for you, Yagamishi. <sighs> All right. Just let me know when you have the money, and I'll put the order in. <laughs> that money burning a hole in your pocket? It's gonna run you a hundred grand for parts and labor. Here you go. <laughs> Thanks. It's gonna take a while, but I'll let you know when I'm done. Sounds good. Oh, well you got here fast, Yagamishi. Says the guy who makes bugs in ten minutes. <laughs> well, I can't refuse a compliment. Here you go. They're designed to blend into a power outlet, so just plug it in. Oh, and the signal range is 100 meters. It'll even go through metal plates or other obstacles, meaning you can listen from, say, the roof of a building? That's perfect. I think this is gonna work. You can turn them off remotely, too. So you don't have to listen constantly if you don't want to. I have to say, even a great detective like you would have trouble finding these, Yagamishi. <laughs> I'm not sure that's entirely true, but thanks anyway. You're a lifesaver, Tsukumo. <laughs> You're very welcome. Hey, just stopping by for a bit. More like I got dragged here against my will. You get the bugs, Chuck? Sure did. Good. Take a seat.
So, you want to tap the Matsugane office? Kaito-san told you, huh? Yep. Now explain what you told me, Sugiyoro-kun. Well, uh... It's impossible. No way I can sneak in. They've literally got guys on watch, man. The cameras had seen me going in and out, too. And think about what had happened if I got caught. They beat me to death. Guess we're screwed. This isn't a joke, Kaito-san. What are we gonna do? All right, all right, chill. I thought of something else. If Sugiura doesn't want to sneak in, we'll just find you a disguise. Huh? Just hear me out. You know this guy, Tak? Who's that? Guy's got a killer jacket. One of the Matsugane goons, yeah? Yep. Name's Tashiro-kun. The snazziest fucking Yakuza in town. Guy never takes his shades off, even at night. You know, his hide and build are awful close. You better not be thinking what I think you're thinking. If Tashiro-kun was wearing a face mask, nobody'd know he was actually a different person. They wouldn't have a clue. Good idea. So what? You want me to dress up like Tashiro-kun and infiltrate the Matsugane office? Bingo. First things first, we gotta find him and grab his clothes and shades. The rest will be simple. Just walk in there and plant the bugs. Oh, and here I thought I was gonna be able to sit this part out. It's all in your capable hands now. You gotta say, Kaito-san, you really thought this through. You know, before today, I always thought I was gonna end up back in the family somehow. What's that? But there's no way. Not now that I defied the boss. Guess there's no turning back, though. Might as well see this through to the end. Gotcha. Now let's go get Tashiro-kun's clothes. Let's hit it. Kaito-san. Sup? Do you, uh, have any idea where Tashiro-kun is? Let me think. Last I heard, he was working at a cabaret. Looking there might be our best bet. Which club? I think it was called Emerald Hills, over on Shichifuku Street. Sounds like we have our next stop then. Hey, do you have a second? Welcome, sirs. Table for two? Actually, we want to ask you a question. This place is a Matsugane joint, yeah? Um, uh, yes, sir. Why do you ask? We're looking for somebody. You know a guy named Tashiro? Tashiro? Flashy jacket, always wears his sunglasses. You gotta know the guy. Oh, him. There you go. I knew you'd know him. Any idea where he is? <laughs> Actually, he was in the club just a second ago. A customer was giving us some trouble, though. So he saw them out, personally. I'm guessing they didn't go out for drinks. Where did Tashiro take it? Probably toward Tenkaichi Street. He said there's a back alley nobody ever goes in there. Smart. If you're gonna beat the crap out of someone, better to do it where nobody's gonna find you. Sometimes I think you kind of miss doing that shit. Anyway, let's get moving. Right. Thanks, pal. Oh, of course. Listen, you old fuck! Didn't you see the sign? You can look, but not touch! <laughs> Please, I never touched anyone! Huh? Bullshit, you didn't! The girls know all about your pervy ass! There he is, Tashiroku. You, uh, weren't kidding about how he dresses. I'm actually kind of impressed. Huh? Wait, you're Yagami! Oh, congrats. You recognize the guy your whole family's after. Shut it, asshole! Um, I I'm just gonna... Hey, get the hell back here! Damn it! He got away because of you! Let me guess. You made that up to try and squeeze cash out of the poor bastard. A guy like that wouldn't cop a feel even if your girl wanted him to. Huh? The fuck do you know? Huh. Sounds like you were right on the money. Of course. That's how shit goes around here. 
It's only fair that we take his clothes, yeah? What do you mean? The hell are you talking about? We'll give them back as soon as we're done. Won't be long, promise. Fuck off! You got any idea how much these threads cost? Not a one. But you know how dangerous Kamado Cho is. Should've expected somebody want to jump you. We won't have to hurt you if you just hand them over. Everything will stay nice and clean, too. It's a win-win. So, are you stripping or not? What kind of question is that, pretty boy? If you want my clothes, you're gonna have to rip them off! Okay, let's just get this over with, Tuck. Yep, don't want anyone walking in on this. Shit, this guy's fucking loaded. His wallet's burst into the goddamn seams. Don't take his money, we're not thieves. Yeah, yeah, I know. Wait, don't clothes count as stealing? Like I said earlier, we're just borrowing them for a bit. If you say so, you're the lawyer. Man, they fit even better than I was expecting. You look good, Doc. That's the last thing I want to hear. Anyway, you better get to the Matsugane office and plant those bugs before our friend wakes up. Speaking of, Kaito-san, think you can take care of him? Huh? What do you mean? We can't leave the guy naked outside this time of year. <laughs> Always a big softy. Sure, I'll handle him. Can't go with you anyway, not looking like regular old Kaito. Thanks. Talk. Don't mess this up. I won't. Hello? <laughs> what in the absolute fuck is this? <laughs> oh, spare me. They're not my clothes. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm okay. See you out front of the Matsugane office. All right, I'll be right over. Sorry for the wait, Sugira. Ugh. Hey, Sugira? Sorry, I think you have the wrong guy. <laughs> God, I just can't help it. God, we don't have time for this. I can't help it, man. That's the loudest disguise I've ever seen in my life. Maybe you want to try planting these instead? S sorry, sorry. It's it's perfect, honest. Yeah, whatever. Can we get this over with now? Yagami-san, I should be able to get a read on the bugs right after you set them. Just come on out when you're all done. Got it. So, you ready? Yeah, good to go. <laughs> it's really not that funny. Oh! Stylish as ever, Tashiro. Me and you, we gotta hit the club sometime. Hey, Tashiro. All clear at Emerald Hills? Glad you can take care of yourself. We got enough to worry about looking for Yagami. Uh, by the way, mind keeping an eye on the office for me? Gonna head to the convenience store and grab a snack. I'll be back in five. Suspicious.
suspicious. Suspicious. Hey, it's Yagami. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Now hurry up and get your ass down here. Got it. The hell are you doing, Tashiro? You know no going in the boss's room without permission. If anything happened, it'd be on me. The hell are you ignoring me for? Say something, dammit! What the... Yagami! Uh... Guess I'm busted, huh? You got balls climbing into the lion's mouth knowing you're just gonna get eaten! Don't let this asshole leave here alive! You're not getting away that easy. Say your prayers, shithead! Uh, whoa, we have laws against those, you know. Laws? Says the guy who's trespassing! Damn it. How am I gonna get out of this? What the? That'll work. That was a close one, Yagami-san. Did you cut the lights back there? Yep. Heard everything thanks to the bugs. Flipped the breaker at the last second. Thanks, Sugira. You saved my life. Won't be safe for long if we stick around here. Let's get moving. Yeah. I think we're safe now. What about the bugs? Can you hear what they're saying? Give me a sec. That's all it takes? Yep. Well, everything seems fine. Huh? It sounds like they're making a call already. To the man of the hour himself, Hamura. They're reporting what just went down. Can you tell where he's hiding? One sec. Uh, something about Chohan? Isn't that some kind of dice game? Guess he's at a gambling hall then. But where can you play Chohan? If we want to gamble, all we have to do is ask a gambler. And I think I know just the spot. Oh, you mean the casino? The one under Koibrai? Somebody there has to know where to find Chohan in this town. For sure. Guess in that case. Yeah, I'll handle it from here. Got it. Thanks for the backup, though. I'm on a roll. Time to go all in. Game's gonna be mine. Hey, uh, sorry to interrupt. 
Not now, dickhead! Can't you see I'm in the middle of something? It won't take long, promise. Ah! Just, I lost again! See what you did! No, I'm pretty sure you just have awful luck. The shit did you say? Let's take this outside, pal. You're gonna pay! Man, I'm gonna be raking in the cash in no time. <laughs> How should I spend my newfound wealth? Hey, sorry to interrupt. Huh? Uh, it's okay, what's up? Know anywhere around here a guy can play some Chohan? Chohan? Sorry, can't say I do. Oh, well... Thanks anyway. This is actually my first time here. Good times keep coming though. I'm gonna be rich. I'm on a roll. Time to go all in. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Uh, you there! What? I need cash. A hundred grand will do the trick. A hundred grand? Look, man, I'm riding a wave of good luck here. I'm about to make some serious bank! Sorry, I actually don't have enough. Ah, there goes my chance. Anyway, there's something I want to ask you. Damn it! No choice but to go all in! He's not even listening to me. Hello. Fucking shit, look at the ass on her. Hey, uh, sorry to interrupt. Hmm? What do you want? Know anywhere around here a guy can play some Chohan? Johan, huh? Yeah, I think there's a joint in the Champion District. Heard their exclusive is all fuck. You actually know a place? Could you maybe tell me the name? Hmm, I could. Sure, but... But what? Check her out. That chick's got the goods, right? Uh, sure. I guess she's got... goods? What's your point? I want to have a drink with her. Can you make introductions for me? I have to be your wingman? Good looking guy like you's got a better chance of sealing the deal, right? I mean, look at me. Ugh, oh, I can't believe this. You better tell me if I do this for you. Of course, man! <laughs> Mind if I join you? Please, take a seat. You come here often? You bet. There's three things I love in life. Stiff drinks, risky bets, and handsome men. Oh yeah? Just once. I want someone to seduce me like they do in the movies. Uh, okay. Can I buy you a drink? Make it a martini. A gambling woman's drink. Let me guess. Vodka martini. Shaken, not stirred. <laughs> right you are. 
You're a bigger movie buff than I expected. Mind if I buy you one? My friend will probably want to join us too. Oh, you only want to drink? Uh, huh? I just told you I'm in the gambling mood. So, what do you say we spice things up a bit? Here's the deal. I'll drink with you if you beat me at poker. Okay, it's a deal. Well, are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> oh, this should be good. Seems I won. That's life. You win some, you lose some. Well, what a good sport. You know the game pretty well. Bet you never lose too big, huh? <laughs> There's something of an art to it, isn't there? What a team you and I would make. All right. I'll join you for this drink. Really? Great. Let me grab my friend. Hey! Why are you the one having all the fun? She agreed to drink with us after a game. Now go grab some seats. Wait, seriously? Ha, I owe you for this, man! You're damn right you do. I need to know where I can play Chohan, remember? Oh, yeah. It's in the Champion District. Only shop without a sign, you can't miss it. A bar with no sign. Knock on the shutter three times, and they'll ask you what you want. You respond with the password, can I talk to Moon? Knock three times, then the password. Next, they'll say he says he wants the steak, to which you respond, Chateaubriand, blue. And that's it. Joints underground, but clearly that ain't a problem for you. Thanks. That's a huge help. Now let's get drinking. Actually, I think I'm gonna have to pass. I need to go. You're lost, pal. An ass like that is a once-in-a-lifetime deal. Oh yeah, she likes vodka martinis. Order it shaken, not stirred. The hell's that supposed to mean? Yo. Kaito-san. Sugiura told me you'd be here. So, you find out where Hamura is? Yep. A gambling hall in the Champion District. Really? Where at? Apparently the only store without a sign. They've got the club set up underground. Oh, huh, fancy. By the way, Talk, what happens when you find Hamura? The first thing I'm gonna do is vent. After everything he's done, he deserves it. If I'm honest, I'd take more joy in seeing him squirm than finding the mole right about now. <laughs> Glad we're on the same page. Let's go. Yo, hold up. 
Hmm? I don't see a sign anywhere. This is where we get in the gambling hall? Can I talk to Moon? He says he wants steak. Pick one for him. Chateaubriand, blue. Thank you for your order. Enjoy your meal. Nice going, Doc. I could go for a steak now. Exactly an easy man to find. Shit. Ozaki. <laughs> Again, huh? Ready, talk? You done yet? Or do you want me to keep hitting you? Oh, fuck you! You hired the thief that stole the money from the office that day. It was all just a setup, wasn't it, Hamura? What, memories of looting you? But it's all water under the bridge, isn't it? Now that I can do this. What about the mole? Everything he does is under your command, huh? How many people has the mole murdered? All those Kyore guys? Shintani? No way those are the only ones. Shintani, before he got murdered, was so sure of the mole wasn't part of some Yakuza war. He wouldn't have said that without information to support it. And so, you had to silence him. Made the mole use Ayabe's gun to hide the trail. Like hell I did. Shintani knew your secret. He knew the mole murders were linked to the ADDC. All this comes right back to AD9, doesn't it? Shove it up your ass! Now hands off, 
or I'm gonna fucking kill you! You seriously never <laughs> listen, huh? Hamura. <laughs> the center's director, Kido. Is he the one who's behind all this carnage? Is it Kido? Is that not right? Start talking quick, asshole. Not feeling it, huh? Then how about I kill you right here? Kaito san! Kido's not our guy. And the phone call. Lin Shintani tried to reach the center. He wasn't trying to talk to Director Kido at all. It does seem we received a phone call from this Shintani-san you speak of. Do you know who he was calling? Dr. Shona. Hashiki, too. He was trying to get information out of Shono until someone got to him. So the one I want... It's Shono, huh? Right, Hamura? Hey! Fire! Fire! Someone's got it out for us, huh, Talk? Captain! Kaito-san! Let's move! Like his shithead boys took him out of here. <sighs> Holy hell. I'm just glad we're still alive. The mole was Hamura's personal underworld assassin. With a mounting threat behind them, Yagami and Kaito are forced to cut ties with Matsugane. And the two set foot down a path of no return. Finally, the name of a mastermind bubbles to the surface. The man is an AD-9 researcher, Yoji Shono. Smoke continues to billow out of the Champion District fire as we speak. The apparent cause is a small explosion which took place in a covert gambling hall not long ago. Eyewitnesses claim they heard the sound of explosives being detonated in the establishment. However, the building was deserted by the time firefighters and police arrived on the scene. With the horror of gang violence still fresh in our minds, the incident only raises tension across the city. Mm, sounds like the plan didn't go so well. They were desperate. Still, we did manage to talk to Hamra. Which is how you found out Shona was the one giving him orders, right? Not Director Kido. Yeah, at least that's a look he was giving us. You can tell that just from a look? Give me a break. I don't know how else to put it. Well, I guess that look is all we have to go off. Hey, did you come to taunt me or help me? Don't be mean, Yagami-san. Of course I came to help. 
help how? I found someone who's an expert on AD9. Looking into that research paper might be our best shot at finding more leads. And I don't know about you, but I can't understand a word of what it says. Yeah, same. But I found somebody who can. I'm impressed. Good work, Hoshino-kun. Just don't get mad, okay? Mad? Why would I get mad? Well, the expert I found... It's Hattori-san, the journalist you kinda hate. What? Please, he's written a lot of articles on 89 and has interviewed all the top medical researchers. That guy? Seriously? This has gotta be some kind of joke. He said he'd tell us what we wanna know, if you asked him nicely. Yeah, you know what? Let's drop it. I don't care about the paper. <laughs> Yagami-san. What? That research could contain vital information for this case we're building. This isn't an opportunity we can afford to miss. But if we ask him for help now, he's gonna want something in return later. Hattori-san's waiting for you at Kyushu number one star. Apparently he's doing a story on them. Come on, Yagami-san. Get going. <laughs> Tori-san? Hmm? Oh, I didn't notice you there, Yagami-san. Don't tell me you're using a phone camera to take pictures for your article. Resolution on these things is plenty high nowadays. You have a problem? Not really, no. Just didn't know sensationalist food columns were a thing. I only report on things that interest me. That's my professional philosophy. Well, is it gonna take a while? I'm here to talk. Don't worry. I'll be done soon. All right, I'm done. Thanks for stopping by, Yagami-san. Kinda strange sharing a bowl of ramen with you. I thought the day would never come. Can you not? <laughs> Relax, Yagami-san. Are you still working for Kajihira? I'm not sure I'd go that far. 
He just calls me in for favors every now and again. Helps to be on good terms with the guy. For my job, you know? Uh-huh. It'd be nice to be close with you, too, Yagami-san. I heard you were the one who discovered Shintani-sensei's corpse, after all. I'm here to talk 89. If that's not what this is about, I'm not sticking around. All right, all right. But you'll owe me for this. Generally, drug development starts with the discovery of a compound that can treat a given disease. That compound becomes the candidate for a drug. They then test its effects on animals, after which the drug heads to clinical trials. Which is a nicer way of saying human experimentation, by the way. As for the process, it can take years, sometimes even longer, to ensure a drug is truly safe for public consumption. Yeah, yeah, it's tough, I get it. Before now, Alzheimer's drugs have only been able to slow the progress of the disease. None can cure it completely. But Director Kido's 89 proved remarkably effective at doing just that when tested on mice. If it can work on humans as well, maybe we can finally kiss Alzheimer's goodbye. At least, that's what the paper they published a year ago claimed. Interesting. Yagami-san. Hmm? In this country, one in four people over the age of 80 is affected by dementia. That means for a couple in their 50s, there's a good chance that one of their parents has it. And the odds that one member of that couple will develop it themselves is 50-50. No matter how you look at it, Dementia is an inescapable issue. If I ever experienced symptoms myself, I'd go to the doctor straight away. In some cases, they can slow the progress enough that you can even keep working. I guess my point is, dementia is not something to fear. It's a possibility to prepare for. Our biggest enemy is ignorance and apathy. Kinda reminds me of someone. Yeah, if you say so. Good. I'd like to give you a rundown of what exactly Alzheimer's is, then. You interested? Well, you're gonna, even if I say no, right? <laughs> you bet I would. Now let's begin. Out of all the diseases that can cause dementia, Alzheimer's accounts for roughly 70% of cases. It's believed to be brought about by buildup of a protein called amyloid beta in the brain. When that happens, nerve cells start dying off and the brain begins to atrophy. So to put this in layman's terms, waste buildup kind of shrinks the brain. <laughs> That's one way to put it, yes. But even that is just a theory at this point. There's still much to learn about Alzheimer's. And when your brain shrinks? Your memory is impaired. Let me explain. There are three processes involved in memory. Encoding, storage, and retrieval. Alzheimer's impairs the first step, encoding. This makes it near impossible to remember new things. I'll give you an example that stuck with me. When doctors asked a dementia patient the date, they had no problem producing the correct answer. But when asked the year, the patient said 1952. Their mind was stuck decades in the past. You see, dementia not only inhibits new memories, but jumbles the ones you already have as well. Hmm. I think I understand. Good. So how exactly does 89 cure Alzheimer's? According to their research, when they injected 89 into the test mice, it brought about a process known as autophagy. Which is what? It's a Greek word that means self-devouring. That's what your body starts to do to its own proteins. In other words, all the amyloid beta built up in the mice's brains began to instantly break down. Instantly? Yes. And once it was all gone, 
their Alzheimer's stopped progressing entirely. The most shocking thing is that even brain cells which had lost function were able to recover. As one researcher put it, it's as though the brain turns on a backup generator. If they can bring about similar effects in humans, they'll have a cure for Alzheimer's. That's right. There are millions of patients worldwide, and that number is growing steadily every day. If they actually complete this drug, it could truly change the world as we know it. It's nothing short of a dream drug for both buyers and sellers. <laughs> if you ask me, it sounds too good to be true. Excuse me? I mean, the vice director of the ADDC suspected something fishy was going on with it. But when he started digging around, Someone offed him to keep their secret safe. Made it look like a brawl so nobody'd get suspicious. What kind of secret are we talking? Like the drug's effects being falsified. No, there's no chance of that. Huh? How do you know? Since the announcement of AD9, countless animal tests have proven successful. It's no fabrication. One test after another, they've proven its viability. And you're sure? Yes. I'm of the mind they should push forward faster, even if the paper was a little rough around the edges. After all, dementia drugs are being developed all around the world. It would be a shame if someone beat them to the punch, both for the ADDC and for Japan. Kido-san is far too cautious. This is no time to be testing on animals. They need to move to clinical trials and get this thing out. By which you mean... Experimenting on humans. Human experimentation. Wait. What's wrong? Oh, nothing. Just, are you absolutely sure there's nothing off about 89? I guess there is an interesting detail I noticed. Hmm? Kido-san is listed as the sole author of the 89 research. But in truth, he only put his name on the paper to lend it credibility. The key researcher was someone else entirely. A guy you know, too. Man by the name of Shono. So the one I want... It's Shono, huh? So you're saying... Shono's the creator of 89? Seems so. The paper would never have gained such worldwide traction without Kido-san, though. They needed a leading expert to rubber stamp the research and make it seem more official. That kind of thing is pretty common, though. Not really a cause for concern. Shono, what's your role in all of this? Yo, welcome back. Hey there, Yagami-san. The gang's all here, huh? How did things go with Hattori-san? Did you learn anything useful? Yeah, I guess. Wait, are you saying there isn't actually anything up with 89? That's what Hattori said, yeah. This is the first time I'm hearing about Kido not really being involved, though. It's possible Shono's hiding the truth from even him. Maybe. But first, one term in particular stuck with me from my chat with Hattori-san. Which is? Human experimentation. Go on. Apparently, 89 is just about ready to be tested on real human subjects. <laughs> Well, that's gross. Side effects include bloating, blindness, and death, right? Knock it off. Sorry, sorry. What's bothering you about that, Yagami-san? Well, it's just... I've just been thinking... What if all these murders were secretly experimental trials for 89? You're... you're serious? If Shono's the one behind all this, 
What? You think this guy Shono went out, hired an assassin, and started killing people? Guess it's a bit of a stretch, huh? Even if these people were test cases, why would Shono have to murder them? If this is a dementia drug, not some kind of chemical weapon. No, but what if it really did have some kind of crazy side effects, though? Like, they didn't want to kill the people, but they ended up dying anyways. It was perfectly fine when they tested it on mice, though. If it ended up killing someone, then... Wait a sec. Yeah, wait a sec is right. We're on the same page here. What if 89 was completely harmless to mice, but lethal when introduced into the human body? If that was the case, they'd need to perform a ton of experiments to make sure it was fixed. Which is why they killed all those Kyore guys. Back it up. If they're testing a drug, wouldn't they want to use it on an actual patient? I mean, it's not like those Kyore guys all had Alzheimer's or anything. That's true. Actually, it says here that they test new drugs on healthy humans as well. They're the control group to make sure the drug is safe. Yeah, eventually. It wouldn't make any damn sense for them to start on anyone but real patients, though. But... Just give it a rest. Try taking this seriously for once. We are taking this seriously. Says the dumbass kid who keeps spouting tinfoil hat shit about goddamn human experiments. <laughs> the only dumbass here is the guy who can't consider all the possible options. Oh, is that right? Next you're gonna tell me they experiment on old man Waku too. Fucking idiots. Hmm? What? That incident three years ago at the ADDC. The guy who died, Wakusan. Didn't he have Alzheimer's? Hey, I, I think you're onto something. Huh? Think about it, Kaito-san. Wakusan was an Alzheimer's patient at the center. We know for a fact that Okubo didn't kill him, but they never tracked the real murderer down. All right, cool your fucking jets. That happened three years ago. AD9 didn't even exist back then. True, it was only announced last year. But all the research that went into that paper would have reached way further back. Huh? Wait, are we really onto something? It's hard to say for sure, but it's worth looking into at the very least. Nine's really what killed Wakusan three years ago. The ADDC's finished. Shit would be the scandal of the century. I have a few more thoughts about this whole human experimentation theory. Mind if we continue? Sure. Let's do it. Okay, so, let's say Shono did experiment on Wakusan. Why would he do that? They normally do a lot more to ensure a drug is safe before it enters clinical trials. What was his motive for testing it then? Maybe he wanted to try his groundbreaking new drug on a real live human as soon as possible. If it worked, he'd have the cure. And he'd have it without dealing with all the red tape these things go through. It would have saved him years. That's possible. I guess Shono was surrounded by dementia patients. One little test wouldn't be a big deal, and if it succeeded, his drug would save the world. If it meant curing Alzheimer's sooner, he might have been okay accepting the risk. But instead of doing what it was meant to do, 89 had a horrible side effect. Death. The more I think about it, the more it feels like this is how it all went down. It's starting to make sense. But now, even though he knows the risks, he's still experimenting and using the mole to do it. I know this is all just a theory, but the pieces all seem to fit together. Going down that path, Yagami-san, that means Okubo really was innocent, yeah? 
but he murdered his girlfriend right after. I mean, that's why he's on death row. Quit it, Sugiura. We'll get to that later. Yeah. So, to summarize our theory so far. It all started three years ago when Shono accidentally killed a patient during an AD9 test. But those tests are still ongoing. That's why Hamura had all those Kyore guys killed. But wait, how would a guy like Shono get wrapped up with Yakuza and assassins? Your run-of-the-mill researcher wouldn't have the cash or connections for that shit. But what if someone close to him did? Someone Shono knows who's got Yakuza ties? The hell could that be? Ryusuke Kido, director of the ADDC. Oh, I see what you mean. Kido would have access to ADDC funding. There's even been talk of him having ties to the Yakuza somehow, right? I think you've cracked it, Yagami-san. It had to be Kido. Uh, I don't know if that's really true. Why? Think back to the AD9 press conference. You remember the look on Kido's face? He was so proud, innocent even. But if he knew about all this human experiment shit, no way he'd look like that. Kid's got a point. <clears throat> then maybe he was only told about the experiments after the conference took place. That would still make sense, right? Uh... First, Shono gets Kido to sign off on the 89 paper and publicly gives him all the credit. Thrilled about the possibilities, Kido proudly presents the research at that press conference. There's no turning back after that, even if he found out about the experiments. That's probably how Shono got Kido on his side. He then used Kido's funding and connections to bring in Hamura and the Mole. It feels like all the pieces are falling into place. Mm hmm That means... Kido's not actually the one in charge. Right. Shono is behind everything. Mm. Let's say you're right. When did Shono start using this guy? When was the Mole's first murder? Probably Hashiki's death six months ago. And why do you say that? Hashiki inching closer to the truth about 89 was a serious problem for Shono. But as we know, Shono was in a taxi at the time of the beating. Meaning someone else must have been responsible for Hashiki's death. The man in the black raincoat? He's the mole? Yeah. Only the best of the best assassins would have the skill to do what they did to Hashiki. Can't argue with that. Who knows how close Hashki was to finding out about the human experimentation before he died. Yeah, and if he had, that would have been the end of the line for Shono. Seems like a plausible motive to me. Mm. So what, everything just makes sense? I don't know. If you have something to say, say it. I mean, this is still just a theory, right? It all sounds almost too convenient. Hmm? What do you mean? If Shono killed Wakusan at the ADDC three years ago, then Okubo, the primary suspect in the case, would be totally in the clear. Yep. Already proved that in court, remember? But Okubo, he... He killed his girlfriend right after. He stabbed her over and over. Even set the place on fire. Reeked of booze, too, even though he was supposed to be dry. Defend him all you want, but the guy's a murderer. That's why the whole thing was such a big deal. Everyone realized the court made a mistake. It took the death of an innocent girl for them to realize that Okubo probably did it after all. Yet here you are. Claiming the court got it right. Claiming Okubo's innocent. But you just don't want to feel responsible for Emi Terasawa's death. That's it, isn't it? Enough, Sugiura. You're way out of line and you don't know shit. 
Look, I know I get swept up in my emotions pretty easily sometimes. All the same, I'm trying to be fair here. Are you? So if we want to treat Yagami-san's theory like it's the truth, then we'll have to figure out whether or not Okubo is innocent. If he actually killed Wakasan. And how are you suggesting we do that? It's simple. We just go to Okubo and ask if he did it. You want to talk to him face to face? Meeting with a death row inmate isn't that easy. A lawyer like you should have no problem setting that up, right? He can't stand me, though. From day one, Okubo insisted he was innocent, that he didn't kill Emmy. But I... I abandoned him. Told him he'd be better off just giving up. Fine. But that's a pretty weak excuse for not going to talk to him now. If you really want to pursue this case, you don't have a choice, Yagami-san. Well? Hoshinoku. Yes? Let's go talk to Okubo. Think you can arrange that for me? I can try. Let me get in touch with the prison. Thanks. I'll be at Gendis if you want to find me. Looking over the old case files. All right. Oh, Yagami. You need something? Mind if I look over a case file? The ADDC one from three years ago. I'm seeing Okubo soon. Huh? What do you mean you're seeing Okubo? Hold on. I'll go pull the documents up. Thanks, Sari-san. How's it going, Yagami-san? Oh, not bad. What do you have there? The files for Emi Terasawa's case. I thought they might be useful, too. Well, I... Yagami-san, I think you should look them over if you're going to talk to Okubo. If you really don't need them, just leave them here. I'll put everything back later. Emi Terasawa, 26 years old at time of death. December 2nd, 2015, about 11 p.m. Her body is found on the second floor of a burnt-out apartment building. 15 stab wounds to the chest, presumably inflicted while she was still alive. Cause of death? Blood loss. No ash in her lungs, so she didn't inhale any smoke. Emmy died before the fire started. Shinpei Okubo, the victim's boyfriend and roommate, was found at the scene and arrested. Murder weapon is thought to be a kitchen knife. It was covered in Okubo's prints. Okubo was wasted out of his mind when firefighters arrived at the apartment. Okubo-san is not a violent person. And he hasn't even had a drink in over six years. Not a single drop since the incident. But Okubo claims he doesn't remember ever drinking that he woke up surrounded by flames. He's pleaded innocence from day one. Yagami. Do you really have to do this? Go see Okubo, I mean. <sighs> yeah, looks like I do. But why? I need to know if he was really innocent. If he killed Wakusan three years ago. I'm going to find the truth, Kendo-sensei. What? In just one little prison chat? Well, either way, I never felt like I closed the book on this. I should have done this years ago. 
I mean, yeah, I defended him in court. But we didn't have anything definitive to prove his innocence. The only thing the ruling said was that they couldn't conclusively prove his guilt. Meaning for the public at large, he as good as did it. Okuba got laid off from his job and had his personal details smeared all over the internet. Yeah. The guy barely even went outside. Couldn't sleep at night without his pills. But I didn't ask him about any of that. Didn't really care either. Until one day, Okubo gave up his years of sobriety, started drinking, and stabbed his girlfriend to death. And what? You think that's your fault? I helped set a murderer loose on the world. In other words, Emmy died because of me. I'm not gonna let you do this to yourself. Do you remember your dad's last case? Must have been almost 20 years ago. Do you, Yagami? Yeah. No way I could forget. The defendant in that case raped and murdered a 15-year-old girl. At least that's what they said he did. Everyone in the damn country thought that guy deserved to get executed. No thoughts of innocence. Except from your dad. You know how it all went down after that. He gave the prosecution what for. Your dad never compromised his ideals, no matter what. He said a lawyer's job isn't discovering the truth, or even knowing it. It's proving the prosecution doesn't have enough evidence to convict. Do you understand? That's how he saw the defense's role. Take some real guts to say that. That's why you looked up to him. And you would have never become an attorney without his influence. In the beginning, sure I did. But you know, a lot happened afterward with my dad and with me too. Yeah. It's possible the defendant actually was guilty. Raped the girl, killed her in cold blood. He disappeared almost immediately after the trial. And so, all of the hatred, all of the anger people felt, was thrown onto my dad. Not long after, he and my mom were killed by the victim's father. Even so, I don't think your old man did anything wrong. Our job's showing that the prosecution doesn't have enough evidence, not finding the truth. And when you defended Okubo the first time around, that's exactly what you did. Listen to me, Yagami. You didn't do anything wrong. Sure, I get what you're saying. But a girl burned to death because I was good at my job. Ever think about how that feels? What? It's easy to sit back and tell me I did nothing wrong, but put yourself in my shoes. Could you say you did the right thing? That's enough! How long are you gonna let this dominate your life? For as long as I live. Yagami speaking. Hey, it's Hoshino. I've arranged our chat with Okubo. Meet me at the taxi stand on West Shichifuku Street. I'm on my way there now. Got it. Thanks. I appreciate the concern. I've said all I wanted to say. It's fine. I half knew you weren't gonna listen anyway. Genda Sensei. Hmm? You and I both saw what happens when you don't pursue the truth. I can't let that go. I won't.
Over here, Yagami-san. We're finally going to see Okubo. Go ahead and get in, Yagami-san. Long time no see. Yagami Sensei. Yeah. It's been a while. I apologize. I've been alone all this time. Talking is... Don't worry. We're not in a rush here. You look so different. Yeah. I haven't been back in the courtroom since the last day of our case. Meaning you're not a lawyer? Not quite. I'm a detective. In Kamurocho. Pays the pills, you know. And that's all my fault? Hey. <sighs> Sorry. This isn't what I came here to talk about today. <clears throat> Three years ago, at the ADDC. Did you... Did you actually murder Wakusan or not? What? Yagami, I... I don't understand. You know I'm innocent. I didn't murder Wakusan. Or Emi-chan. Why won't you listen to me? I told you time and time again, I didn't kill anyone! Why won't people just believe me? <laughs> the prosecution had more than enough evidence to convict you for Emmy's murder. It was an open and shut case. There was nothing we could do. Of course not. How am I gonna win when my own lawyer doesn't believe I'm innocent? Don't think I couldn't tell. Every time you went up there and tried to clear my name, you looked like you were gonna puke. So, um, Okubo-san, you really didn't do it either time? <sighs> That's what I've been saying all along. My name is Hoshino from the Genda Law Office. If you don't mind, we have a theory about the ADDC incident you were on trial for. I do mind. It doesn't have anything to do with me. But don't you want to know who really killed Wakusan? <laughs> it was an ADDC researcher by the name of Yoji Shono. I remember him. But you're saying he did it? Why, though? Here, let me explain. Wakusan's death was an 89-related accident. That's our theory, at least. The drug must have killed him on the spot. Shono panicked, searching for a place to hide the body. Which led him to my truck, huh? Yeah. It must have been the only option he could think of. Things may have turned out differently had you actually reported finding Wakusan's body. But as we both know, that's not what happened. So all this was because I buried the body? It was a better stroke of luck than Shono could have ever asked for. After all, the cops never even suspected him. God damn it! I don't know what the hell I was thinking back then. It all happened so fast. I opened the truck, and the body was there. Naturally, I panicked. The police never would have believed I didn't kill the guy. Of course not. Why would they? I already had a criminal record, too. I was a fool. 
Okubo. So you really were innocent after all, huh? Do you even need to ask? I guess not. Thank you. Yagami-san? Yagami-sensei! What about Emmy? Aren't you gonna ask me about her? I told you before, I never would have killed her! I... I want to believe you. I really do. But I already did everything I could. I searched non-stop for some kind of hint. But a guy can only spend so long poring over burnt scraps of evidence. After three years, I'm not holding out much hope. So... Guess the real killer is still out there. Just biding his time, waiting for my execution. How are you and I gonna face Emmy in the afterlife? Come on, man! Tell me how! Yagami-san. What's up? I think I'm gonna head back to Genda's. What are you up to tonight? Not sure yet. I think maybe I'll swing by Tender. <laughs> I could use a drink. Yagami-san. I'll be alright. Later, Hoshino-kun. So, I hear you're defending Ayabe. Kuroiwa. Well, I had to come congratulate you myself on your triumphant return to the courtroom. I'm not gonna be the one defending him. Just helping with the investigation. Wasn't Shintani-sensei your mentor? You're helping to free the man who murdered him. <laughs> Are you confused or just desperate for a few scraps off the table? But it wouldn't be the first murderer you've set loose in our city. Not a good look. Aibe didn't kill Shintani. His gun begs to differ. The rifling matches the marks on the bullet. Yeah, that's how the real killer framed him for it. If you seriously can't see that, then I'm not the confused one here. Say what you will. Um, hello? You need something? More or less. Doesn't look like you're here to talk. That's right. Your little detective game's over, Yagami. Yagami-san! Hoshinoku, stay back! Huh? This guy's dangerous. Uh, I can see that.
Yagami-san, are you okay? I'm fine. But that guy... wasn't messing around. What do you mean? He would have killed me for sure if I let him. Maybe one of Hamura's men? What's up, Doc? How'd your chat with Okubo go? Listen, someone just tried to murder me. Probably sent by Hamura. What? Watch your back, Kaito-san. Where are you now? Right by the office. Got Sugiura with me, too. Don't go back there. Not now. Hmm. All right. I got a place. Oh, yeah? KJ Art, the Kyore HQ. Hamura ain't gonna touch us there. Wait, you're gonna go there after we beat the crap out of Shioya and his whole crew in that club? You think they'll just let us hang out? Of course I do. We've got Kajihiro on our side. We'll go on ahead. Get your ass over there quick, yeah? Sounds like we're meeting at KJ Art. I heard. Well, let's go. This is the Kyore clan headquarters, right? Last I checked. Oh, this is gonna shave some years off my life. I'm nervous too. Yagami-san. Who's your little buddy? I'm, uh, Hoshino, sir. From the Genda Law Office. Uh-huh. Well, Kaito-san's already here. Sorry to say Shuya's out of the office, but Marase will be glad to entertain you. Come on in. If it isn't Yagami Sensei. Come in. Come in. Huh? Sorry about how rude we've been to you till now. German Kajihiras told us to do whatever you say. Listen to this talk. I asked for a massage and he actually gave me one. I had you all wrong, Murase. You're just a big teddy bear. Don't get too carried away, Kaito-san. Maybe I'll see if Shioya will massage me next. Um, I'm gonna say that's probably a bad idea. Anyway, go on and take a load off. Hmm, so Okubo really didn't kill Waku-san all those years ago. If his reaction's anything to go by... He might not have even killed his girlfriend. At least, that's how it looked to me. Huh? I'd rather not go there right now. I've been wondering... Yagami-sensei. Who is that guy? You curious? Can't blame a guy for asking, can you? Well, apparently he's afraid of Yakuza. Better to just leave him alone. Hmm. Huh. Well, okay then. So, Shono's looking more suspicious every day. About time for a good old face-to-face. -face. Judging from our last visit, we won't be able to get an appointment. With Shono or Kido. And we won't make an appointment. All we do is wait in the lobby, then ambush Shono when he comes out. A stakeout, huh? That's my kind of job. Actually, you're gonna be staying back. Huh? I mean, they'd catch on in a heartbeat if they saw a tough guy like you standing around. And Hoshino-kun, 
You should go back to Genda's. Okay, but... All right then, sounds like I'm tagging along. Yeah, let's go. Man, this place is fucking huge. Keep it close to your chest, Sugira. We're supposed to blend in, remember? Now let's settle down and wait for Shono. But what if you already went home? Come on, let's ask somebody. I don't want to sit here all night if he's never coming out. Good point. We going? Excuse me, do you mind if I ask you something? Yes? Is Shono-san from the 89 team still here? Oh, uh, most likely. He's always one of the last researchers to leave. Do you have an appointment with him, sir? Not exactly, no. Oh, Yagami-san, good evening. Oh, you're... Hashimoto. I showed you to Shono's lab the other day. Oh, right. Good to see you. Do you need something more from him? Well... Yagami-san, there he is. It's Shono. Uh, gotta run. Where is he? Over there, by the stairs. We going? What the... Suspicious. Hey. What the? Found him. Looks like he's talking to Kido. What do we do? <laughs> okay, let's move in. Well, if it isn't Yagami-san, Kamurocho's finest private eye. You again. This had better be the last time I see you in this center. Are you aware that I filed a complaint with the Bar Association about you? Aren't you the Vice Minister of Health? 
My name is Ichi Nose. Yeah, I remember you from the other day. Looks like you come here often. Of course. The success of AD9 is a matter of national importance. As such, there are a great many discussions that need to be had. Patents, legislation, alike. Now I suggest you leave before I call the guards to escort you out. <sighs> so much for the plan. Shono's gonna be on red alert after that. Doubt he'll be coming down through the lobby now. What do we do? We going? Shimoto-san, sorry for running off earlier. It's all right. I, um, saw what happened. Dr. Shono slipped away from you, huh? Yeah. We just wanted to talk, too. Hmm. He has been especially busy lately. Lately, he only goes home once every three days or so. Even so, he makes his morning rounds at the hospital every single day without fail. I can't overstate how much respect I have for him. What do you mean, rounds? It's a little custom of his. He takes a walk around the hospital every morning. Been doing it for years. Right. He did the same three years ago. Passion like his is what's going to make or break our research. And with that, I should be going. Sorry to be so curt. It's fine. Goodbye, then. Security on Shono's lab's airtight. Can't get in without a special gold key card. But that's not the case for the hospital wing. Meaning we have some time to kill until Shono's rounds. Wait, you want to chill till the morning and ambush him in the hospital? Yeah, just have to sneak in between now and then. Guess the next question is, where do we get in? Let's check the map. Suspicious. What the? Suspicious. The research wing where Shono's lab is. Can't sneak in with all that security. Why don't we just steal a key card then? One of them gold ones. No need to get violent. Most of those researchers are innocent. We should just sneak into the hospital and wait until morning for Shono. Uh huh? Hmm? What the? That's Director Kido's office. There's nothing we need up there. Hmm? Suspicious. Hey, this is the garage for the hospital. The service entrance, that is. Anyone who makes deliveries parks down here. <laughs> this could work. Hmm? Suspicious. Hmm? Security gate. The research wing is just past here. Guess we're sneaking in through the garage, huh? Yeah. Come on, let's head outside. We should go scope the place out. Let's go, Yakuni-san. Can I help you? Are you from the Yagami Detective Agency? That's right. I'm the head of security here. The name's Mashiko. The Vice Minister has instructed me to see you two out. Ichinose-san did? You blind or something? We're already leaving. I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have to escort you the rest of the way. That's a lot of guys for an escort. Hey, where the hell are you taking us? Answer me, asshole. This should be fine. 
Mashiko-san, yeah? What exactly did Ichinose tell you to do? Make sure you never show your face here again. The fuck? That doesn't look like standard issue guard equipment. <laughs> That's cause it's not. This is more of a, uh, personal effect. Oh, let me guess. You're off the clock. <laughs> you bet. I'm on break. And I'm ready to blow off some steam. Now fight me! Come on, do you have to keep waving? What do you mean? They're the only reason we got in so easy. True, though ultimately we have the Vice Minister to thank for that. So? How's it look? Any different from three years ago? Not even a little bit. Let's go, Yagami-san. You're not going in? And lose my perfectly good smoking spot? We'll be fine here for now. Just gotta wait for dawn. <sighs> Yagami-san, have you decided how you're gonna approach Shono? We'll just have to confront him head-on. Where we go from there depends on his response. You don't want to negotiate with him? I doubt we have the time for that. After all, this is probably the only chance we'll get to talk to Shono before Ayabe's trial. Guess so, huh? Meaning, we don't have time to waste on negotiation. Gotcha. Speaking of Shono, I actually had an idea. What's that? Well, the murder at the ADDC three years ago. The thought is that Shono framed Okubo for that and got away with it, right? Mm-hmm. But you defended Okubo, and won. Wouldn't the cops have started looking for the real killer once they realized Okubo wasn't their guy? I'm sure they did. But, it wasn't long until Okubo killed again. They didn't have much reason to keep searching, I would imagine. Exactly. Everyone pegged him as the murderer. Makes sense they'd think he's the one responsible for Wakasan, too. But, don't you think that's kind of convenient? For one person in particular, I mean. Huh? The guy who's doing human experiments at the ADDC. Shona. Your point? Basically, I think he killed Emi Terasawa and pinned the blame on Okubo. With all he had to lose, don't you think Shono had a motive? I guess, but... I know you're right. Emi-chan would have been a threat. But could he really do it? How long have you been thinking this? Since you told me what a mess Okubo is now. It was just a feeling. Honestly, I wanted to believe he didn't kill her. But I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Emi-chan was such a good person. I wasn't gonna let it slide. Not after what Okubo-kun did to her. But after all this time, it turns out, Shono is the real killer? Nothing's for sure without evidence. This is all just unfounded speculation. But doesn't it make you want to talk to Shono even more? Yeah. I've never been this ready for morning.
are you two here? Dr. Shono, what is it? How did you get in here? I just want to ask you a few questions, Dr. Shono. Well, I don't have anything I can say to you. Apologies. I need you to handle this. I have to go. Where are you going? This won't take long. Sorry. I can't let you go any further. Call security. Shono! <laughs> Let's go, Yagami-san. We can't let him get away. It's our only chance. Funny that we'd end up here, of all places. This is the room, right? Where Wakusan was staying? The man who died after you used him as a test subject for 89. Why'd you do it, Shono? For the glory? Thought nobody'd notice one missing dementia patient? What are you talking about? Get out of here! This is trespassing! Huh. <laughs> You sure you want us to go? Uh, huh? I thought you'd be a little more curious about how much of your secret I really know. I, I don't know what you're talking about. You're the one backing the mole. Isn't that right? Huh? How dare you accuse me of... That's not all I know. Hamura's the middleman. You pretty satisfied with his work? I won't stand for this baseless slander. What proof do you have? <laughs> you just made a big mistake, Shono-san. Huh? You've been working non-stop on this new drug, right? No way the street slang about a murderer would have reached your ears. You were supposed to ask what the mole is. Uh, what is the mole? There's a good boy. The serial killer who's been gouging people's eyes out. It all started three years ago, right here in the center. <sighs> you performed an 89 experiment on Wakusan while he was asleep, probably late at night. And when he died, you did the only thing you could, snuck him out. <sighs> I'm sure Wakusan's death came as a complete shock to you. But you didn't have time to panic. You needed to hide the body, fast. So you used the laundry cart to transport it without raising suspicion. You just needed to get it as far away as possible. Then, just before 8 a.m., Shinpei Okubo arrived at the hospital to gather the linens. That was your chance. You waited for an opening, hid the body in his truck. That wouldn't solve anything, though. Okubo would find Wakusan, and of course call the cops. Naturally, they'd then search for whoever stashed the body there. 
But you didn't have any other choice, did you? You had to take the risk. And somehow, it paid off. Turned out, Shinpei Okubo had a criminal record and was worried the police would suspect he murdered Wakusan. So, he didn't report it. Instead, choosing to bury the body deep in the Okutama Mountains. You were probably thrilled with Okubo. I mean, it's practically a miracle someone else stepped up and took the blame for you, wouldn't you say? I don't know what you're talking about. But then another miracle happened. One not so convenient for you. Okubo walked. And if he was innocent, that would mean someone else killed Wakusan. They might have even come after you if you didn't do anything. Which is when you sold your soul to the devil. What do you mean by that? Don't play dumb with me. You know all too damn well what I'm talking about. You needed to frame Okubo. And you murdered someone in cold blood to do it. Murder? Who are you accusing me of killing? Emi Terasawa, a co-worker of yours, and Okubo's girlfriend. Oh. You forced your way into their apartment and murdered Emi. According to the autopsy report, she was stabbed at least 15 times. I didn't. Did she tell you Okubo-kun had been taking pills to help him sleep at night? Conveniently enough, he didn't wake up while you were murdering his girlfriend. Him smelling like booze was probably your doing too. Let me guess, you injected him with alcohol? That'd raise his BAC no problem. And sure, he could have died if you messed up, but that wouldn't have mattered. As long as you could chalk up Emmy's murder to a drunk, suicidal Okubo-kun. <sighs> and once you made sure you could pin the blame on Okubo, you set fire to the whole apartment. What evidence do you have to- Don't worry. I can't prove it yet. But I'm damn near positive I'm on the right track. I can see it in your eyes. Look. I know what you're thinking. 89 will save countless people. Meaning there's no way you're not doing the right thing. Well, I'm sorry to break it to you, Shono. But that's just not true. You know, when someone thinks they're in the right, that's when the real cruelty in people starts to come out. So what do you say, Shono? Are you really right? <laughs> Just what is going on in here, damn it? Oh, hey. We were just heading out. Why, you. And by the way, so sorry to hear about 89. <sighs> Maybe you, uh, need a few more humans to test it on? <gasps> <laughs> Don't worry. Shono san here didn't tell us a damn thing. But hey, I'm going to find out the truth, even if it's the last thing I do. Whoops. My foot slipped. How clumsy of me. That hurt, huh? 
I asked you if it hurt. <laughs> Please! I didn't kill her! You have to believe me! Oh, crying's not gonna help you now, kid. Just like it didn't help Emi Terasawa. You still stuck in the fucking stomach! Didn't you, you little shit? Look, Okubo, I don't want to go getting your hopes up just yet, but just listen. I was going to say, I believe you. You didn't kill her. I can see that now. It'll all work out. I'm going to avenge Emi-chan. And I swear I'm gonna get you out of here. I promise. Sorry, I... I should have said that to you a lot sooner. What was I doing? These three years... I didn't do a damn thing to help you. So, will you give me another chance? Of course I will. Of course. Thank you so much. Three years ago, a dementia patient at the ADDC was murdered. Even now, Shinpei Okubo, the man convicted of the crime, pleads innocence. But Yagami's theory that this chain of events was set in motion by human experimentation for AD9 unveils the true culprit behind Emi Terasawa's death. Um, I'm gonna go discuss a few things with Ayabe-san. Yagami joining you? No, I'm going alone. Yagami-san, well, he may be keeping his distance for a while. He thinks the mole might target him, so he doesn't want to get us involved. You should watch your back too, Genda-sensei. Ah, yeah. Been a while since he's been this distant. <sighs> Knowing Yagami-san, he'll want to solve every single incident related to AD-9. And if he does, Maybe he can prove that Ayabe-san and Okubo-kun are innocent. Clearing Shinpei Okubo's name this late on? Yagami'd be a damn hero. I think he might enjoy that. Yeah, hero is hardly a big enough word. A legend is more like it. Don't get ahead of yourself, kid. The bugs in the Matsugane office are still working, just like I said they'd be. Good. Can you hear anything? Just small talk. Sounds like there are a ton of people in there. 
Hamura too? Doubt it. Everyone be on edge with him in the house. No chance of small talk. But Hamura's still gonna get in touch with him, right? Hmm... maybe. What do you mean, maybe? You're the one who said he'd be calling him. You don't gotta lose your shit over it. <sighs> Where the hell is he? Guess all we can do now is sit here and wait till somebody spills the beans. Can you at least put that shit out? You're stinking up the whole van. <sighs> Fair enough. Oops, bad habit. Sorry, but you're just gonna have to deal. Anyway, you're serious about capturing Hamura, yeah? Yeah. He's our only chance of finding the mole. We don't get Hamura, we lose. Ayabe and Okubo are done for. I'm hearing you, but sitting crammed in this damn car ain't gonna help us nab him. Luckily, I have just the thing. We'll spy on them from the sky. Hmm. <laughs> Is that Higashi? Yup. Guy really thinks he's hot shit, huh? <laughs> Guess he's moving up in the world. Maybe with Hamura gone, he's been able to relax a little. Hmm? He's leaving. I'm gonna follow him. Better to split up than I'll sit around in one place. I'll come with. My legs are getting sore as shit in here. So what? I'm stuck here by myself? I'll switch with you later. Promise.
I saw him, though. Talk. You sure we can be out like this? Good point. Shono could be sending his assassin after us as we speak. <laughs> we could get attacked at any time. <laughs> Thought so.
Where the hell's Higashi going? No clue, but he's alone now. We could just walk up to him and ask. You really think he's gonna listen to us? Haven't talked to him since our fight at that restaurant. Worst thing that happens is he says no. <laughs> Guess you got a point there. All right, let's give it a shot. What the? He's bolting! Why? You won't get away! What? You done running? I wasn't running away. <laughs> Not from you, anyway. Huh? I just couldn't let the family see us talking. You get it? <laughs> so then you'll hear us out? <laughs> Higashi! You, you fucking... He's not gonna run anymore. Just take it easy, Kaifus Hamura. Huh? <laughs> okay, look. Captain Hamura is throwing everything he's got into catching the two of you. Whole family's got orders to let him know if you ever cross our path. Meaning, if you called him now, he'd come straight to us. And then what, huh? He wants you dead. You know that, right? Just tell me where he is. Nobody's told me. Honest. Listen, I'm not gonna rat about seeing you here. But if I were you, I'd consider getting out of town real fast. Bet Matsugani-san would agree with me, too. You know... That wasn't as bad as I was expecting. Should we take him up on that offer? Skip town, wait till it all blows over? Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> Just joking. Anyway, it sounds like Hamra's got men looking for us. And they're out for blood. So what? What do you mean, so what? If they want to find us so bad, let them find us. Anyone who comes our way is in for a world of hurt. And once we capture him, we can force him to tell us where Hamura is. How are you so confident? They might kill us before we get a chance to fight. Maybe even gouge our eyes out. Then what? You want to just sit in the car with Sugiura in the non-smoking section? <laughs> yeah. That doesn't sound so good either. Damn right it doesn't. Now go walk around a bit. I'll be watching from behind. If you say so. Oh, and try and make yourself look like an easy target. And how exactly am I gonna do that? Beats me. I'm sure you could think of something. Yo, talk. Can you hear me? Yep. Just go wherever and try to look vulnerable. 
I've got your back. Nice going, Tog. You look weak as shit out there. You're like a baby sheep or something. How are you even doing that? Can you not? This is how I always walk. <laughs> sorry, sorry. And don't worry, you're in the clear for now. I hope you're watching. I am, I am. We don't know what's gonna happen next, though. You might want to grab a bite while you still can. Thanks for the heads up. Yo, talk. Can you hear me? What's up, Kaito-san? Those Matsugane assholes ain't biting. You might want to try looking even weaker. And how am I going to do that? Hmm. Maybe if you tried getting drunk? <laughs> Not a bad idea. Guess I'll stop by Tender then. Talk. Sure. Hey. Sure. Hmm. <laughs> Talk. Hmm. Uh huh. Suspicious. Hey.
took your sweet time in there. Did you forget the mission talk? Huh? You're supposed to be luring out Hamura's goons, not drinking with the fucking locals. Seriously? You're the one who told me to get drunk. Guess I did, huh? I'm sick of waiting, though. How about we just go bust into the Matsugane office? Think about how many guys they've got. We'd be fools to charge in there. Then... Oh, I got it. Uh-huh. Try going to one of the Matsugane clubs. And that'll help how? You just show up and tell them Yagami's here. Word will probably make it up to Hamura in no time. You know, that might actually work. Just point me to a club and we'll go from there. Let me see. Why don't you try Alvin over on Tenkaichi Street? All right, I'll head over now. Huh? What's going on? Didn't you hear what we said last week? I want a fucking answer today! Please, it's not exactly possible right now. It better be fucking possible! With how fast your management costs are rising, of course your protection's gonna cost more! No! Tuck, those thugs are Matsugane. No doubt about it. Agreed. Maybe you should, uh, help or something. That guy looks like he could use a hand. You could at least try to sound interested. Just hurry up and get it over with. I think you've had enough fun for one day. Huh? The fuck? Wait, that's Yagami. The hell are you doing here? My question first. Why are you threatening the civilian? None of your fucking business! Ugh, watch the volume. Or is yelling the only thing a dumb guy like you can do? Oh, that must be why you're bottom of the ladder. It all makes sense now. You little... I'll slaughter you! Listen up. <laughs> Go tell your precious Captain Hamura that Yagami was here. Got that? <laughs> Captain Hamura? Just do it. You know, Tok, this strategy's pretty solid, huh? Well, we'll find out soon enough. You know any other Matsugane joints, Kaito-san? We should hit a few just to be safe. Huh. There's Romance of the Three Kingdoms over on Pink Street. Fantastic Romance on West Shichifuku. And, uh, oh, Sweet Billow on East Shichifuku. All right, I'll try all of them. So, this is Romance of the Three Kingdoms? How about stopping in for a round, pal? We got the finest girls to satisfy any kink. Do you work here? Yeah, just come on in, buddy. I'll give you a great deal. This is a Matsugane place, right? Huh? What are you... I, uh... I don't want any trouble, man. It's not like that. Just tell your boss Yagami to stop by. Uh, I'm not sure I follow. Just do it, okay? I gotta go. So, this is Sweet Billow, huh? Meaning the guy puffing away over there is probably an employee. Why don't you quit standing around and go find out? Someone's bossy today. Just do it, Talk. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you work here? I do. Why? Let me ask you something. This is a Matsugane establishment, right? Who are you? The name's Yagami. Don't worry, I won't stick around much longer. Just tell your boss I dropped by to say hello. And why is that? Look, just tell him, okay? I gotta run. So this place is fantastic romance. Huh? It's good to see you, gentlemen. Don't good to see you, me. You're late on your payment and you know it. I'm sorry, sir. Our sales haven't been the best this month. And work on your pitch. Just being open's not enough to bring in customers. Looks like you're right on time, Talk. Go on, introduce yourself. Yeah, sure. 
Excuse me. Are you guys open? Welcome, sir. We... What the... Yagami! Oh, are you from the Matsugane family? It's good to see you. Who the fuck do you think you are, strolling up on us like it's no big deal? I want to see Captain Hamura. Know where he is? You little shit. Who do you think you're talking to? You're never meeting Hamura. Cause you're gonna die right here! <sighs> Satisfied? <sighs> Damn it! If you know what's good for you, you'll report this to your family. I'm out of here. Yo, Kaito. That was freaking amazing talk. Yeah, you think? Yep, absolute perfection. Hummer will have guys on your ass in no time. Just keep walking around town. Won't be long till they jump you. Got it. Yo, talk. Why don't you head somewhere with less people hanging around? Those Matsugane assholes aren't dumb enough to jump you with so many witnesses in sight. Where'd you have in mind? I was thinking the Champion District. The streets are so narrow there, they'll be more than happy to ambush you. Well, that's a scary thought, but okay. I'll head over now. Kaita-san. I swear it's like... Like I can feel someone watching me. Are you there? Uh, I could use a hand here. I'm right behind you, buddy. Kaito-san. Come on, man. Why would you bring more? Get after him, Tark! Make him cough up all he knows about Hamura! Got it! Hold up! You're out of options. Hey, I got him. Okay, I know you work for Hamura. I want to know where he is. When he finds you, you're dead. Yagami. Is that so? What the... You should really see the look on your face right now, Kaito. Hamura. He 
Kashi. Matsukane-san? I gave you every chance to walk away from this. You just couldn't mind your own business, could you? And now you're gonna die for it. You pushed this one too far. Hamura. <laughs> Killing you is gonna feel real good. Is this really necessary? Don't make this harder than it needs to be, okay? Don't you think I've pulled enough of the family's weight already? Please don't. I don't care how much like sons these two are to you. Your loyalty is to the Matsugane family first. Besides, you know there's no other way. Are you out of your fucking mind? You need to lower the gun right now! No, Kaito! You shut your goddamn mouth! <laughs> Kaito! Yagami-san! Kaido-san! No, don't! We have to get out of here! Shit! Stop, you fuck! Stop right there! I think we lost them. What about Kaito-san? Hamura shot him in the stomach. So we'd have to carry him out. After that, I don't know. Damn it. We gotta go after him. Hold on. How'd you know where we were? I was sitting in the van listening in on the Matsugane office. They all rolled out, so I followed. Do you know where Hamura's hold up then? Maybe they dropped a hint while you were listening. Hmm. I did hear them mention the Soleil building once or twice. You think that's where they took Kaito-san? Can't say for sure. He could be anywhere, really. But it's worth looking into. It sounded like Soleil's been abandoned for a while. We can second-guess ourselves later, then. Let's get moving. Sounds good. That's it. The Soleil building. Hold on. I recognize those guys out front. They're Matsugane for sure. Does that mean Kaito-san's actually in there? Hard to tell from out here. Looks like they're guards down, though. Guess we've just gotta bust in, then. The sooner the better. You ready, Yagami-san? Yeah. Hey, that's... Yagami. You got balls showing up around here. Hamura. Surprised you decided to stick around. Not gonna try to run? Go fuck yourself, Doc. Let him go right now. Ha. <sighs> what makes you think you have the upper hand here? Kaito-san. <laughs> hey. He sounds worried. <laughs> oh, oh. You piece of shit! You asked for it. This 
this time, let's finish it for real, asshole. That all? Just need a minute, Kaito-san. Sure, what's the rush? This what you want? I'm gonna fucking kill you! Is it over, Yagami-san? <sighs> yeah. Glad you're okay. Come give me a hand. How do you feel, Kaito-san? <sighs> what, me? It was just a scratch. I'm good on my own. No. Still acting tough with lead in your stomach? Who are you trying to impress? Yo, let me jump in too. Higashi. Matsugani-san too. My van's right outside. You two get him to a doctor. There's something I still need to do here. Got it. Guess I'm joining your little party. Not even the threat of death can stop you guys. <laughs> Took you long enough. <coughs> hey. It's about time you give us some answers. I'm done wasting time on you, so just cooperate and it'll all be fine. <coughs> what, your murderer friend abandon you? Not much use if he won't come when you need help. Boss, listen. Things are gonna get ugly if I die here. Neither of you will survive the aftermath. It's not too late to put a stop to this. Just end this fucker and be done with it. And if I don't, the mole will kill us both. Is that what you're saying? Look, some people you can get away with betraying. And some people you can't. And which am I, I wonder? Boss. Pick your poison, Hamra. You die betraying the mole, or you die defending him. <gasps> We're going to bring this murderer to justice. Now tell me where I can find him, and his identity. Answer me! I'd rather die. What? Don't play dumb with me. You think I'm gonna talk that easy? Pull the fucking trigger! If you say so. Huh. Didn't think you'd really stand your ground. We can't stay here. Who knows when his backup might arrive? Are the Matsugani still after us? Most likely. Embarrassing as that is to admit. Well, guess we gotta figure out how to make you talk. Huh? Luckily, I've got a place in mind. You heard of the Honmaruen Cabaret? It's a Kyore stronghold. What? I'm sure your former prey will be thrilled to see you. If they can't break you, I don't know what can. I doubt you'll last, though. It'll be damn interesting either way. Now come on, let's go. Here he is, the man of the hour. Glad you could make it, Amara. 
And you must be Patriarch Matsugane. It's a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> Though if you ask me, Dojo leadership should be better at keeping their dogs chained up. Agreed. There is no excuse for how I acted. Shioya-san, we're gonna make Hamura tell us who the Mole is. Think you can keep us safe till then? <laughs> maybe. Maybe not. This is what Chairman Kajihiro wants. You don't want to disobey his orders, do you? Well, that's rude. I still haven't paid you back for what you did to me. If you don't mind, I'd like to settle that first. For what I did? You're the one who kidnapped Mafuyu. If you ask me, you got what was coming to you. Hmm. <laughs> Fine. Under one condition. What? Once you're done with him, you give Hamura to us. <laughs> Gladly. What, no witty comeback? I think that's a first for you. Shut it! AD9's dark human experiments. The mole who facilitated them. As Yagami gets closer to the truth, the trap is sprung. Details come at the cost of Kaito's blood. And each word that Hamura, the Matsugane family captain, speaks pulls back the veil a little further. Get your fucking hands off me! <laughs> this is as good a spot as any. You need any... instruments. You just ask me. Hopefully, it doesn't come to that. Now, I think it's about time we got some answers. And you're gonna give them to us. Should we take it from the top? First off, the one in control of all this is Shono, the 89 researcher. How long have you been working for him? Murdering for him? I already have a pretty good idea. How about I guess? <laughs> the first time you used the mole was... for Hashiki, the vice director of the ADDC. He got beat to death six months ago, as you well know. <laughs> Hashiki had a secret deal with Chairman Kajihira. Together, they were gonna poke holes in this 89 business to bring the ADDC to its knees. But Shono, the researcher in charge of the drug, had a big secret he needed to keep hidden. Hashiki's little investigation posed a big problem. That is, until he got beaten down in the back streets of Kamurocho. Hashiki was fatally wounded by the mole, but survived for another three weeks. That kept suspicion off Shono, and left practically no evidence. Only the most skilled killer could pull something like that off. In other words, the assassin you and Shono have been using. <laughs> Think you struck a nerve. You're a real crack detective, Yagami. You know, I personally funded his time at law school. He never would have passed the bar without me. No shit. I'd say you made a good investment. Paying off in spades. Uh, do you mind? I'm kinda in the middle of something here. Sorry. Sorry. So, where's your friend? No clue. But he'll be here soon enough. All three of you are dead where you stand. 
He says the mole's on his way here. Oh, is he now? I'd love to have a chat with the lad. Keep dreaming, pal. He'd wipe the floor with your backcountry ass. Enough, Hamra. Tell us who the mole is and how you started working with him. Have those instruments handy? Coming right up. All right, all right, I'll talk. That's almost a shame. I like when it's tool time. Now, who is the mole? At first, he was just an informant feeding off the chaos that breeds in Camarocho like flies. An informant? Yep, and he was trained by one of the best in the business. Rose to prominence after the cops busted his mentor. And that made the mole the top guy in the biz. One of those situations where the student surpassed the master. Nobody could beat his intel. Could get his hands on anything you needed to. Guns, forged documents, you name it. Before long, we'd formed a nice little partnership. Started making a name for ourselves. Thinking about it, it's been about 20 years now. And? Keep talking, or it's tools. Once I got the gig as captain of the Matsugane family, I started relying on them even more. Let me tell you, the guy could dispose of a corpse like it was the easiest damn thing in the world. He had nerves of steel. And he's never even sworn up. Flash forward to a couple years ago, he said he was ready to start doing hits. That's when my... <laughs> big chance finally came. Honestly, I wasn't that big on the whole murder thing. But the dangerous shit's what really brings in the cash. So, I started touting his services around the darker side of Kamarocho. <laughs> Felt like I added a new dish to my menu. This is no time for jokes, you fool. What, you don't approve of my methods? This city will swallow you whole if you don't got the cash. And protecting the family name doesn't come cheap. <sighs> you think Kaido could have toughed it out with all his swagger? We'd have vanished by now. But with enough money, who knows? We could have rode it to the top of the Tojo clan. Wasn't that always part of the dream, boss? It was, yes. But not anymore. Uh, that's so. <laughs> that's funny. Because I spent my entire life chasing that dream for you. The goal you fucking told me to strive for! Let's get back on topic, shall we? Tell me this. You started shopping the mole services around. What then? What happened? <sighs> Wasn't long till we got our first hit. Our mark was Hoshki, Vice Director of the ADDC. And Shono's the one who hired you? So I heard. He always contacted me through someone else. Guy by the name of Ishimatsu. Short little guy. Always had this creepy fucking smile on his face. At the time, we all thought this was gonna be a one-off. Didn't do much prying, you know. Never even knew why they wanted the guy dead. We just took the 10 mil and did what we were asked. They wanted him to die discreetly though, right? Pretty much. So he did. Ishimatsu took a real shine to us after that. A few months later, he was back with another job. And that was? Well, gathering test subjects for their 89 experiments. 
and disposing of the bodies. So, you just want me to abduct these Curie guys? You don't want them dead? That is correct. And your reward... is a hundred million yen... each. <laughs> Real funny. Last time it was ten for a hit job. Why give us so much more to kidnap a few guys? <laughs> Funny you should ask that. It could very well end up being more than just a few guys. We're not quite sure how many we might want. Perhaps just one. Or maybe even ten might not be satisfactory. Ten, huh? The key point is, we expect this to be a long-term partnership. Given the sensitive nature of this task, naturally we expect the utmost secrecy. I sincerely hope this 100 million conveys the importance of that. What about the Curie guys? What happens to them, huh? It's unfortunately likely that they'll end up dead. Excuse me if this is presumptuous, but considering the amount I'm offering, would that also cover the body disposal? Or would that, uh, cost extra? Drop the fucking act, asshole! Where are you getting that kind of money, huh? A hundred mil just to kill one goddamn Yakuza? <laughs> I actually never said you needed to kill anyone. I only requested that you bring them to us. And then, you would just dispose of the evidence. I don't see where this is going! You think the Yakuza are your tool? You don't understand. My only role is delivering the message. My employer, he's the root of all of this. And you have no idea how many billions of yen he has to ensure his objectives are achieved. What? If you pull that trigger right now, who knows how decisive the retribution might be. Those billions could instead be shifted toward erasing you. What was that? Just think about it. How long will you be able to survive? Use your head, Captain Hamura. <sighs> There's no escape. Once you agreed to meet with me today, you all but guaranteed your participation and your compliance. So I strongly suggest you put the gun away. Does that make sense? are seriously that big, huh? Tell me more. Talk. Allow me to answer your question. It's true that we have access to vast amounts of money, yes. But we're not the violent organization you think we are. Oh yeah? Who are you? Ishimatsu Superior. The name's Ichinose. The only reason I'm choosing to show you my face is because I've decided to trust you. And because I want you to understand how far we're willing to go to bring our plan to fruition. My name's Shono, Captain. I'm currently researching a brand new drug called AD9. A drug that could very well save Japan. Or, or, or maybe even the world if... A new drug, huh? Where do I come in? The reality of the situation is, we are under intense pressure to complete our work on AD-9 expediently. To that end, Hamura-san, we'd like to ask for your assistance.
Ichinose. So the Ministry of Health is in on this too. It goes all the way up. Maybe it does. Are you familiar with the Medical Institute? Yeah. It's home to the ADDC, and it makes a comfy place for all the Health Ministry execs to go retire. Well, it just so happens that the guy who founded it 20 years ago was none other than Ichinose. He rode that success all the way up to Vice Minister. In other words, his whole legacy's riding on the ADDC. AD9's gotta come out on top for him to stay on top. And he's willing to murder to make sure that happens? Yep. Ichinose is not the only one profiting, either. There are tons of parties involved, all being promised this much cash or that favor. If people have to die for AD9 to succeed, so be it. Here's a question. Why'd you go after Kyori guys for the experiments? Just following Shono's orders. Shono told you to? Yep. He said there was a chance of the subject dying when we gave him the AD9. Now, if regular old civilians started disappearing, that'd make the news in no time. But nobody'd notice a few missing Yakuza during a turf war. Only natural there'd be some casualties, yeah? I guess so. That wasn't the only reason, though. Shono said... <sighs> he didn't want to perform dangerous experiments on innocent civilians. And what, these Yakuza deserve this somehow? The Kajihira group was the one trying to shut down the ADDC to begin with. And the Kyore were Kajihira's lapdogs. A couple of dead thugs didn't weigh on him too much. But don't shoot the messenger. Shono's the one who said it. You'll keep talking if you know what's good for you. Unless you want to go back to the hard way, I'm all for it. What else could you possibly want to know? Actually, I've got one more thing. Oh yeah? You made it sound earlier like you weren't that involved in the killings. But that's not the whole truth, is it? In fact, I have something that shows you actively helped carry out the Kyore killings. Take a look at this. Check this out. Look familiar? It's camera footage of you abducting Kume. So tell me, why'd you take the fall? They even got your face on tape. You're not usually that sloppy. <laughs> Answer me. That was right after we axed two Curie guys, one after another. They started catching on. Wouldn't go around town alone anymore. Keep going. When you're marked that on guard, nobody's laying a hand on him. Not even a trained assassin. So the mole needed a hand. Someone he could trust to get the ball rolling. And that someone was me. So what happened after you left Amora? My guy took Kume out the back. Loaded him in the trunk of a car. Took him to Shono. Just like all the other AD9 tests. To the ADDC? No, not the center. I'm not sure where it is exactly. Some place Shono and Mole set up. So they carried out their human experiments in some kind of secret lab? Suppose they did. Then why'd they need to gouge the eyes out? No clue. He never told me. Maybe he wanted to make it look like a Yakuza killing. <laughs> Maybe the mole's just into some sick shit. Next up, Shintani. He had nothing to do with the Kyore clan, but you guys still used him as an AD9 test subject. Or was there some other reason you had him killed? Shintani's death. That was my fault. Huh? When we took care of Kume, 
I was the one on the hook for it. Let me tell you, ending up in the slammer for a murder you didn't do is scary shit. Made me think, wouldn't hurt to have some insurance. Insurance? Talked to Shintani before the trial, and told him this. If the pieces fall into place and I hang for this, look into Shono at the ADDC. So you told him about the deal you made with Ichinose? Not exactly. Shono was the only name I mentioned. But if anyone found out I spilled the beans to Shintani, well... I'd be betraying the cause. So I told the bastard, only go digging if shit really hits the fan. Why did he call Shono if he knew it was that important to you? Why did he start digging it up? Beats me. Got a pretty good theory, though. You wanna hear? Yeah, do tell. My guess? He didn't want to let you hog all the glory. Huh? He might have won my trial, but you're the one who found the key evidence. Shintani got recognition, sure, but it was only by association. Nobody said it, but they all knew. You did the real work. But even then, you didn't stop trying to show up the poor guy. Right when the trial came to a close, there you were, hunting the real killer down. How do you think Shintani felt, sitting around waiting for you to stumble onto the truth? <laughs> Can't imagine he was sleeping well. <laughs> you might as well let this mole shit go. Think this is some kind of Yakuza pissing contest, do you? Come on. The mole is way bigger than you know. Shintani wanted to find the truth before you did. Wanted to earn his time in the sun. And that's why he called the ADDC? To investigate the killings himself? That's my theory. Can't back it up, though. Either way, the end result was the same. Ichinose found out Shintani was trying to get in touch with Shono. Signed his own death sentence. I'm sure it was plain as day that I was the guy who put him on the right trail. So, I had no choice but to silence Shintani. I even paid for the job out of my own pocket. And when it came to setting up a fall guy, we picked Ayabe. First, we got his gun. The Mole was the one who used it to kill Shintani. He replaced the one bullet he fired, got rid of any traces that he used it, and put it back in Ayabe's holster. That meant that the bullet found in the body would have the rifling marks from his gun. Which meant it was an unshakable fact that Shintani was shot with Ayabe's weapon. Face it, Ayabe's alibi isn't gonna hold water. The guy doesn't even remember who attacked him? Right. Nobody will buy that. Never. Fair enough. Although, what if we caught the mole, and then forced you to testify in the trial? Wrong. It smells like something's burning. What? <laughs> My boys must have finally decided to show up. You really want to meet the mole? Now's your chance. Atsugani san, we gotta go. You too. Get up. I'm gonna go ahead and suggest you let me walk away, boss. If I give the order, the family will fall back. At least then you'd live. Isn't that what you want? That's enough! If this Ministry of Health business is true, 
You're nothing more than a pawn to them. From where they stand, I'm sure you can be replaced. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. You're an idiot, Hamura. Huh? Come on. It's the Matsugane! They went and started a fire downstairs. <laughs> I've been waiting for this. Captain! Oh, Marase. How many they got? Captain! <laughs> That's it, they're so fucking dead! Hey, how did you pull off turning my family into goddamn terrorists? We've got to go, Matsugane-san. Right. Leave Hamura to me. Captain, you okay? Matsugane-san? You didn't 
You didn't have to protect me. <sighs> when I heard what you said, I knew you were right. This is all my fault. No, it's not. I wasn't very good at the business side. And because of that, you had to protect the family by crossing the line. There were signs, of course. I wasn't ignorant. I looked the other way. And just never asked where the money came from. It was easier that way. I'm not going to blame you for, for all of that. You just did what you had to. I'm sorry. No, not like this. Don't go. I wanted to... I wanted to... to make up for... It was the... the only way. You old fool. You didn't need to go that far. I only did... what any father would have. masagane Just hold on. Doc, my boy... This is... it for me. Hurry and get out. Not without you. Uh, Let's go. The mole is Karoiwa. Now you know the truth. Karoiwa is the one you want! What? And Patriarch Matsugane? He... He didn't make it. Oh, no. Kuroiwa. Huh? Did you say something? Kuroiwa. Back at the center of the crime scene, eh, Yagami? What the hell are you doing here? Yagami-kun, what's going on? Don't fret, Fuji-san. We just need to have a little chat at the station. No. He needs to get to a hospital. Hm. It looks fine to me. I'll watch after him otherwise. Are you a doctor now? He needs professional attention. Enough protesting. He'll be just fine with me. You don't even have a reason. It's okay. I'll go with you. I'm sure I'll be fine. <laughs> you had yourself one hell of a night, huh, Yagami? Doesn't seem like it's ending anytime soon. Could you at least take these off? Or am I gonna get booked? Afraid I can't. Wouldn't you know, someone went and lost the key. Huh. 
Hamura told me everything. Told you what? Told me who you really are. You killed Vice Director Hashiki. You mutilated those Yakuza. And Shintani's all you too. I'm on to you. Well, that's a good story. But there's only one detective here. Let's start with the cabaret and what you were doing there. I know that you're the mole. I'm the one asking the questions around here, so... You aren't denying it. <laughs> Why don't you start by telling me what you were doing when you first noticed the fire? Hamura getting away is what's gonna bring you down for good. You really missed your big chance. Can you tell me who started the fire, at least? Matsugane-san is dead because of you. So the moment I get out, your ass is mine! <laughs> Let's see you try! I don't think you realize. 89 gives me complete immunity. I'm talking about people that go all the way up the chain here. They see everything. When it comes to protecting 89's interests, there's no limit to what they'll do. Hamura is a loose end that I'll take care of eventually. And that's a fate you'll both share. This won't end with you alive. I don't mind that. All that matters is proving that you murdered them. If you think you scare me, sorry. You has been fraud. Kuroiwa-san? There's a call for you. Just one second. Should I take over? Nah. I'm through here. The fire at the cabaret. Tojo clan and Kyore clan Yakuza are both responsible for starting it. Luckily, Yagami-san just happened to be nearby and saw the whole thing. This case is closed. Thank you for your time. I'll escort you out then, Yagami-san. Hi, mister. Are you Yagami? Yeah? Who's asking? I have a present for you. What is it? I don't know. Some guy told me to give it to you. He said he was a friend. Oh, and he said to open it right away. What? Wonderful, Yagami-san. Such stunning reflexes. You even avoided doing any property damage. Well, did you enjoy my present? It was given to me as a gift by an old business partner of mine. Who the hell are you? Oh, pardon my rudeness. This is my car. Koga? Oh, you don't know me? Hmm, I see, I see. In that case, perhaps I should start over. My name is Matsuhisa Koga, one of the Keihin Four. I came to see what all the fuss is about. And introduce you to my way of doing things. You know, our reputation has taken quite a hit thanks to your antics. That being the case, it falls to me to put a stop to this farce. You guys are the farce. <laughs> Enough talk! Show me what you can do, Yagami-san! <sighs> You're as strong as they said you'd be. It seems fortune is not on my side today. I surrender. You win. Huh? 
Already? In the business world, one must always know when to withdraw. If Matsuhisa Koga lost to some thug on the street, our reputation would be in tatters. My business partners would never take me seriously again. I don't know why they would to begin with. Now I must retire. Until the day I get revenge. Farewell, Yagami-san. Can't these guys just leave me alone? Sugiura. What happened with Kaito-san? Is he okay? Doctor said he'll be back on his feet in a few days. We took him to some back alley joint. Hush hush, you know? Didn't realize you had those kinds of connections. Actually, he was a friend of Kaito-san's. Sounded like they go way back. Couldn't you have just gone to a hospital? That's what I thought. Kaito-san was pretty insistent, though. Said he didn't have time to deal with a bullet in the gut. That's Kaito. How'd everything go with you? I heard the Cure Club burned down. Yeah. Things were... tough. <laughs> Sounds like you could use some rest, then. Heading out, then? I just figured I'd stop by to tell you about Kaito-san. Now that I know you're safe, too, I'm gonna go pass out at home. You do that. Good night. It's Mafio. Did I wake you up? You need something? The moles claimed another victim. Another Kyore clan Yakuza. What? Head to the Matsugane family office if you can. All right. I'll be right over. They've already ID'd the victim. Mafuyu. Satoshi Shioya, captain of the Kyore clan. You knew him, yes? Mm-hmm. If it was really the mole, that means his eyes have been gouged out? So I hear. I haven't confirmed it for myself. Better that you don't. <sighs> Who's handling the case? Kuroiwa again? Yes. He's right over there. Speaking of which, Yagami-kun, what happened last night? With the interrogation? Listen, Mafuyu. Hmm? It's Kuroiwa. He's the mole. <gasps> what? Apparently he and Hamura have been working together for years. At first, he was just a dirty cop. Not too different from Ayabe, I guess. But eventually he found murder was profitable. And that's not all. Shono from the ADDC is the one who's been hiring him to do his dirty laundry. And these corpses with their eyes gouged out? Human experiments, every one of them. All for AD9. <sighs> this won't end. I just confronted Shono the other day. Said I was on to his insane tests. And now... There's a new body like nothing's changed at all. I can only see one way this shakes out. There's gonna be more deaths before this is all over. 
Even when he's this close to being all but caught, he's not gonna stop for anything. There's no doubt now. So now? Shono, he... He seems like this quiet, harmless scientist when you see him on the job. Except... 89 changes who he is. Makes the guy a monster. <sighs> Completing his drug will save millions. Not to mention their families. It would change the whole world. With all that power protecting Dr. Shono, he'd risk everything he has. It's us against anyone that money can buy. What are you going to do? Why not walk away? Wish I could. Matsugane-san's death can't go unanswered. He deserves closure. They won't get away with this. The Matsugane family and the Mole mountain assault, and the Kamurocho ambitions of the Kyore clan crumble. Betrayed by his inner circle, Hamura becomes a target himself, so he reveals to Yagami the Mole's true identity. He is Kamurocho's organized crime division detective, Kuroiwa. The man who took Matsugane's life falls under the shield of 89's powerful benefactors. They held his funeral at Tojo Clan headquarters. It was... an intimate service. The Matsugane family would have passed to Hamura, but with him missing, it was all but dissolved. It wasn't like he'd made much of an impact on the Tojo brass to begin with. But to Genda-sensei, he was an old friend of over 40 years. And then there was Kaito-san, who joined up after finishing middle school. And Higashi, too. When Kaito got expelled, protecting the boss became his personal mission. All of us knew exactly who was responsible for taking him from us. It was just a matter of finding the proof. Shintani's dead, killed by Ayabe, so they claim. This is the pre-trial conference for that case. Basically, we sit in here and hammer out the flow of the trial. Try to keep things as simple as possible for the jury, you know. According to the law, both the prosecution and the defense have to submit all their evidence before even going to court. You can't burst in mid-trial with new info like they do in the movies. We've been going in circles for a while now. We'll never get anywhere like this. You say that, yes. In other words, we need to make sure all our cards are in order, then show the other side our hand. The rifling marks on the bullet are unshakable proof of guilt. You really want to plead innocent with such a severe disadvantage? How does the defense respond? You can also bargain for a lesser sentence if you so desire. No, we still contend that Detective Ayabe was set up. Our stance remains unchanged.
Seriously? So it was Kuroiwa all along. Everything makes sense now. Were there ever any warning signs? Nah. This might have nothing to do with it, but... I heard a story about the guy once. Go on. Back when he was starting out, his boss on the force was working as a Tojo clan go-between on the side. In exchange for kickbacks and whores, of course. Kind of shit you see every day in Kamarocho. But one day, that boss went and threw himself off a roof. Right when they were gonna haul him in, too. Guess some goody two-shoes on the force went and ratted him out. One of his own co-workers? Was it Kuroiwa? No. Nope. Funny enough, they found the snitch with a noose around his neck just a day later. So it was a double suicide? What the hell? From what I've heard, it's possible that hanging was actually a homicide. Maybe, just maybe, someone wanted revenge on the snitch. After the dust cleared, a new dirty cop had risen from the ashes, with his boss's connections and then some. He's been in bed with the Yakuza ever since. Turns out this guy's our top detective, too. And you're saying that's Kuroiwa? Hey, I'm just telling you what I heard. You're the one who asked about warning signs. Let's split up, Oshinokun. Sticking with me is just gonna put you in more danger. Come on, I'll be fine. I'm not a little kid. I know that. Either way, I'm done for today. Oh, okay then. See you around, Yagami-san. Yagami-san. Tori? Someone's got eyes on your place. Smells like it does when a journalist stakes out a shoot. How can you tell? Eh, I have a nose for these things. So, what do you want? Not me. Chairman Kajihira. He needs to know what's up with your investigation. Honmarwen's burnt to a crisp. Shioya-san's dead. The chairman is very interested to know what happened. No surprise there. <laughs> nice work. A police detective cum serial murderer. If you're telling the truth, there's a trail of death following 89 every step of the way. It all leads back to the human experiments. Patient Shono killed Wakusan, Emi Terasawa, Hashki from the ADDC, Shintani, every single one of them. Maybe so, but without evidence, this is nothing more than a well-crafted hypothesis. Believe me, I know that already. All right, I've heard what you have to say, but Chairman Kajihira still wants to meet with you. I just told you everything I know. Then you can tell it to him, too. I'm little more than a messenger, after all. And if I refuse? Listen, Yagami-san. Chairman Kajihira isn't your enemy. He may even have details you wouldn't otherwise be privy to. I suggest you milk that for what it's worth. Oh, and put a good word in for me, huh? If you don't mind. <laughs> Are you free to meet now? You'll need to bring Kaito-san too, of course. It seems his bullet wound is almost fully healed. You really do know everything. What can I say? Comes with the job. Anyway, grab Kaito-san and head to Kikunoya. Kikunoya? I hear Patriarch Matsugane loved the place. Coincidentally, so does the chairman. Goodbye, Yagami-san.
Yo, I'm gonna make some coffee. You want a cup? Hey, hey, aren't you supposed to be recovering? Eh, it's fine. Come on, drink with me. Well, if you say so. By the way, Hattori just dropped by. The journalist? Yeah, apparently Chairman Kajihira is asking for us. What I hear, Kajihira's in a pretty tough spot right now. Hmm? Chairman Koba from the Kyorei clan's putting the pressure on. I mean, their Captain Shioya just got his eyes gouged out. Never would have happened if Kajihira hadn't shipped him up to Kamurocho. Yeah, I guess so. First, a couple of their rookies die in Kamurocho. Then a captain turns up dead. Chairman Koba is probably freaking the fuck out. Guess Kajihira's calling us to fix it then? Dunno. We'll find out when we get there. We? I'm sick of sitting around watching Kuroiwa, man. We're not getting anywhere with this shit. It's time we try something new. Hell, I'll do whatever it takes to avenge Matsugane-san. Damn right. Let's hit it. Welcome. I've been waiting for you. Long time no see. It's truly horrible what happened to Matsugane-san. Yes. To his memory. Chairman Kajihira. I assume you've already heard about 89? Yes. Hattori-san told me everything. The incident three years ago was a human experiment gone awry, huh? I'm impressed you figured that out. <laughs> Quite impressed. I heard about Shinpei Okubo, too. The murder you let loose upon the world didn't actually kill anyone. Yeah. Emmy died at the hands of Shono, the 89 researcher. I'm not so sure about that. Do you have any proof? No? If I did, I'd be making you eat those words. Come now. No fighting. My old heart can't handle the stress. Hold on a sec. If you already know what's going on, why'd you go and call us out here? What do you really want? Huh. <laughs> You're sharper than you look. To be honest, I have a bit of a problem on my hands. Oh, yeah? The curé chairman, Koba, has been getting on my case. He wants me to put a button on all this murder business. Not that I can blame him. His successor just had his eyes gouged out after all. What's your point? I want you to bring an end to these killings. That detective, Kuroiwa, is behind it all. Right? What do you take us for, assassins? I have confidence that the two of you can do what I ask. What do you say? I'll give you a handsome reward. Yeah, I think we'll be going now. All right, all right. It was a joke. Though the Curé clan has been getting on my case. So you were half joking. <sighs> The real reason I called the two of you here was to say thanks in Hashki's place. Hmm? It must be frustrating for him to look down on this world just to see people say he died in a drunken brawl. But you saw through that false narrative. Once we have proof and crush AD9 for good, he'll finally be avenged. And you'll finally make good on your hundred billion yen investment. Not that I care either way. <laughs> so, Yagami-san, what comes next? Well, Ayabe's trial is coming up, right? We'll use that stage to bring the real crimes into the spotlight. That'll also mean lifting the veil on 89. Hmm. Okubo will be in the clear, too. Interesting. I think you're still missing some evidence, though. You're not wrong. 
We don't know where Hama is either. Well then, what now? I'm gonna keep going after Kuroiwa. Stay on his tail till I get a solid lead. You may be waiting a long time then. He's not the type of man to slip up. I know. It'll take some time for sure, but there's no other way. I'm not sure you have the time you think you do. What do you mean? It won't be long until Shinpei Okubo is executed. What? So say my connections, at least. There's a top secret list stating which death row inmates are potential execution candidates for the near future. Apparently, Okubo is on that list. Once the Minister of Justice rubber stamps the execution, it's over. What? But why? Someone must have pressured the Ministry to put Okubo on the list. I don't do something soon. I'm gonna lose my chance forever. If it were me, I'd try going after an easier target than Kuroiwa. And who would that be? Look, this is an article of mine that got scrapped. Kirosan? Really? His womanizing ways are actually pretty well known. Guess he's really cut loose since they announced 89. Underneath the lab coat, he's nothing but a shameless pervert. If anything, he's the one you should be going after. No way am I getting into the ADDC, though. Not now. Well, then you'll just have to lure him out. That's the only way to get a cautious quarry to leave its nest. And how are we gonna do that? Offer him a delicious meal. For Keto, that would be... a woman. A beautiful one, ideally. A woman? A woman? Well, that was the last place I expected to get any good advice. Yeah, he had a point though. Keto might be our best bet for evidence. Evidence that could reveal the truth about 89. We're gonna have to drag him out of the ADDC first. Hattori suggested seducing him to Kamrocho. <laughs> a honey trap, huh? I guess it's time for Salri san to do her thing again. Yeah, I'll ask her tomorrow. Well, I'm all out of gas for tonight. See you tomorrow, man. Oh, Yagami-san. Sorry, son. Yes? I have another favor I want to ask you. Oh? Think you can handle it? Tell me what it is. You sure? Yes. All right, then. We need you to set a honey trap for Keto. A what? It's when you seduce a man to get information. And you're sure you want me? How could you ask her to do that? You can't be serious. Look, we need to get to Kido somehow. This is the best shot we have of luring him into Kamrocho. Don't be ridiculous. Asking her to be a hostess is one thing, but you can't make her sleep with that creep. Hold on there, Hoshino-kun. Isn't that what a honey trap is? I never said that. You don't have to listen to them, sorry san I mean, just talking about this is practically entrapment. Not to be rude, but I asked sorry, son, not you. Why do you care so much anyway? Because I care about her. Oh? You 
What? Uh, no, I, I, I mean, I, I have a lot of respect for her as a co-worker. Well, that's enough of that. Yagami, you sure there'll be no risk to Saurikun? Absolutely. I have a plan. Which is what, exactly? I'll tell you once we get there. First, I need to know if you're in. It's what the investigation calls for. Sorry, son. I want to avenge Shitani sensei's death, too. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Then we don't have time to lose. We? Since when was it we? This is really what Saori-san wants. I'll do everything in my power to help her. Uh-huh. Oh, we'll need another makeover, right? I'll go this time. Mind if we use the same salon? Sure, but I was thinking she'd be a journalist this time, not a hostess. A journalist? Really? Think about it. Your mark is inside the ADDC, right? You'll be able to get him alone much more naturally if you go in asking for an interview. Uh-huh. And you'll need to dress the part. I'm talking high skirts and low cuts. That'll bring out the worst in any old lech. Now we're talking. I'll take that over a hostess any day. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I have some things I need to take care of. Can you head to the ADDC once you're done with your makeup, sorry, son? We'll meet there. Okay. See you soon. We should be going too, sorry, son. Let's get you that makeover. Right. Here we are, sorry, son. Hair salon cherry. I'm honestly a little nervous. Didn't I already do this when I was a hostess? Sure, but everything's different this time. Sorry, son, the journalist. An intellectual beauty. Classy, worldly. Oh, what guy wouldn't fall for that? Don't give me that look. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to stare. Anyway, I'm sure you'll be stunning no matter how much makeup you wear. And if I disappoint you? Well, that's just not possible. I hope you're right. knew it! Oh, you're a goddess, Saori-san. Just incredible. That off-limits allure, that mature aura. Are you going to stop soon? Sorry. I just... I got a little excited. Well, I'm ready to go. I can take it from here. So independent, too. Oh, sorry. I'll stop now. Well? Saori-san. Um, hmm? don't push yourself, okay? If things get dangerous, just run. 
Yagami san said I'll be safe, though. Well, yeah, your life might not be in danger, but what if Kido tries to, you know, top a feel or something? If that's what needs to happen, that's what will happen. What? But. I should be going. Sorry, son. By the way, Hoshino kun. Yeah? Thank you for complimenting my makeup. It felt. nice. What? Hold on, sorry, son. Take this with you. It's a hidden camera. A what? See, this is the lens. Any footage it takes gets sent to my phone in real time. Here, wear this earpiece, too. I'll give you some conversation pointers while you're in there. Oh? Yeah. This time you'll need to be seductive with the words you say, not just your looks. So... You're going to give me tips, Yagami-san? I'd appreciate that. Wait, really? Of course. Knowing how to woo a man isn't exactly my specialty. Also, what happens after I seduce him? Once Kido starts coming on to you, we'll catch it all on the camera. Meaning there will be evidence of his sexual harassment? Yeah. Your job will be done at that point. All we'll need to do after that is use the footage to lure him to Comrade Joe. Blackmailing, hmm? Think you can handle it? Don't worry. The more perverted things Keto does, the more he'll suffer later. Yeah, I guess. I'd rather keep his hands off of me as much as possible, though. That'll be on you and your direction, Yagami-san. Right. Anyway, you should head in. Can you hear me, Sari-san? First, you're gonna want to go to the reception desk. Ask the lady there if you can interview Kido. Just make something up about wanting more details on 89. Sounds good. Welcome, ma'am. Do you have an appointment? No. I was wondering if Director Kido would be available for an interview. And you are? A freelance journalist by the name of Shirasaki. I wanted to speak with him about 89. I'm terribly sorry, ma'am. I can't let you in without an appointment. Oh, I see. In that case, um... Don't be afraid to press the issue, Sarisan. I, um... Director Kido is a very busy man. I'm sure you understand. It won't take long, I assure you. And I can wait if need be. Even so... Please, can I at least see Kido-san and ask him myself? I'm sorry, ma'am. We decline all requests without a prior appointment. Oh, I think I could make an exception for such a pretty girl. Huh? I'm Kido, the director of this center. I hear you want to interview me. Ah, uh, yes. My name is Shirosaki. Shirosaki-san, hmm? Come, I'll show you to my office. A beautiful woman like yourself deserves VIP treatment. Are you sure, sir? Thank you very much. Ugh, Kido-san. So he's not even trying to hide it. Not that I'm complaining. Please, come in. Wow, this is your office? It's breathtaking. I love how spacious it is. Oh, no need to flatter me, though I do get quite a few compliments. Please, take a seat. Sorry, son. Put the camera on the table. You really must excuse me. I should have made an appointment instead of just showing up on your doorstep. Move it a little to the right. About 15 degrees. Perfect. Would you care for a drink, Shirosaki-san? Maybe a glass of brandy? 
There's one I found recently that's truly top shelf. Well, sure, I'll have some. It's a special occasion after all. Here you are. I think I'm going to enjoy this interview. Good job, sorry son. Keep it up. To a wonderful interview. Yes, to the interview. Mmm, it's incredible. Really warms you up, deep in your core, right? Yes. Undo another button, sorry son. Huh? Is something the matter? Oh, um, uh, no, it's just getting a little toasty in here. Well, uh, <clears throat> yes, I am feeling warmer. Good going. He's taking the bait. Now then, <clears throat> what is this interview about? I'd like to hear how AD9 is progressing. Oh, that. I should have known. Is something wrong? No, 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 no. It's it's all right. It's only everyone who interviews me always asks the same thing. I'm just going to tell you the same thing I tell everyone else. Oh, but. It comes with the job, yes, but I'm sick of parroting the same thing over and over again. Kido's losing interest. What are you gonna do? What do you mean, what are you gonna do? My heart's racing over here. Your heart, you say? Let me see. Hey, uh. <laughs> your heartbeat seems normal to me. Ugh, <laughs> oh, he's even more disgusting than I thought. You okay, sorry, son? A little surprised, but yes, I'm okay. Thank you. Oh, there's no need to thank me. <laughs> oh, God. Sorry about all this, sorry, son. You're doing great, though. Keep going. Now then. Uh, where were we? You should get this over with as quick as possible. Make your move, sorry, son. Hmm. In that case... It's getting so steamy in here, don't you think? Yes, yes, I'm burning up. I totally agree with you. Huh? Wait, sorry, son. Are you really gonna keep going? Ah, uh, that's better. Oh. Sorry, son, it uh, kind of seems like you're enjoying this. Ah, uh, he's the worst. How's this? Just wonderful. I think that's enough photos for now. All right, sorry, son. You're good. Wrap it up. How did they turn out? Oh, do you want to... Ah! You're right in the frame. This is a perfect backup. Stay strong, sorry, son. You've made me a very happy man today. But we have some real fun now that the interview's out of the way, hmm? My little minx. Well, um... How about dinner tonight? That's perfect. Draw him out. Okay. Let's do it in Camarocho. Camarocho? Um, how about somewhere else, huh? I'd rather stay close by. Oh, I think I can convince you. Hmm. How so? You'll see. Made me 
happy man today. Why don't we have some real fun now that the interview's out of the way, hmm? My little minx. Is it just me? Or did Saori-san start getting weirdly into that whole thing at some point? Yeah, she was, uh... It's kind of scaring me towards the end. Anyway, you think Kido's actually gonna show? He'd be a fool not to. I just sent him the footage under Sari-san's name. Said we'd put it online if he didn't show. <laughs> Guess he doesn't have a choice then. Where'd you tell him to go? The batting center. Sugira and Higashi went ahead to keep an eye on the place. What's gotten into you, man? I don't know if I've ever seen you this organized. I can't afford to take my time with this. Okubo-kun's execution date is coming up fast. Yeah, good point. Come on, we should go. It's Sugira. Hey, what's up? I'm bringing the van around. You see me? Hmm? There he is. Welcome aboard. Where's Higashi? Already inside. I haven't noticed anything weird out here. Kido should be showing up any minute. And what happens when he does? We'll shove him in the van and drag him over to Charles. What? Higashi's arcade? It's not like we had a lot of time to think about it. We'll interrogate him once we get there. Right, Yagami-san? Yep. And speak of the devil. Surprised he actually showed. All right, let's move out. <gasps> what are you doing here? Not sure what you mean. My agency is just a couple blocks away. It's strange to see you here, though. What brings you out to Kamrocho? <laughs> well, I. Maybe meeting a seductive journalist? I understand now. You're the ones behind all this. What will you do with that video? Nothing. If you give us what we want. What is it, money? No, we're after something else entirely. What are you going to do to me? We're just taking you for a little trip. No. No, I'm afraid you're not. Hmm? You forget. I'm a powerful man. Huh. Who are these assholes? Health Ministry thugs, if I had to guess. Oh. Do they have them all over the city or something? Delete that video, Yagami! Stay back! Don't come any closer! <laughs> Look where all that power got you. Nobody's running to help now. Not the ADDC, not the Ministry of Health. I've been waiting a long time for this moment. If you kill me, think what will happen to 89. Their research will come to a screeching halt! Don't worry. Nobody's killing anybody. But I suggest you learn a little humility. I never said I wouldn't hurt you. Come on. We're out of here. Man, it's been a while since I did something like this. Feels good getting back in the group, you know? You always did have a habit of stripping them down. 
Well, yeah. Everyone's the same underneath all this bullshit. Scientist, doctor, whatever. Listen here. It's not too late for you. But if you don't release me... You'll have your assassin hunt us down? I'll take extensive legal action against you. Huh. Who knows what'd happen if you did that. I might accidentally let that video loose to the press. <laughs> what? If that doesn't sound good to you, start talking. You're gonna tell us everything you know about 89. <sighs> Why me? What do you people want? Who are those guys at the batting center? Well, I... <laughs> you mentioned how powerful you are. Did you hire them to protect you? <sighs> Out with it already. Quit acting like you got any goddamn dignity. You've made me a very happy man today. Why don't we have some real fun now that the interview's out of the way, hmm? My little minx. <laughs> who would have thought the scientist who was gonna save the world would have turned out to be some pervy asshole? Your name's gonna go down in history if this gets out. And not how you're hoping. Stop. I'm begging you, please! Who were those thugs at the batting center? Hitmen. On the Ministry of Health payroll. Ichinose's payroll, in other words. That's right. I think you mean, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ichinose-san knows I've been abducted. More of them could rush in here at any minute if you don't release me. <laughs> if you haven't noticed, we've got this whole fighting thing pretty down by now. <sighs> Next question. It's about what happened three years ago. <laughs> huh? An Alzheimer's patient at the ADDC by the name of Wakusan was murdered. His body found buried far out in the mountains. At the time, Shinpei Okubo was thought to be the killer. But the truth is, it was an unforeseen consequence of 89, which Shono had administered to this Wakusan. You knew, didn't you? What? Cat got your tongue? Guess you're about to become internet famous then. Wait! Answer me, Kido! Yes! I knew! Who told you? When? How? I'm sorry. I can't say any more than that. If I did, I... Please, just give me some time to figure things out. Time's one thing I don't have. Shinpei Okubo's about to get executed for a murder he didn't commit. What? I need to get every last bit of information out of you right here. I'll even resort to torture if I have to. Torture? You'd break the law over this? What? That doesn't sound fun to you? Of course not! Then start talking! <laughs> Nobody's gonna come help you now. I'll give you a chance to think it over. You better be ready by the time I come back. Kido's already a broken man. My guess? At this point, he's just desperate to save his own skin. Yeah, I guess so. Maybe you should take a breather. I'm sure giving Kido some time to stool will make him realize talking's the only option. We'll keep an eye on him in the meantime. Thanks, Sugira. I appreciate it. Hey, even a guy like you needs to take breaks. You've been up and out all freaking day. Ready to talk yet? We're waiting. <laughs> yes. Three years ago, Shono killed a patient by experimenting on him with 89. 
When did you find out? Right after the press conference. The one where we announced AD-9 to the world. Shono told me himself. Just thinking about it makes my blood boil. Even after all this time. I have some concerns about AD-9. At the moment, it's only effective on mice. I'm well aware of that, yes. But I'm confident it will work on humans, too. No. I'm afraid you're mistaken. What's this now? We just had a fantastic conference. This is no time for doom and gloom. Just sit back and try to relax. You deserve it. <clears throat> oh, and by the way, Ichinose was thrilled with what he saw. One day we're almost getting shut down, the next we have a massive budget. And if you can make consistent progress, AD-9 will head to clinical... At this stage, I'm afraid clinical trials would be inadvisable. If we try, all the test subjects will die. Are you sure? How can you say that with such confidence, huh? Shinpei Okubo was actually innocent. What? Innocent? Why are you bringing this up now? The court ruled correctly. Waku-san, his murder didn't play out like you think it did. The real cause of death was none other than 89. What do you mean? That murder was... It was a secret clinical trial for 89. I gave him the injection personally. <gasps> you did what? Please, I... I had to take this opportunity. The whole world is waiting for this cure. But when I injected him, he let out the most horrible scream. These hands covered his mouth. I tried to make him shut up. Which means you... You're a murderer. <laughs> How could you be such a damn fool? What are we gonna do? Shono, I just spent the entire afternoon talking up your drug to the press! With my goddamn name on the research! If you hadn't held that press conference, the ADDC would have been done for and you- Why didn't you tell me this before? I needed you, Dr. Kido. I couldn't let the center get shut down. The AD-9 project would have been terminated. But you know, this has been my entire life's work, ensuring that AD-9 would save the world. <sighs> this whole thing is preposterous. I'm going to the press! There's no need for that. Huh? Don't you understand, Director? As long as we finish AD-9's development, there won't be any issues. Your name will go down in history as the man who saved the world. Not to mention the money. But if you really insist on revealing the truth, both of our careers would go down the drain. And you have more to lose, Director. Shono, you're mad. Is that all Shono told you? There's gotta be more. Waku-san wasn't the only person Shono killed, was he? No. He needed Shinpei Okubo to take the fall. And murdered Emi Terasawa to accomplish that. So you did not! Hey! 
Save it, Sugira. We're not done yet. What happened next, after Shono killed Emi? Don't you already know? You had Hashki murdered. I didn't! It wasn't me! Hashki was digging around, trying to find something wrong with 89. You and Shono didn't like that too much. But you needed some help to take care of him. Someone else who wanted to protect 89. That person was... Ichinose, from the Ministry of Health. <gasps> the guy who founded the ADDC made it a place all the old guard ministry execs could retire to. Yes. Shono and I went to Ichinose-san and pleaded with him to help us. After all, he's known for being well-versed in political matters, both above board and otherwise. So, we told him everything. About Wakusan dying in the experiment, about Emi Terasawa. Every last detail. Without hesitation, Ichinose-san agreed to help us with the cover-up. According to him, protecting AD-9 was top priority. Hence why he decided to silence Hashki. Ichinose-san knew he was Kajihira's spy from the start, and acted accordingly. Meaning he's the one who first dragged Hamura and Kuroiwe into this bullshit. Real barrel of fucking monkeys. With Hashki out of the way, all that was left for us to do was complete 89. But we realized something. If we entered clinical trials and another patient died, our dream, too, would be dead. The ADDC would be no more. And all our sacrifices would have been for nothing. Your sacrifices? How can you say that with a straight face? You're not the ones who died for some bullshit drug! <laughs> Go on. Through all my hesitation, Shono kept pushing, aggressive to a damn fault. He said we couldn't be afraid of failure if we really wanted to finish 89. That we needed to keep experimenting until we succeeded. He also said the only way to speed up development was to keep conducting clinical trials in secret. Shono was adamant about that. Why? Think about it. If we could hide the fact that our subjects were dying, we could continue experimenting despite the risks. In order to do so, we needed a way to quickly procure and discard test subjects. With that, it would only be a matter of time until AD-9 was complete. And those test subjects were the Kyori clan men. Ichinose-san listened to every single one of Shono's requests. My only role in all of this was obtaining the funds required. And so, money flowed into the ADDC from the Ministry of Health. Money which I gave to Shono, allowing him to build a secret lab in Kamarocho. A... Uh, what? It's where he carries out all of his human experiments. Huh? Where exactly is this lab? I'm not sure of the specific location. I try not to come between Shono and Ichinose-san unless absolutely necessary. So that lab is where all the killings happen, where those Kyori guys were slaughtered. If anywhere's gonna have evidence, it's there. You sure you don't know where it is? Detective Kuroyo, I would, of course. He's not as talkative as you, though. In that 
suitcase. There was another person involved in setting up the lab. Who? A subordinate of Ichinose's son. I believe his name was Ishimatsu. I've heard that name before. He was the middleman between Hamura and Shono. Where is this Ishimatsu guy? In Kamurocho, there's a Ministry of Health office up in the Millennium Tower. Apparently, he'll be in tonight. Wait, the Millennium Tower? That's where they oversee Shono's secret lab. Nobody knows the office is there. The sign out front even has a different name. They really got a place like that? Well, Ishimatsu knows where the lab is, yeah? This'll be easy. <laughs> Just gotta strip him down and force him to talk. Hold up. I've got a better idea. Hmm? First, we give this Ichimatsu guy some kind of reason to go to the lab. Then we just follow him from the Millennium Tower. Not bad. Ichimatsu himself will lead us straight there. But how are we gonna get him to go? Well, we'll, uh... We'll get our buddy Kido here to give him a call. Huh? Say something about how we're closing in on the lab. Tell him you need him over there to stand guard. You know, that might just work. And what? You think I'll just agree to this? You better. If you don't want to spread your little video, that is. <sighs> that settles it then. What does Ishimatsu look like? Uh, he's in his 50s. Always wears a gray suit. A sh short man. Not that much over five feet. Ah, and he always wears gloves. That could be any regular-ass old dude in this town. Anything else? There may be photos of him on the internet. You're seriously telling us to just search him? Yes. Er, well, not exactly. Try looking up Vice Minister Ichinose. Ishimatsu might have ended up in a photo of his at some point. Hmm, gotcha. Could take a while, but I should be able to find something. Kaito, Higashi. Mind hanging back here with Kido? Sure. What about me, then? You get to tail Ishimatsu with me. You're good at that kind of stuff, right? Guess so, yeah. Well, let's head to the Millennium Tower. Be safe, you two. I'll send you a shot of Ishimatsu once I've got one. Great. Let's move out. Hello? Yo, it's Kaito. I just sent you the photo. Later. So this is Ishimatsu, huh? Gray suit, gloves. We should be able to tell when he's leaving from here. Once he takes us there, we'll be ready to raid the lab. You good to go? Yeah, let's do it. We're in position, Kaito-san. Tell Kido to make the call. Gotcha. It's time for your big acting debut, buddy. You there, Tak? Kido's call went off without a hitch. Ishimatsu's on the move. Great. Now we just have to find him and follow him. Don't fuck this up, man. Don't worry. Me and Sugira got it covered.
gray suit, gloves. That's him. guard yeah thankfully that makes him stand out even more in a hurry.
Oh, no. No one. Huh? Yes. Mm hmm. I understand. I'll be right there. No one.
Monsieur Lee? It's a love hotel that closed down years ago. Perfect place to set up a mad scientist lab. Kaito-san, it's me. You find the place? We've got a building that looks the part, at least. We're gonna head in. Be careful, man. Yep. Let's do it. Right. Let's go, Yagami-san. Jeez, it's dark. What's the deal with this place? Hey, do you think this counts as trespassing? More or less. <laughs> Who the hell are you? Yagami-san, what do we do? Only one thing to do. We fight! I bet those weren't the last of them, Yagami-san. If anything, that was just a welcoming party. They'll know we're here, too. Probably have weapons next time. Guns, worst case scenario. Who are these guys, anyway? Bums off the street, if I had to guess. Ichinose must have offered them a lot to do this. Yo, you guys okay in there? Yep, we're right on track. They've got guards, too. There's gotta be something here. Something like a secret lab, maybe? It'd be the perfect place. It's so dark, you could carry a corpse in here and nobody'd ever know. Think you two can handle it on your own? Actually, I just thought of something. Can you call Mafuyu for me? Get her over here. And tell her to bring the cops. Huh? Why? Well, think about it. We're trespassing, yeah? Even if we do stumble on Shono's secret lab, the court would never accept evidence found illegally. And calling the cops makes it all fucking better? Not exactly. Even they can't investigate without a warrant. Then why the hell are you trying to get Mafuyu shot over there? I've got an idea. Just talk to Mafuyu for me, okay? We'll keep looking for the lab. Got it. Damn it. I stepped in a puddle. For a door that doesn't even open. Didn't I tell you to be careful? <sighs> I really like these shoes, too. Sukira, you're gonna give me a heart attack. Sorry, sorry. <sighs> what is it this time? Sugira? This isn't funny, man. Where are you? there. Nice. Almost there.
Nice. That'll do it. Segura! The hell? Can't you see I'm trying to have some fun here? <laughs> I give him three minutes, <laughs> and he's just another body. Segura, are you okay? <sighs> yeah, somehow. I owe you one, man. <laughs> Don't mention it. Come on, let's keep going. the line. This is it. This has to be Shono's secret lab. Uh, you two! What are you? Shono. I uh, didn't think I'd find you working at the scene of the crime. Guess our timing's pretty good. Sugura. Get some video of this place. Mm -hmm. uh, stop that! So all those Yakuza who got their eyes gouged out, you did it here, huh? Can't wait to see what turns up. The cops are gonna have a field day in this place. The victim's fingerprints, hair, bodily fluids, DNA. Can you imagine? Just how long I've been waiting to see evidence like this come to light. I... I don't know what you're... Huh? Huh? Uh, 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 Segura, what's wrong? I'm sorry, Yagami-san. I've been lying to you about everything all along, until now. What do you mean by that? I'm not actually ex Kajihira. That wasn't the truth. Neither was my name. Yagami-san, I... I actually know you from a long time ago. That's the whole reason I approached you. My real name, Yagami-san? Fumia Terasawa. Terasawa? I'm the younger brother of Emi. 
who this bastard murdered. Uh, uh, Sugiro! Nobody move! You in the hood! Drop the knife! Now! You're under arrest for attempted murder. The cuffs won't be necessary. He's no longer a threat. Don't worry about your friend. We won't bother prosecuting him. Oh yeah? No crime was committed here. But sir, we can't just... You need to get forensics in here. There's a good chance a series of murders took place in this very room. And what brings you to say that? Kido told me about it. Unfortunately, we'll need a stronger premise than that. They would never issue a warrant on such grounds. <laughs> well, then it's a good thing I have a better reason lined up. Which is what? Trespassing charges against a rogue ex-lawyer. Which makes this... a crime scene. Guess you'll have to block it off. Preserve the evidence, you know? Yagami-kun. How clever. You don't mind being arrested if it means helping your investigation. I suppose this was your plan from the start. That's why you had Fujikun get the police involved. <laughs> you surprise me. Out of the way! Let me through! Vice Minister Ichinose! This place is under the Ministry of Health's jurisdiction. I demand you leave here at once. Huh. I didn't realize you guys were in the love hotel business, Vice Minister. It's a laboratory. Our top secret research facility for AD9. You have no idea of the fallout this could cause. Then let's find out. If you didn't notice, I just trespassed. Meaning, this whole laboratory is a crime scene now. Isn't that right? Hmm. I'm not sure that's going to work, Yagami-san. At least four people were murdered in here. I'm sure of it. The proof's right here in this room. So please, I'm begging you to help me here. What a conundrum. You see, none of that is my concern. What? Hey. You should be thanking your lucky stars we haven't beaten the crap out of you by now. <laughs> <sighs> Shit, almost makes you feel bad for the poor guy. <laughs> Even if he deserves it. You smoke? Man, you're as soft as ever, Kaito Anaki. Humor me. According to you, this is a secret research facility for AD-9. Yes, Vice Minister? That's correct. Hmm. Our nation's government has invested countless resources into AD-9. It would seem rather foolish if we were to stop its momentum over this. I'm willing to overlook it for AD-9's sake. What? But, sir... Many thanks. Truly. I am in your debt. Of course, Vice Minister. Now, everyone is to evacuate the premises at once. I hope you can continue your research into 89 without any more disturbances. Let me assure you, Dr. Shono, this will not happen again. Is that so? Meaning, you're working for 89 too, aren't you, Chief Prosecutor?
It's time for you to go home, Yagami-san. Just how long have you and Morita been working together? AD9 has many influential supporters. There's no stopping our momentum. Bullshit, there's not. I am not gonna let you win that easy. Ah, oh yes. I should let you know that I just received a call from Director Kido. Kuroiwa sends his regards. Kuroiwa? Apparently, he rescued Kido. He's been freed. Local thugs have made Kamurocho too dangerous for him. The AD-9 conspiracy entangled the ADDC's director, Kido, the same man who had unveiled it to the world. An unfinished drug that exacted human sacrifice. Yagami believed he had finally found definitive proof. But even that was swallowed by the darkness. All for the greater good of a drug that would save humanity. You look worse than I was expecting. I hear Kuroiwa paid you a visit. Yep. Just him and that baton he's got. Beat the shit out of us. He took Kido, too. How'd things go with your stuff? We found Shono's lab, but the police are basically refusing to investigate it. Why? Chief Prosecutor Morita's defending 89. You for real? Whatever evidence was there is probably long gone by now. Yagami-san. Right. There's something else I need to tell you, too. What is it? This have something to do with Sugiura? Yeah, um... That's not actually his name. Huh? So you were Emi Terasawa's little brother, huh? Why'd you keep it a secret? At first, I wanted to make Yagami-san remember. Remember what? How he let my sister suffer. In my eyes, he was a scumbag who let a murderer walk. The murderer who then burned Emi to death. Damn, that's heavy. Go on. You don't have to hold back. Back then? I was just a shut-in fuck-up. My life was in shambles. Emmy was still there for me, though. When nobody else was. And then... Somebody murdered her. Someone as nice as Emmy. Dead. For no reason. But the world doesn't stop for that shit. It just keeps turning, and people go about their business. Over time, I started to hate what our whole society stood for. So I'm guessing that's what led you to start that burglary ring? Pretty much. At the very least, I didn't want to keep living my life for other people. You know, when Emmy died, Yagami-san didn't apologize. Not to me, or to my parents. So that's when you guys first met, huh? Yup. 
Well, totally different back then, though. Had glasses and long hair, so couldn't really see my face. That's why I didn't recognize you. Defending a murderer? You're just as guilty as he is. Those words cut deeper than you probably could have imagined. Even so, Okubo insisted he didn't do it. Since I was his lawyer, I couldn't apologize. That would essentially be admitting he was guilty. What about after the trial? I didn't apologize then, either. Instead, I ran away. Put them all behind me. Right. You didn't just walk away. You practically got disbarred. At least Okubo was getting the death penalty. It didn't feel good, but I settled for that. Then why'd you start hanging around Tuck again? Because he found his way back to the courtroom to deal with all this mole business. Even got a Yakuza captain off the hook. Well, it's not like I suddenly just became a lawyer again. Sure seemed that way from my perspective. So, I wanted to see where your head was at. Find out if you'd forgotten what you did to Emmy. If you were gonna pretend like nothing happened, I'd make you remember. And I'd make you pay for it. And that's why you approached me. Yep. I wanted to know what Okubo was up to, too. Find out if he was as afraid of death as he should have been. If anyone was gonna go see him, it was you. But now, it's looking more and more likely Okubo was framed. And I never would have known if I hadn't teamed up with you. Ironic, huh? Three years later, the real killer's finally clear. And now it turns out, Shono. He's the one leading the charge to cure Alzheimer's. He gets to go down in history as a hero? For what? Stabbing my sister to death? Burning her body? Don't worry. Everyone will see him for who he really is once the truth gets out. You weren't there today. The whole fucking system is protecting him. He bent the truth, suppressed evidence right in front of me. What's the point of fighting that kind of battle, huh? It's bullshit! You saw it too, right, Yagami-san? Right? Look, Sugira, ever since Emi-chan died, I've been running away from the truth. I was worried. Worried I wasn't gonna like what I found, that maybe I was responsible for her death. It was killing me. I couldn't bring myself to face it all. Talk. If you ask me, everyone has something they're trying to hide from themselves. But sometimes, facing your fears is the only way forward. The real reason you came to me is because, deep down, you wanted to know the truth. That sound about right? That's still true. We have our work cut out for us. We're gonna chase the truth as far as we can, even if it's in vain. Yeah, but all our paths are blocked. Who the hell cares? We'll blaze our own path then. Right, Tuck? <laughs> yeah. You guys are out of your goddamn minds. Mafuyu. What's up, Mafuyu? I need to speak with you about Morita. Wait, you're still here in town? Yes. I'm waiting at Tender. Do you think you could come meet me here? I... I think I'm being followed. What? It felt like someone was watching me all the way to the bar. I don't 
believe I'm imagining it. More of those bums the Ministry of Health hired? Or maybe one of the Chief Prosecutor's men. All right, I'll be right over. Thank you. I'm coming with. Igashi, keep an eye on Sugiura while we're gone. Huh? Why do... <sighs> Fine. Thanks for coming. How did it look outside? Did you see anyone suspicious? Not particularly. Seemed fine to me. Mind if I sit? What happened to your face? What? This? It's nothing. You said you wanted to talk to me about Morita? Yes. Specifically about how he acted tonight. It's hard to imagine the Morita I know doing that. It's almost like he's a different person. Almost like he cared more about politics than the law. Not surprising. He's right in the middle of this 89 mess. <sighs> Thing is, Morita is the reason I decided to become a prosecutor. When my mother was killed in a hit and run, he was there to give me courage, show me a way forward. I've heard. That said, as for why he has an interest in protecting 89, I might have an idea. Hmm? About 10 years ago, something happened to his family. Perhaps that's what changed him. Made him look the other way on this. What happened? Uh, hold on. I'm not entirely sure my theory is correct. It wouldn't be fair if I misrepresented the facts. However, I just spoke to a former police detective who handled that case. I'm about to get the case file from him. Where? We're meeting at the children's park. But it felt like I was being followed, so I didn't want to go alone. So, that's our job here? We're your bodyguards? Yes. At least, that was the plan. But seeing what already happened to you... You think a couple of scratches are gonna slow me down? We'll do it. Right, Doc? If you let us see the case file, what do you say to that? Of course. It's a deal, then. We'll be your escorts. Oof, that's cold. Extorting the poor girl? Guess chivalry's dead, Mafia-chan. Are you ready? The detective is waiting for us. Yeah, let's do it. Thank you. Well, do you see anyone? Not yet. There. Guess you were right on the money, Mafia Chan. Looks like they want to fight, too. Yep. Those aren't let's chat over some coffee faces. So what? Are they going to follow us the whole way like that? What should we do? You back off a bit. We'll take care of them. Let's go, Kaito-san. You got this! <laughs> Ma for you! What happened? Yogami-kun, keep going! Hell yeah! What, no love for me, Mafia-chan? Hang in there too, Kaito-san! Now, we're talking! All right, 
Mafuchan's watching. So let's not screw this up. This is the place. He should already be here. You said he's an ex-detective, right? Yes. Let's roll the top. Uzawa-san, yes? Yep, that's me. Huh? 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 You're the detective from before. Oh shit, Yagami. You used to be on the force? How'd you end up so scruffy? I gotta ask you the same thing. Y you two know each other? Why'd you bring these chatterheads along? Uh, well, uh, Yagami-kun, he's... He's sort of my boyfriend. What? Since when? It's not like that. Then why are you blushing? It's comedy hour over here. So? What do we have in the case? Ten years ago, Chief Prosecutor Morita's older brother strangled their mom to death. But why? A caretaker murder. Their mother was over 70 at the time, afflicted with a severe case of Alzheimer's. And they were taking care of her. Yeah. It's hard to say what a dementia patient will do if you take your eye off them, even for a second. She apparently used to leave the stove on after she cooked, or wander out in the middle of the night. None of the homes had any openings for her either. Ultimately, Morita's brother took care of their mom by himself. Seems he put the burden entirely on his own back. He quit his job and moved in with their mother, all to ensure Morita was free to do his duty as chief prosecutor. He barely took breaks, barely slept, for seven whole years before the incident. All he got from his mother in return was abuse. Verbal, and sometimes physical. The hell'd she do that for? It's a side effect of dementia, though not all patients exhibit it. Some cases can be suppressed, but it doesn't always work out. At the time of the incident, Morita's brother was in the midst of a serious mental breakdown. I had to guess, he'd probably been about to break for months. And the result was him murdering his own mother. Whatever became of him after all that? Ah, uh, well, not long afterward, he tried to hang himself and failed. So they suspended his sentence until he was more stable. And where is he now? It says here he died a year later. By his own hand. Dude. After everything his brother did, Morita was removed from the spotlight for a while. But it seems that's all in the past now. Everyone recognizes him as an unquestionable leader on the Force. So then, Morita blames Alzheimer's for all the suffering his family faced. Most likely, yes. The tragedy could have been prevented if only 89 had existed at the time. And once it does, who knows how many situations just like it could be avoided. With a tragedy like that, no wonder he's defending it. He's sure as hell not in it for the cash. Not for reputation, either. The guy's just doing what he thinks needs to be done. I suppose I can understand that. Huh? You can? Hmm? Huh? You think that excuses everything that monster has done? He framed Ayabe. Turned a blind eye to Emi-chan's murder. Left Okubo-kun out in the cold. All because this fucking drug needs to get fast-tracked? How can you begin to think that's right? How? If Morita can decide what needs to be done, then so can we. I'm gonna protect every last person they've trampled. I'm gonna get revenge for Emi-chan. Interesting. <laughs> what is? Oh, 
<laughs> it's just, uh, really obvious you used to be a lawyer. Used to? I've still got my badge. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hey, lay off the gambling, yeah? You lose more than you win. <laughs> Whatever you say. Yagami-kun, I think it'd be best if you hold on to these files. Yota, make sure she gets home safe, will you? Hey, since we're close, do you mind if we drop in on salary? Oh, sure. What's up? Oh. No reason. She just likes seeing the two of us together. Oh, uh, what now? Uh, whatever. I was gonna go fill her in on what happened tonight anyway. Why? Kido never would have ended up in Kamurocho if not for Saori. And her honey trap. A honey trap? You can't be serious. I, um... Uh, Yagami-san, I didn't realize you'd be stopping by. Awfully suspicious. Just what were you two up to in here? Um, not much. Guess we should go then. Hey, how did everything go with Keto? Hold on, I want to know what you two were up to first. Well, Hoshino-kun was just... Okay, 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 this is all just a big misunderstanding. Or maybe not? Or maybe it is. Maybe you'll get further next time. Is it just me, or is sorry san enjoying this? Oh, yeah. I've heard. It's horrible what happened to Morita's mother. So the prosecution is all working to protect AD-9? The chief prosecutor is, at the very least. This is all my fault. I'm the one who told Morita that Yagami-kun would be there. If I had only gone to Izumita instead... Don't think like that. There's no knowing who's on what side. We can't trust anyone except ourselves. But... Um, can I say something real quick? I'm not sure I'm the best person to be defending Ayabe. Not against an enemy this powerful. Well, what do you mean? Agreed. Hoshino-kun can't handle the pressure. It has to be you, Yagami-san. Oh, ha ha. Real funny. This isn't a joke. We're dead serious. Please, Yagami-san. We're going up against the people who murdered Emi-san. Do it for her. For Okubo-san. And for Shintani-sensei. It's time for you to show the world what you think is right. No more running. Yeah, I guess so. I'll let Genda Sensei and Ayabe san know right away. This is bound to make headlines. I can see it now. Disgraced lawyer Yagami Sensei makes his triumphant courtroom return. All right, do we really need the disgraced part? But, all right. If they both agree, I'll defend Ayabe. Guess I'll need to start digging up some more evidence. Shall we? Can you stay with me until I find my taxi? Thank you for helping me tonight, Yagami-kun. Huh? Uh, one second. 
It's Izumira. Now that I think about it, he left a message earlier, too. Did you listen to it? Yes. He said he wanted to talk. It sounds like he's at Majore. Majore, huh? Guess he wanted coffee instead of booze. What should we do? You don't have to do anything. Go home where you're safe. Izumita might be on their side, too. But... I'll go instead. You? Really? I'll be fine. All right. Stay safe out there. Yagami, what are you doing here? Did you come alone? <sighs> yeah. Good. I sent Mafia you home. I could go for a chat and a coffee, though. Sorry, not interested. What did you have to tell Mafia you? It has nothing to do with you. Oh, then how about I guess? Huh? The reason you wanted to talk to her was... You were going to tell her to join forces with Morita. What? Am I wrong? I see what you're getting at. What happened with the chief prosecutor and the Ministry of Health bureaucrat? It wasn't normal. Not normal? That's a bit of an understatement. They want to protect 89 so bad, they ignored evidence of a murder under their noses. You're working with them too, aren't you? What are you implying? Chief Prosecutor Morita is part of a conspiracy to push 89 through, no matter the cost. Do you have proof of that? This. I got it from Mafuyu. It's a case file detailing a domestic murder within Morita's family. Sound familiar? This is the first I'm hearing of it. I'll give it to you. If you have the strength to fight. Excuse me? What happens if you find out I'm telling the truth? How far will you go, Izumira? Would you be willing to bring your own boss to justice? Of course. Ask a hundred prosecutors and they'd answer the same way. Huh. <laughs> Maybe you're not as bad as I thought. This incident is what gave Morita motivation to support 89. That's how I see it, at least. This is tragic. Yeah. His sick mom strangled to death by his own brother. <sighs> Morita's doing what he thinks is right in all this. That's why he suppressed evidence earlier. Back at Shono's lab, I mean. <sighs> the mole killed countless people there. It's only natural there'd be traces left behind. Our case would be practically bulletproof if we found them. It's just, I... I can't believe he would do this. The way he acted at the lab, we have to believe he's wrapped up in this. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> Izumira. I... I guess I can't deny that. Right? But if he really is trying to protect 89... How do we stop him? What can we even do? Well, I was planning to use Aibe's trial to bring all the dark truths about 89 out into the light. That's why I chased Hamura down. Why I needed to find Shono's lab. But, Ichinose and Morita crushed those leads before they really even took off. And you don't have the ammo to stop them. <sighs> it hurts to hear the truth laid out like that. But, it is a relief knowing you're not on their side, believe it or not. 
Not sure this is the time to be relieved. <sighs> yeah, I know. Hey. Hmm? I was wondering. You think we could get Ichinose to testify? Get him called to the stand? Under what pretense? I don't know. Maybe to explain 89? It could be anything, really. He can't say no if the prosecution requests him, right? Then, what do we do once we have him there? We corner him eloquently. Shower him with questions until he gives up. Me and you both. Oh, wait, that's your big plan? Hey, desperate times call for desperate measures. We don't have a chance of winning if we're not willing to take some risks. Okay, I'm in. I'll let you know once I've made the arrangements. <sighs> what a day. So basically, it's up to Izumita whether or not Ichinose shows at the trial. The question now is, how do we press Ichinose once he's there? Before we get too far, Genda-sensei and Ayabe are both on board with Yagami-san representing the defense. The lousiest lawyer ever, back in the court. <laughs> Looks like it. Now, let's talk about our next steps. First on the agenda, though. <laughs> what do we call Sugiura now? That's your next step? It was, uh, Terasawa, yeah? I'm fine with Sugiura. Why change it up now? Fair enough. Um, speaking of next steps, I'd like to try putting some pressure on Kido again. Maybe we could use the video Sari-san helped us get to force him into testifying for us. Good plan. Anyone else? This doesn't have anything to do with the case, but some shit's going down in the Matsugane family. We can talk about it right after this, Yagami. Roger that. What's up? Just so you know, I'm gonna go talk to Okubo soon. He still thinks Emi-chan's family hates him for what happened. I need him to know that's not true. If that's okay with you. Sure, I'm fine with it. You said something's going down with the Matsugane family? Yep, it's all pretty much gone to shit. After the Patriarch died, everyone just kind of went their separate ways. Especially the younger guys. Is anyone trying to hold the family together? Guy named Kengo, yeah. You beat the stuffing out of him once or twice, remember? He was one of Captain Hamura's golden boys. There's kind of something up with him, though. What? You'll see when we get there. Want to tag along? Well, you want to check on the family with me? Sure, let's do it. Sorry for asking you to do this, Yagami. The family's a real mess right now. Sure you don't want to bring Kaito-san along? He got expelled, remember? They wouldn't even let him through the door. Right. Anyway, let's go. Doubt I can stop them all on my own. Stop them? What do you mean? Just come on. Yo, Kengo. Higashi Anaki. Finally went and brought me Yagami-san, huh? Huh? Easy. It's okay. Need something from me? Our patriarch is dead. And I hear you've got this scoop on who did it. 
You know who the mole is. And I want you to tell us. So you want revenge? We don't just want it. We need to get it. All part of being a Yakuza. You're gonna massacre the son of a bitch! You can't handle it. The fuck you say to me?! I've told them that already, but they won't listen. So what do you want me to do? I mean, you're a lawyer, yeah? Isn't persuasion your job? You can't worm your way out of this. Tell us who the mole is! Or do you need a little encouragement? Kingo! I'm rebuilding this family one way or another. Now stand the fuck down, Ariki! God damn! All right. If you want to know that bad, I'll tell you. Huh? But... Who is he? Kuroiwa. From the Tokyo PD. Organized crime. Bastard's a cop. Doesn't end with him, though. Kuroi was just a tool for the people really behind all this. They're not afraid of some small-time Yakuza thugs. <laughs> oh, shut up. That's why I'm gonna beat them myself, in court. <laughs> you... You seriously think you can do that? <laughs> Matsukane-san was like a father to me for the last 20 years. I knew him longer than you guys. I want revenge as bad as you. Maybe more. Can you let me handle this one? I owe you one, Yagami. Don't mention it. Later. Killing Kuroiwa wouldn't accomplish shit. He's just the tip of this whole fucked up iceberg. Let Yagami do this. You might even want to consider helping him. Yo. Sorry, Higashi pulled you into that. Are you spying on me? Not too hard when you've got a drone. <laughs> I guess not, no. Anyways, with Matsugane-san gone, the family's been drifting in the wind like a kite without a string. Looks like you brought him back down to Earth, though. Thanks, man. Uh, you hit your head or something? Yeah, yeah, make your jokes. Just don't say I never said it. Right. I'd like to talk to Kido if possible. He'd make a valuable witness in Ayabe's trial. We've got some dirt on him, too. Yeah, thanks to Saori san's little adventure. He won't be able to turn us away once we remind him of that. Yagami san, are you ready to go to the ADDC? Sure. Let's do it. We'll need to take a taxi to the ADDC, right?
I knew it would all work out. What do you mean? Seeing Kido without an appointment. That video has some serious power. You can thank Sari-san for that. Afternoon. Sorry to barge in. We know you're busy. Take a seat. <sighs> well, let's get straight to the point. We'd like to call you to the stand as a witness in Ayabe's trial. That's not possible. Would this change your mind? You've made me a very happy man today. But we have some real fun now that the interview's out of the way, hmm? My little minx. Do what you will. Wait, really? Ichinose is unstoppable, and my testimony won't change that. You're up against everyone who stands to gain from 89, including patients who it would save, and their families. You can't win. Not how things stand, no. But that's exactly why we need your testimony. I have no obligation to help you. If you truly want to release the video, release it. You are aware of the consequences that would have, right? I'll become the laughing stock of the scientific world. My career will be over. But I'd rather that than make an enemy of Ichinose. I'm not ready to die just yet. How can we change your mind? You're in the middle of this whole 89 mess. But you never actually killed anyone yourself. We might be able to argue for a lighter sentence. Absolutely not. You can't convince me to sign my own death warrant. Are you really that scared of him? Of course. Losing my job is a much more appealing proposal than losing my life. Nobody's dying if we can help it. We can protect you. Don't you understand? No matter what I say, you can't win this trial. But if I open my mouth, I'll have to live the rest of my life in fear. Until the day they finally finish the job. Did you talk to Ichinose after Kuroi will rescue you from the arcade? I have nothing to say about that. Now leave me alone. <sighs> Damn it. We're not getting anywhere. You shouldn't fight a battle you can't win. I would never have gotten where I am today without that bit of advice. So you don't think we can beat him? Do you even have a shred of evidence? Oh, well, I suppose you did. But Ichinose-san took it right out of your hands. Can't you see how weak you are compared to him? You don't have a chance in hell of winning this case! Well, you're right. <laughs> For now, I guess. It's easy to tell how the case will go. We just don't have quite enough evidence yet. There's no way we'll take down Ichinose with what we've got at the moment. I appreciate the advice. Not yet, Yagami-san. He's trying to take us for fools. I can make him talk for sure. All we have to do is push the video to- We'd be wasting our time. You can't say that if you don't try. Come on, Yagami-san. I said we're not doing it. Please, just, just give it a shot. If the video doesn't work, then we'll find some other way to- There's no point. No point? That's enough of the tough detective act. You can't run. Hoshino! <sighs> I never said anything about running away, okay? But... I just... I don't want to lose. I thought I could help you. <laughs> Having a falling out, are we? Shut up! <laughs> Why 
Once I have my proof, I'll be back. <laughs> and when you do, I will gladly cooperate. Not that I'm expecting much. You want to go see Yokobo, Yagami-san? Yeah. I wish you could come too, but civilians can't get that kind of clearance. It's okay. It is how it is. You ready to see Yokobo? Yeah. It's time to clear the air. Yagami-san, can you give Okubo a message for me? Sure. What's up? Once he gets out, I want to go visit Emmy's grave with him. <laughs> That's a pretty big deal. There's a lot we have to take care of before we can even get to that, though. Yeah. Otherwise Okubo will get executed and never have his name cleared. We'll fix it. Don't worry. I hope you're right. We can't let him die in there. Agreed. I'll give him the message. I don't believe this. You're serious? Yeah. He told us his name was Sugiura at first. Fumiya-kun. You know, I only met him once, before Emmy's death. Both of us were a little shy, though, so... We didn't really talk. I can still remember... How he glared at me during the trial. And how... I couldn't even look him in the eye. By the way, he told me to tell you something. Huh? He said he wanted... He wants to visit Emmy's grave with you. I see. He really wants to do that? With me? Yeah. I'd like to take him up on that. Ayabe's trial is coming up. We're gonna snare the guy behind 89. A man from the Ministry of Health by the name of Ichinose. Can you do it though? For real? Yeah. The prosecutor's on my side too. Ichinose won't stand a chance. I'll tell them you're innocent too. I gave up on that a long time ago. I thought no one would hear me. No matter how loud I scream, I thought I'd die branded a murderer. But if Fumiya-kun understands, maybe there's still a chance. If the guy who hated me most forgives me, maybe everyone else will too. I'll get you out of here. I promise. Welcome back, Yagami-san. Hey, man. How's the prep going for Ayabe's trial? Not bad. I've gone everywhere I wanted to go, at least. So, you ready to do this, then? There's no going back after this. Well, when you put it like that... So, you ready to get this rolling? Yeah, I'm good to go. Gotcha. By the way, uh... I just got a call from Hoshino-kun. Sounded gloomy as hell. Apparently, he wants you to talk to Genda-sensei over at the office when you get a minute. Oh? He didn't say what about, though. Anyway, I'm just the messenger. Catch you later. Yo. Hmm? You get called in, too? Yep. Just walked in. Is Hoshino-kun not back yet? Not yet, no. Is something the matter? No, not really. Over here, Yagami. 
Something you wanted to discuss, Genda Sensei? No, not me. Him. Prosecutor Izumira. They've got men monitoring every nook and cranny of your agency. Figured it'd be safer to talk here. More bad news? Is that how you treat a guest? And no, it's good news. Guess it can't be all bad. Ichinose will testify at the trial. So, you convinced him, huh? Run into any trouble? No, it went fairly smoothly. So, you want me to explain 89? Yes, at the upcoming trial. And by that you mean the one for the murdered lawyer? That's right. Before his death, that lawyer made a phone call to Dr. Shono. Of course, we have no reason to believe that call had anything to do with the killing. Dr. Shono in 89? Involved in a murder? <laughs> it's quite far-fetched, if you ask me. A preposterous notion. <laughs> Indeed. However, that doesn't change the fact that the call was made. And so we'll need to explain in court just why it can't be related. Hmm. Ah. And don't worry. You won't need to say a word about the call itself. Just explain the situation. 89 is a drug of global importance, and Dr. Shono and his team have put immense effort into its development. Once you've explained, I'm sure it'll clear the air. Yes, I see. I'm not sure I can portray it accurately, though. I'm not a scientist, after all. If you would be more comfortable, we could always call Dr. Shono to the stand. But his language may in fact be too complicated. I'm not sure our jurors would understand. If possible, I'd prefer it were you up there, Ichinose-san. You have a point. It would be foolish to take up Dr. Shono's time with such an insignificant matter. Very well, I'll do it. Contact the Ministry of Health when the trial date is decided. Thank you very much, sir. If you'll excuse me, I have another meeting to get to. Nice going. You made it sound like if Ichinose didn't testify, Shono would. It worked. Ichinose didn't want to risk Shono getting in there and slipping up. Can't trust anyone to do it but himself. Good work, Izumira. Turns out you can be pretty devious when you want to be. Devious? Really? I'm kidding. Really, I can't thank you enough. We'll have Ichinose out in the open thanks to you. All we have to do now is find a way to corner him. What about Hamura from the Matsugane family? Can we ask him to testify? Mm, he's still on the run. Guy couldn't even be bothered to come to his patriarch's funeral. Of course not. How could he after what he did? Hey, I got an idea. Why don't we just grab Kuroiwa and get him to confess to being the mole? You do remember the beating he gave you last time, right? I let my guard down, that's all. Cut it out, you two. Come on, guys. We've got Ichinose right where we want him. We just need to figure out what to do next. You're not gonna win empty-handed, you know. It's Mafuyu. What's up? Ayabe's casino is getting raided by the police. Lamont? Now? Yeah. They just started. Morita is setting the wheels in motion. They've already arrested most of the employees. I get it. It's a character assassination. A crooked cop running an illegal casino. No surprise if he commits a murder, too. The chief prosecutor is hitting us where it hurts. Right. Just wanted to give you a heads up. So... How's it looking, Yagami-kun? Do you think you can win? I'll do the best I can. The good news is, I have a lot of help. Thanks for the call, Mafuyu. Of course. See ya. Morita's here in Kamurocho. 
blowing the lid off Ayabe's casino. In that case, I'd better get going. He's not gonna come here. Well, better safe than sorry. Huh. If they're raiding the casino, Kuroi was probably there too. What do you want to do, Tuck? The chief prosecutor's made his move. Probably wouldn't hurt to stop by and say hello. We know all about him now. You sure this is a good idea? He's not the kind of guy you mess around with. Don't worry. We just want to check in. Let's roll, Tuck. I'm Ayabe's lawyer. Let me through. Sorry, no lawyers allowed yet. Well done, but let him pass. I'll vouch for him personally. Chief Prosecutor? Thanks. Were you aware there was an underground casino hidden down here, Yagami-san? Wow, I had no idea. <laughs> Our friend Ayabe was really something, wasn't he? Who would have thought he'd take bribes from an illicit underground casino? Not to mention selling confidential police intel to the criminal underbelly of this town. Shintane-sensei surely stumbled upon Ayabe's secret. And so Ayabe killed him to make sure the truth stayed hidden. Quickly, with a police-issued handgun. I see. That's the story the prosecution is telling, huh? We can speak further once we get inside. I've learned a lot about you, Chief Prosecutor. About the tragedy in your family ten years ago. Then someone has betrayed me? Someone you betrayed. Someone who trusted you for years. I have to say, it was strange seeing how you behaved in Shono's lab. A public prosecutor, the so-called Defenders of Justice, chose to protect 89 over the sanctity of the law. I think it's time you drop the act. My mother, she was afflicted with early onset Alzheimer's. The disease progressed quickly. Not long after she started showing symptoms, she couldn't even recognize my face. Whenever I went to visit her, I was greeted with, Nice to meet you, as if she didn't know who I was. Occasionally she'd yell at me, accuse me of being a thief or a murderer. Watching my mother's mind deteriorate, well, it nearly broke me. And yet my brother continued caring for her. He was there when I couldn't be, all by himself. When we were young, he and I had both dreamt of becoming lawyers. He devoted himself to his studies, far better than I ever did. Practically worked himself to the bone. 
Yet, ultimately, he never managed to pass the bar. I can only imagine how he felt when I passed on my first attempt. And yet, he was happy for me, almost as if my success was his. He was truly a good man. Please, go on. When we learned that my mother had Alzheimer's, my brother was devastated by the news. He took it hard. I, on the other hand, was filled with internal conflict. I was torn between caring for my ailing mother and continuing my burgeoning career as a lawyer. But my brother could sense how I felt. And then he said to me, Don't worry. Leave mom to me. Your success is all that matters. As long as you make it, my dream comes true too. And so, he continued caring for our mother for seven long years, 24 hours a day, a woman who couldn't even recognize him as her own son. Whereas I ran further and further away. But somewhere, deep down in my heart, I knew it couldn't continue that way. That someday, he would break. And the regret you feel, that failure, is what led you to 89. When was it? After Shintani sends his murder. Not long after, Vice Minister Ichinose summoned me personally to fill me in on the details. He did? But why? Ichinose-san predicted that the prosecutor's office would discover the dark truth about 89 before long. And upon looking into some family histories, he discovered what happened to my mother. When he realized the extent of it, he knew I would be sympathetic to their cause. His proposal was quite clear. 89 was a groundbreaking new drug, meant to save countless suffering patients and families. But if it was to see the light of day, I would have to look the other way for a while. Prosecutor Morita, have you heard this saying before? Hmm? Fire tempers iron, and temptation steals the just. If someone told you they knew how to make mankind immortal at the sacrifice of a few, you would have looked the other way no matter how many people had to die. I do feel guilt. I can't deny that. That's the only reason I'm still here. Shono has killed people to cover this up. Emi Terasawa died for it. What about her? Did she deserve that? Meanwhile, Shinpei Okuba was falsely convicted and sentenced to death. He wakes up every day not knowing if it's his last. What did he do to deserve that? Your guilt is nothing more than an act. Do you even realize what it is you're doing? That's enough. How do you think your brother would feel if he saw what you were doing now? Huh? Tell me, Morita! Shut up! Just... Shut up! If you want me to shut up, you're gonna have to kill me. Morita, Okubo Kun and Ayabe are depending on me. Emi Terasawa deserves justice, too. And I'm not stopping until I get it! Hey, Tak. Kuroi was here. I believe that's enough, Morita-san. Long time no see. Seems you're already back in action. <laughs> Guess I went too easy. You little... So, another two versus one fight? Is Yagami joining us? What are you doing here? I suggest you turn a blind eye to this. 
You're good at that, aren't you? Kaito-san. Think you could stay out of this? Like hell I will. You already had your turn. Kuroiwa killed Matsugane-san. And well, it's about time I pay him back for what he did. <sighs> Touching words, Yagami-san. But now is the time for action. And don't worry. I won't arrest you for obstruction on this. Don't talk to me about arrests. You're not even a cop. You're a goddamn assassin! You little... I'm done with this! I'm gonna fucking kill you. Calm down. How would you even cover this up? There are limits to how much protection I can offer you. You have no reason to be here. Kaito san, let's go. Guys are Matsugane family, aren't they? <laughs> Damn right. They're probably worried about you or something. Afraid the 89 boys would come try to erase you, you know? What? Hey! There he is! Come on. We're out of here. Hoshino-kun. Yagami-san. When I heard you were here with Morita and Kuroiwa, I, um... I get it. You're the one who called Higashi over, aren't you? That's right. If I hadn't, who knows what dirty tricks they would have used. I couldn't take that risk. <laughs> I appreciate that, Hoshino. And... and... I'm really sorry for what happened in Kido's office. I was out of line. You deserve trust. And I didn't give it. Yagami-san, I messed up. What I did was unacceptable. Threatening a witness is just... It's not how I want to go about winning this case, Yagami-san. Got one thing to say, Hoshino. What? Iron burns temptation, while the just are often tested by fire. Huh?
Wait. Get back here! Tom. What's going on? What the hell was that? He's got a black raincoat. Who are you? Tori wrote this, huh? Yep. Said he tried to get it out just in time for today's trial. Illegal human experiments discovered in Kamarucho. Dementia drug AD9, the focus. These pictures... I took them when we broke into Shono's lab. <laughs> nice work. Guess it's almost time. Defendant, please state your name and date of birth for the record. Kazuya Ayabe, born on July 2nd, 1983. And where are you currently residing? This is the first trial for the murder of Masamichi Shintani. Defendant, a crooked cop by the name of Kazuya Ayabe. The bullet found in Shintani's body bore the rifling marks from Ayabe's gun. That's the most significant piece of evidence they have against him. But that was all a cover-up perpetrated by the mole, Kuroiwa. Ayabe is innocent. In other words, this trial is little more than a farce. At least, until this very moment. The prosecution moves to call a witness to the stand. Someone who can deny this case's link to the ADDC. The Vice Minister of the Ministry of Health, Kaoru Ichinose. The ADDC bears most of the responsibilities carried out by the Medical Institute. Most notably, the development of AD9, which was announced to the world last year. Director Kido has done a fine job overseeing its evolution into a matter of national import. Can you tell the court what exactly AD9 is? It's a revolutionary drug meant to be a complete cure for Alzheimer's disease. 
Given how pressing the drastic increase in dementia patients is, we've placed great faith and hope into AD9. Thank you. I have no further questions. Members of the jury, despite the defense's claims that the ADDC is somehow related to this case, the prosecution holds that it is an absurdity to link such a reputable institution to the horrible murder that took place not long ago. That is all. You may begin the cross-examination, counsel. You're the vice minister of the Ministry of Health, correct? Pretty high rank. That is what the title implies, yes. You must have really stood out to attain that position. Maybe you did something extra special that got you noticed? I'm not sure how this is relevant to the case at hand. Oh, come now. Why not indulge him? What? Think back to 2002, the year the Medical Institute was founded. I hear you spearheaded that whole operation. As a result, many new organizations came into being, the ADDC included. Naturally, many Ministry of Health officials welcomed this move because... You made numerous new positions for senior executives to retire into. Thanks to you, they'd have a stable income well into old age. Is this really the place to be discussing such accusations? This center, that lab, who cares what hospital? Consultancy positions sprung up for those facilities left and right. And who better to fill them than former Ministry of Health execs? They'd never have to worry about finding employment again. It was a crafty move, Ichinose-san. One I'm sure the ministry leadership loved you for. I can see why you ended up vice minister. However, the good times didn't last forever. In the months and years after its founding, people slowly caught on to the Medical Institute's total lack of output. And with the country in a recession, they started zeroing in on the Institute's funding. The vast amounts of money being poured into supporting it seemed like nothing more than a waste. Before long, closing the Institute outright didn't seem out of the question. Plans were even set in motion to redevelop the land once it was gone. Rumor had it that Minister Kazumi had actually approved those plans internally. Hmm. Are all your arguments going to be based on hearsay? Speaking of hearsay, Kamurocho has been buzzing with talk of this murderer who gouges people's eyes out. That killer is an assassin I've termed the Mole. But the truth of it is, those murders are the result of human experiments for 89, carried out in a secret lab in the heart of the city. This is all purely gossip. Members of the jury, 89's development is about to enter the clinical trial phase. However, ADDC researchers have already carried out clinical trials behind closed doors. Several people have died as a result. What? Of course, they tried to keep that a secret, but it eventually found its way out. And I have the evidence to prove it. Take a look at this. <sighs> the victim in this case, Shintani-sensei, was inching ever closer to the truth. That's why he called the ADDC. Isn't that right, Ichinose-san? Please elaborate to the jury what exactly you mean by that. Not long before his death, Shintane-sensei was told the secret by Captain Hamura of the Matsugane family. A secret that led him right to the ADDC. This secret was that someone from the ADDC was connected to the serial murders taking place in Kamurocho. 
And so, Shintani-sensei called the center and asked specifically for a researcher named Shono, the man spearheading the 89 human experiments. Enough of this nonsense! Human experimentation! Don't be ridiculous! What kind of trial is being run here? How can he say whatever he wants without a single piece of evidence? Why doesn't the prosecution stop him? Sorry. <laughs> I was enjoying hearing what he had to say. Have you lost your mind? Ichinose-san, I'm not finished with my line of questioning. Excuse me? Actually, it's more of a confirmation than a question. <sighs> Do you know who Shinpei Okubo is? Yes. He's the murderer you set free three years ago. I set him free, yes. But he's not a murderer. The one who actually killed Wakusan and Emi Terasawa was the same Shono I mentioned earlier. This garbage again? Don't act like you don't already know all of this. You're just not coming clean. Even though Okubo-kun sitting on death row, waiting for the day they decide it's his turn. Enough! I was only asked here to explain to the jury about AD-9 and the ADDC. How dare you treat me like this! You and Shono hired the Mole to murder for you! That was the only way you'd have patience for your underground human experiments. And all to protect the interests of AD-9. You can't make these claims without proof! Show me your evidence! If you say so. What? Just the other day, someone reached out to me over in Kamurocho. They wanted to entrust me with a crucial piece of information. Hmm? Who are you? <sighs> what the... Captain Hamura? The hell are you doing here? Sorry sight, wasn't it? Huh? Matsugane's funeral. They had to go and use HQ's gigantic hall. Made it look like barely anyone even bothered to show up. Wish I could have gone and lit some incense. But if I did, Kuroiwa would have taken me out. Yeah? Then what are you doing here? Talk, you found Shono's lab, right? Good job. Those bastards never wanted to tell me where it was. Didn't think you could do it. Maybe. But Ichinose is covering the whole damn thing up. <laughs> Out of options, huh? I thought giving up wasn't your style. Here's the deal. I got something for you. What? Gotta settle accounts. What accounts? Never mind. But holding on to this does nothing for me. So, I want to help you out here. Just this once. For the boss, give him justice. If there was any justice, I'd have gotten shot. But the boss paid the price instead. Fucked up, yeah? None of this was his fault. I already lost my chance. You, on the other hand, still may have one. Hamura. This is it. You're the boss's only shot now. Put an end to this. Once and for all. I think you'll like what you find on here. This is decisive evidence. It'll nail Ichinose.
Your Honor, I offer the data I received into evidence. Take a listen to this. Did you tell someone about Shono? That lawyer, Shintani. Word has it, he just called the ADDC. Well, uh, yeah, I might have said something, but it's fine. Shintani will keep quiet if I tell him to. How can you be so naive? This is unacceptable. You must deal with this Hamura-san immediately. Do what needs to be done. Have Kuroiwa-san handle the dirty details. It'll cost you another hundred mil. This mistake was yours and yours alone. Don't anger me further. This Kuroiwa-san is a Kamuro PD detective. But when he's not out on his beat, he works as the Mole, an assassin for hire. In this call, you used Hamura to order Kuroiwa to murder Shintani-sensei. Hmm. <laughs> you should have known better, Ichinose-san. I imagine you must have been pretty panicked to use such an insecure method. Audio means nothing. Forging it is a simple task. You're framing me. So, you think that's not enough? That's right. Then what if I had a material witness who could attest to its validity? I'd say, bring them. Perfect. Just a minute. Not who you expected? <clears throat> Witness, who is speaking in this recording? I'm one of them. The other is Vice Minister Ichinose here. Without a doubt. <sighs> yes. Order in the court. Izumida, where is the chief prosecutor? Is he aware of this farce? About that, sir. The Chief Prosecutor won't be joining us in court today. Or ever again. What? It turns out he's been abetting crimes for some time now. And so... We're charging him with abuse of power. Kido's up next. Right after my testimony. What? The doctor sides with whoever he thinks will win. And look at that. Guess he thinks you're on the losing side. Listen here. You pushed countless people down on your way to the top. Now it's your turn to fall, Ichinose. <clears throat> Kaito-san! Already going! What the hell was that about? Where's he going? Hoshiro-kun, it's all on you now. What? You've always wanted to handle a case on your own, right? Huh? Sorry to spring this on you, but good luck. Please, don't go! I know you can do it, Hoshiro-kun. It's time you graduate from the sidekick role, you know? But... Are you ready to proceed? Um... The defense is ready, Your Honor. Kaito-san! Got this asshole handing out orders over the phone. 
<laughs> Orders. What did he say? He told his boys to eliminate the mole. They'd eliminate him? Wait. They're gonna kill Kuroiwa. <laughs> Guess in the end, he's just a tool for them to, you know, dispose of. But we're done for if we let that happen. Yeah. He's gotta be over in Kamurocho. Come on. Sugiro's pulling the car around now. Damn it. It's Yagami. I'm almost back in the city. Any idea where Kuroiwa is? Not yet. We're having trouble getting in touch with him. Oh, and... I'm not sure if this is related, but there's been a shooting in Theater Square. What? I wonder if Croy was involved somehow. Stop! Come on! He's over here! These guys don't seem like regular thugs. Guess these are ministry boys, huh? If they get in your way, don't hesitate to make them pay for it. Now don't stop till you get to Theater Square! I've been waiting for this. You deaf? He said stop! You want to bet this is Kuroi was doing? Yeah, he did this. Killed them before they could kill him. Then, where'd the bastard run off to? <laughs> Hey. Sir, you can't just... Let's all just play nice, okay? Tell me, where did Kuroiwa go? <sighs> that bastard. He's on his way to the ADDC. What? <sighs> Probably gonna kill Shono. Revenge for getting targeted. He's gonna destroy AD9. <sighs> ruin every last person who supported it. <laughs> so all the assholes are gonna take each other out, huh? Not bad. No. If Shono dies, it's done. The whole case will end up going cold. And then we'll never be able to clear Okubo's name. Huh? <laughs> so let's go. 
Hey, Mafuyu. Can you send some officers to the ADDC? Shono's in danger. Get him somewhere safe. Man, this shit's a pain in the ass. Yeah. And keep an eye out for Kuroa. It's getting desperate. already here? What's going on? Where's Kuroiwa? Uh, uh, please, stop! It's okay, I'm a lawyer. Is Dr. Shono out of danger? Uh, we're not really sure of the situation ourselves. Didn't somebody tell you what's going on here? We've got orders coming in from all sides. I, I, I don't even know who's in charge here! Karoiwa! You're Yagami, aren't you? Out of my way. Not so fast. We need to check your possessions. Lift your arms up, now! And why's that, officer? To protect Dr. Shono from thugs like you! Now do it! Kuroi was the one going for Shono! You can't let him get away with this! Why won't you listen to us? Kuroi was the one you want! He's got a gun! We're done here! Kaito-san, Kuroi was heading for the research wake. We can't let him reach Shono's lab. <clears throat> now let's go! <laughs> All right. If you say so! <laughs> Corner him! Looks like we're all getting arrested today, huh? Yagami-san, I'll see you in court! <laughs> Kuroi wa Come on, Tuck. We'll deal with him later. All right. Looks like there's only one way out of this, guys. Let's go! to us. You go. Just get a move on already. Sugi or a two. Talk. Give that son of a bitch what for. So you want to fight, huh? I don't have time for this bullshit! That bastard. There's nothing he won't do. Damn it! The door's not opening! It's locked! Locked? Hmm. When I was here with Emichan. That's the research wing, where they develop all our new drugs. You can't get in without a gold key card, though. We need a gold key card. Let's find one. Security system activated. Three minutes to full lockdown.
suspicious. Sorry, buddy. I need to borrow this for a bit. I found one. We can get through the gate. Look! On the Skyway! The murdering them! We gotta put an end to this. Karoiwa! You okay, man? We're gonna need another way in. What about the underground parking lot? The same way we got in before. Good idea, Yagami-san. That'll get us into the hospital. We can get to the research wing from there. Especially now that we have the key card. That might work. Then we've gotta try. We can't let Kuroiwa get away with this. Damn right. Trying the short straw, huh? Don't give me your snark, punk. You're done for! I don't know how long I can keep doing this. But we can't stop. Not now. Yagami-san! What's wrong? <sighs> Just... a little dizzy. No surprise there. Are you okay, Yakubi-san? You're, uh... You're kind of bleeding a lot. Dunno. I'm not seeing the light at the end of the tunnel just yet, though. <laughs> Maybe you're better than you look. Come on, let's go. I did it. Nobody's gonna believe me. so hot, man. Hey, 
Yagami, you're never gonna last if you keep taking cases like this. Criminal suits are a constant test of your conviction, your sense of justice. They don't even pay that well. Look, just chill out, okay? Take it from me. I've been around the block way longer than you have. This is the right road, yeah? The sky will take us to the research room. is the one who'll suffer for it? If he's really not guilty, he won't have to. I'll win. But to be perfectly honest, this is my first criminal case. What? Civil cases have been a mixed bag for me, too. I've actually lost more than I've won. Is that so? Apparently, a smart lawyer would never even consider an innocent plea in this case. Guess it's a good thing that I'm not so smart then, because I honestly believe I can win. Please, Yagami-san. You need to help Okubokun. And my brother, too. <laughs> He's stubborn, but he means well. Yagami-san. Just now, I... I heard Emmy talking to me. It felt too real to just be my imagination. Did you notice anything? I can tell you all about it later. We've got work to do. Huh? It's time we stop Kuroiwa once and for all. Right. Huh. Whatever that fog over you was, looks like it's cleared. Use the keycard. You know, the gold one. This is where Shono is, right? If he hasn't been evacuated... His laboratory is just down this hallway. Meaning, Kuroi was waiting for us? Probably. Yagami-san! Shono! Kuroiwa. You just can't help but get in my way. Huh, Yagami? Put the gun down. Getting revenge isn't gonna do you any good. You should recognize it's all over by now. Revenge? <laughs> That's not what I'm here for. This rat comes with me. What? <laughs> Drop it! <laughs> 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 
Make sure you get some help. And what about you? Me and Kuroi were gonna settle this once and for all. <sighs> That's fine. Don't try and rush, just... hit him once for me. Yakumi-san. I will. We're here to rescue you, Shono. Not that I want to. Take care of him, okay? Yes, I can do that. Give it up. You're finished, Kuroiwa. You're wrong. This isn't the end! What do you mean? I have 89! As long as it exists, I will never surrender. Explain yourself. You told me that you were gonna keep Shono alive. Yeah. Shono and I... We're going to finish 89 together. I assure you he wants the same thing. That's how we'll be saved. Both of us. You really so sure you can accomplish that? Yeah, I'm sure of it! I'll show you. <laughs> Just you wait. We're going to finish. No matter how many test subjects it takes us to complete it. As long as we complete the cure, Shono and I will be praised as heroes. You're insane. <laughs> in that case, you can be our first subject in a long while. And when you die, which of course you will, I'll gouge out your eyes! Ah!
Look who went and made a new friend. They, uh, agreed not to put us behind bars, at least for now. But we're gonna need a lawyer, though. Telling him to stop's not gonna do shit. So no! For them anymore. Huh? What's that? This? It's a dose of AD9. See, I finally did it. What are you doing? AD9 is done now. Everything I have has gone into this one syringe. There's no mistaking it this time. Here's the proof. I'm going to show you once and for all. I'll prove that my miracle drug is a reality! How many people has your miracle killed? People. People? But it'll save millions, maybe tens of millions across the world. That's why you thought it was okay to murder an innocent woman? Huh? Is that why you stabbed her to death and burned the evidence? Okabo-kun took the fall for all of it. You sent a good man to die! I never wanted to kill anyone. But it had to happen for 89. It was the only way to save all of them! The toxin is irremovable. Use of 89 will always result in death. Shono-kun told me as much. Countless human experiments led him to that conclusion. In other words, AD-9's development has failed. But Shonokun didn't want to admit that. He couldn't say that it was over, that he had killed several people, that it was all for naught. And when exactly did Shono-san tell you all this? Only the other day. It was after hearing that, that I decided to testify in this trial. Save the world. That's your bullshit excuse, huh? I don't buy it. The reason you murdered Emi-chan was so you could save your own skin. If you really cared about helping people, you would have left your research to someone else instead of resorting to murder. But 89 is my drug. I'm the only one who could have finished it. And now I'll finally prove it. Prove that all my research was worth the effort. Prove that I was right to do what I did. Wait! 
For the longest time, my mother cared for both of my dementia-ridden grandparents. Once the disease had finally mercifully taken them, my mother died too. So you see, Alzheimer's has taken many loved ones away, even from me. <clears throat> but now, it won't be taking anyone else, ever again. My entire career as a researcher, all the time I spent developing AD9, Every single minute of it has led to this moment. But I... But why? When a patient is injected with AD9, they experience intense pain localized to the head, and their eyes become filled with a dark blue pigment. In the end, it's a gruesome death. As for the eyes, the toxins present in AD9 are what turns them blue. Shonokun admitted as much. Had that been noticed, it would have been clear proof of the experiments. And hence, every single corpse discovered in Kamarocho was found with the eyes removed. Shonokun disposed of them, all in an effort to hide the horrible truth of his failure. I can't thank you enough, Yagami-sensei. Next week, huh? That's soon. It'll be nice to be out after all these years. The, uh, the retrial for Emmy's case is coming up. Well, that'll be more of a formality than anything. And don't worry. Nobody believes you killed Emmy-chan anymore. Right. <laughs> You're already taking off? Actually, uh... I brought someone else who wants to talk to you today. Huh? Fumia... Kung... You can take it from here. You're welcome to stick around, you know? <laughs> nah. <laughs> Thanks for this, Yagami-san. So Shono and Kuroiwa are both dead, huh? And Nijinose and Morita are behind bars. 
Thanks to Yagami's agency, yes. Things may be somewhat hectic from now on, though. The health ministry is in turmoil, as is the ADDC. Yes. The center will likely be shut down. In the end, I suppose things worked out for Kajahira. That's unacceptable. Well, you're in luck, Saurikun. Sounds like they're investigating his collusion with Minister Kazumi. The police are already on the case. Everyone tries, but you can't escape the law. I suppose all bad deeds will come to light eventually. Yeah, you got that right. Oh, and speaking of... Yes? I'm no senile old fool. Your little fling is clear as day. Huh? I'll have none of that in my office, is that clear? Oh. <laughs> I had no idea, sir. There's nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> well, you kids are all the same. Never listen to an old fart like me. Though it's not like we're any better, huh? <laughs> Always ignoring our elders. Right? Old friend. You know, I really wouldn't mind you going back. I mean, back to being an attorney again. It's not like we got work coming in. Maybe I could find a job at another agency or something. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm not gonna abandon our business like that, man. But this is your chance to be an upstanding citizen again. Come on, man, you know how much of a gaping shithole this city is. Only a dumbass would be a detective here. Well, thank you very much. Kaito sounds right, though, you know? I mean, just think about it. People would line up just to have you represent them. It shouldn't even be a question. You think so? Of course I think so. <laughs> Gendo sensei would love to have you back at his office. And, um, I'm sure Matsugane-san would agree with him. Yep. She's right, man. Everything's led up to this point. It's like your story circling back around. There's this fancy French word. Uh, starts with a D. This is your... Your denouement? That's it! Would you two give it a rest? Huh? Uh, I quit. I'm not a lawyer anymore. I'm a detective. But funny enough, if I hadn't left Gendas, I never would have proven Okobo-kun innocent. Well, yes, I suppose that's true. Pretty damn ironic. It's been three years now, since I abandoned the truth and left my job as a lawyer. But it turned out that decision led me straight to the truth I tried to run away from. Guess it goes to show, you never know where your choices will take you. It's destiny. That's what you guys were saying just now, right? So, no matter what decisions you might make, what comes after matters most. The real important takeaway from all this is to never give up. I guess. By the way. Hmm? What is it? I was just thinking about how I looked in that suit. I didn't really pull it off, did I? <sighs> yeah, I knew it. That settles it. I'm never wearing a suit again. No way, no how. Hey, you know. Now that's another plus of staying a detective. Seriously? Hello? Yagami Detective Agency. Huh? Your cat ran away and it still hasn't come home? What do you think this is, lady? A pet shop? Oh yeah? We'll do it. Ask her some more about the cat. But Yagami-kun... Chaco. And she's five? <sighs> Just send us a picture, yeah? All right, time to get some catnip at Don Quixote! Kaito-san. Hmm. This is our first job in a while. 
Now let's go find that lady's cat.